Hi guys, Veggie Game, we're back and we're back to book reviews, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I completely forgot the name of the book then. Uh, guys, very, very excited. Some crucial, obviously crucial, if not, you know, the most important chapters in the entire book right here, guys. Um, one is, because I obviously listened to the audiobook, one of them is 12 minutes long. So I was thinking, okay, this might be a shorter video, finally. But then the next one is, uh, is 50 minutes long, guys. And so it should be an average sized video. We'll see how long uh, chapter 20, The Dementor's Kiss takes us to get through. Because a lot happens. A lot happens very, very fast. Uh, some stuff done very well in the movies. Some stuff not as good in the movies. But that is always the case with this, though. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on that. And obviously more regarding Snape and Sirius and... Yeah, and you know, time, you know how time works in the universe of the Potterverse, which is something which, which I've discussed before. But we do have some crucial information on that, and so yes, I guess we'll get into it. I don't really have much housekeeping apart from to say I'm sorry about making the mistakes last time, guys. I unfortunately that will always be the case, and unfortunately, it's, I I'll post it and then I'll see a comment pop up that says, "Hey, by the way, you're wrong about this." I'm like, oh. It almost, it doesn't, but it almost feels like I'm basically, not wasted, but the last five hours of work is gonna be not as good as it should be, is what I'm saying. And so I am always endeavouring to try and get things right, guys, but there will always be, mis be mistakes. I have actually just re-listened to, to these two chapters that we'll, we're covering today, so hopefully that will help. But either way, I don't really have any other housekeeping except for to say the usual, which is, guys, if you're enjoying these book clubs over on the Patreon, we're always at least two episodes ahead. And so uh, if, if that sounds like something you're interested in, check out. There's a link in the description. You can pay as little as you want to get access to everything on there, including the Harry Potter book club, which is something that we do in the second half of these videos, because it is half now. Um, where I basically go through each of your comments and we discuss them here. It's my favourite part of doing these book reviews, guys. It really, really is. And so if you want to be a part of it, you can be. If not, don't worry. These videos will be coming, as usual, out to the channel. Other housekeeping. I don't really have anything, guys. I mean, I guess I could go through... Uh, this seems like a strange place to do my Secrets of Dumbledore notes. What I will say is I've read a lot of your comments and I do kind of agree with a lot of it. One thing which I feel like is actually really crucial. I don't want to give too much away, but but when... when I don't want to give it away, guys, because I know that some of you haven't seen it, especially as it's, a, as it's a modern movie. When the creature bows to someone at the end, it should have been someone else. And um, reading your comments... I, I do agree with that now. I, I when, when I was first watching the movie, I, I just thought it was a, a nice moment, but yeah, it should it really should have been someone else. There we go. That should make any sense to anyone who has to the movie. And so, uh, go check out though, guys. I enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it or you did, you do enjoy it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm always fascinated to see them. And yes. I don't really have anything else more to say apart from... Well, actually, regarding the secrets of Dumbledore, I reckon that the writers saw the writing on the wall. I don't mean like in Chamber of Secrets. I'm that funny. Um, because from what I gather, it is possible, if not likely, that that may actually be the final Fantastic Beast movie that we get. And quite frankly, guys, it ends like it's the final one. It absolutely... I, I, you know what it is? Um, I don't, again, I don't want to spoil too much, but Tina's promotion particularly really feels like a, oh, skip to the end, sort of thing, you know what I mean? And so, um, yeah. But what an ending, though. I loved the ending, guys. I really did. And I, if it wasn't for the, the Fantastic Beasts, of course, but also Newt, Tina, uh, Queenie, and Jacob, I, I probably would have had a very different opinion of it, but th those characters... And creatures kept me so engaged, you know? Yes, the series was very political. And, you know, I, I like the way that Harry Potter does it where... And it's easier to do that because he's a kid, obviously. But there's a little bit of politics, you know, scattered in and everything. But the focus is on, you know, the magical world and everything. Well, it seemed like the first Fantastic Beast was there's a bit of politics. But also, um, um, it's focused on Newt getting his creatures back. And I think even at the end of the first one, I said, wow, that was pretty political. 
Well, I didn't know what was coming in the next ones, guys. And so, yeah, it really seemed like New Almost in the last one was kind of like a third-rate character behind Dumbledore and like, several other characters who seem to be more prominent in it, you know? Um, and... I would love to see a movie or a series where it is just Newt, Tina, Queenie, and Jacob going to check out some fantastic things. <laughs> so, so, you know, but that's fine, though, guys. Um, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Let's get into the book review now, guys, because like I said, I don't really have any other housekeeping apart from to say sorry about the mistakes that I make because there were some crucial ones. My blooming rants last time were completely misdirected, and so I will endeavour to make sure that doesn't happen again today. Um, yes, let's get into <laughs> chapter twenty. If the first, if the first chapter, if the first chapter in this video is over an hour long, guys. I will scream because literally the audiobook is 12 minutes. And so let's see how fast we can get. I'm not going to be rushing it. Let's see how fast we get through chapter 20 The Dementor's Kiss. I feel terrible for not noticing the custom maidenness of this wonderful wand that I was sent via the P.O. box. If you want to send me anything, you can do, guys. It's a tiny little carrot on the back of it, guys. It's terrible. I didn't notice that before. But again, thank you so much, uh, Dara and uh, family, for, for sending it over. And like I say, guys, there is there should be a link in the description uh, if you wish to send me anything in the P.O. box. You watch a little video there. It goes over the little details. Anyway, I realise I haven't got um, Max's descriptions up. I should say real quick, the side panels are done by Jonas. Thank you so much. And Max uh, does the summaries that I read out at the start of the chapters. And so I'm going to go and grab them because I completely forgot. And then we'll get started. Chapter 20, The Dementor's Kiss. As Crookshanks leads the gang through the passage, Black tells Harry he is his godfather and also guardian and asks him to live with him. Harry agrees to this as they exit the passage, but the happiness soon fades as the full moon is revealed. Lupin did not take his medicine and begins to change without control. Black tells him to run as he transforms into the dog so he can fend off Lupin. During the excitement, Peter gets a hold of the wand and stuns both Ron and Crookshanks. Before Harry can disarm him, Peter transforms into a, a rat and escapes. After the tiny rumble between Lupin and Black, Lupin goes off into the forest and Black wanders off in pain. Harry and Hermione catch up to him but are quickly surrounded by Dementors and fail to use the Patronus charms. Um, is it a charm? I guess it is, isn't it? Anyway, um, Harry is the last one who stand, last one standing and the Dementors lean in to kiss him. Harry's Harry begins to pass out, but right before he he be, before this, he sees a bli blinding light and a f very familiar face. Thank you very much, Max, and thank you so much, Jonas, for these wonderful side panels. And so let's go through my notes, now, guys. Like I say, I mean that description was fast, and the chapter is fast, and even in the movie scene it is pretty fast. I'd say it's a little bit slower than than, than, than the book is, but. My goodness, they get through a lot of information in this. And so, yeah, so my first note is that both of these chapters that we're going to be covering today, which is Dementor's Kiss and Hermione's Secret, um, very well done chapters, but the movies did a good job on them. I think they did a good job on both guys. There are differences, particularly in Hermione's Secret, that we'll go into, but I feel like the movie did great. I mean, Prince of Asgard and the movie is great, guys. I don't think there's anyone who says it's terrible, you know? Um, I don't know. Maybe they're wrong. book first readers I think they'd have to be um so I got down here and I, I think this is right Lupin Pettigrew and Ron are, 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 are all connected to each other and apparently it looks like they're doing a six six legged race which is amazing um for some reason I thought that Ron was helping carry Peter but that can't be right though could he because he's got his, his, his legs in a, in a splint and everything maybe he is helping but you know he's also actually connected to uh, Pettigrew, which obviously doesn't end too well. <laughs> um, so Black's walking uh, Snape along, unconscious Snape, obviously. It does say that that what well, Harry says that he Harry doesn't think that Sirius is trying to stop Severus's head from banging on the ceiling. Now, the extent of that is is kind of interesting because Harry says that he doesn't think that he's doing it. So it could be it could be that Black isn't paying attention. But I think that Harry is, even Harry's thinking that he's getting a bit of revenge here. 
if, if revenge is the right term, I guess it would be. Um, we find out that Lily and James had appointed a black uh, as Harry's guardian, which I, I don't. I believe that's what I'm not exactly sure what the term godfather is, guys. But I think that that essentially is you're basically the one who's in charge if if everything goes wrong. I believe I feel, I feel like that's what the term godfather is, but I, I could be completely wrong. Um, and so, yeah, Black uh, starts to say about um, if uh, if Harry wants to come and live with him and everything. And again, just like in the movie, he's, so he's sounding like, uh, you, know, he, you know, of course, if you don't want it, then that's absolutely fine. I completely understand it. Um, it's very interesting that, that Harry is walking right next to Hermione. So Hermione's listening to all of this. <laughs> he's like, she's right there, right there listening to... Um, uh, this very important conversation between uh, Harry and, and Black. And it's very short. It's a lot shorter than in, in the movie. I, I feel like the movie's really... Wow. Am I going to say this? I feel like the movies romanticize Black's character a lot more than the book. Now, we will get to an incredible change that's in Hermione's secret, which I did not see coming. But, you know, we really see s s Black... I need, to, I need to say Black and Snape because I will just get confused. We see Black being a genuinely lovely, funny, very funny in the movie. He's like saying about the fleas, the murder and everything and winking at Harry and everything. And then in the, in, in the next chapter where they're flying away on Buck Beak, he's having a whale of a time and everything. Completely different in the book. We will get to it. And I do think I prefer the book version, guys. And I will explain why I feel, I feel incredibly that Harry gets a bit shafted in uh, Hermione's secret in the movie version. I actually do. We'll get to it though, guys. Um, da, 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 da. But yeah, Black just seems like a, such a lovely guy in the scenes um, in the movie after the big fight. But that in there in the books, guys. Like I say, uh, Black's seeming nervous about asking Harry and everything. And, like, you know, expecting him to say no and everything. And Harry's reaction is so much different than in the books. He's like, oh, are you mad? Of course I want to I don't want to live with the Dursleys. And he's asking, like, do you have a house and all this sort of, sort of, sort of thing and so on. Um, no, yeah, are you insane? Of course I want to leave the Dursleys. <laughs> Harry just seems younger in the book than he is in the movie, guys. I feel like in the movies... They purposely made, apart from Ron, everyone a bit more mature. I don't know. They're kind of mischievous. Now, I feel like I'm being unfair there. Not that there's a problem with either way. So, uh, Black's basically stopped paying attention to Snape at this point. Because Snape's head is basically scraping along the ceiling, which is a horrible image. Um, again... Not, I'm not defending Black in the slightest, but I feel like he's doing it because he's basically, oh, Harry w w actually wants to. That, that's incredible news. So like, he's, he's 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 probably as happy as Harry is. He probably is, guys. He, if not happier. Wow, is he happier? I think he's happier. I think he's happier, guys. Because right now he's thinking, okay, I'm a free man now. I need to make plans. But what, what am I going to do? Like, uh, you know, uh, you know I, and the first thing falling into slot is I'm going to live with, with uh, I'm going to bring up Harry. That's, so yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's a nicer moment for Black, incredibly, which is actually very, very sweet. We hear that as soon as um, Harry uh, agrees to it and says, of course, I, I want to leave the Dursleys. Uh, Black's face, like, just like a, a smile just cracks through. The first time he's seen, see, seen uh, Harry's seen uh, Black smile outside of the photograph, of course. And it looks like a person, um, it looks like a person 10 years younger was shining through the scarred mask. Which is a lovely phrase right there. So that, that's very, very sweet. Um, Harry starts to like, you know, fantasize about telling the Dursleys that he's going to be going to live with the person that they saw was a convict on the TV, which, you know, whatever floats a boat, I guess, I guess that's, or maybe he's not, he says that he starts to imagine, so maybe he's worried, maybe he is worried, but no, I, I don't think he's worried, I don't, I feel like he's going to be saying, yeah, you know, it's not just bad, oh, no, actually, because he, he knows that everyone apart from Dudley, potentially, are going to be glad that that Harry's gone 
So for him to like say, oh yeah, and by the way, it's that guy you saw on the TV. That would be quite a shocking moment for um, Petuna and Vernon. Not Monty. So we get the change, guys. And it's very interesting that it says, at least it says in the next chapter, but I think it does in this one, how the, mu the moon is obscured by clouds. Now, that shouldn't make any difference for a werewolf, would it? should it? Now, you have to remember, guys, a couple of episodes ago, I was saying I thought you'd have to be outside for the werewolf effect to take effect, but that's not true either. And so a cloud shouldn't make any difference. If, if being indoors doesn't count, then why would evaporated water stop the light from, from working if a brick wall won't? You know what I mean? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's a nice visual. It's a nice visual. That, that, that. I mean, like, that's probably why they went for it. Or if you know more about uh, werewolf lore, please do let me know. Um, the UK probably is the best place to be a werewolf if that is a case because we get a lot of cloudy days. Not in June, though, which is, I think it's June 6th this is taking place on, isn't it? Anyway. Lupin starts to change. Uh, Black tells him to run straight away. Like, um, he, uh, he tells um, Hermione and Harry to run. Um, run well, and he, I think he tells everyone to run, but Ron's uh, obviously chained to Pettigrew and Lupin. It reminds me of a scene which I cannot describe at all, guys. But if you've seen The Thing, there is a scene on a bench. Ron isn't in that bad <laughs> situation, but, um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've got down here Ron's having a bad night, which he is, admittedly. I mean, a lot of them are having a bad night, but I feel like Ron is having the worst out of all of them. <laughs> um, Black's Animagus, it keeps on saying that it's, like, bear-like and everything, and in, in, in the movie, it looks like maybe, maybe the size of a Great Dane? I wouldn't say it's... I wouldn't say it's the biggest dog I've ever seen. I, I've seen bigger dogs in real life, is what I'm saying. Whereas, it really does describe Black's Animagus as being huge. And, you know, in previous chapters, it said how because um, because James and, Bla and Black's um, Animagus were so big, they were able to control Lupin whilst prowling around. Um... So yeah, readers make a big thing about uh, Black's dog being huge. Uh, Pettigrew grabs Lupin's wand uh, and takes out Ron and Crookshakes with a bang. Apparently, the, the, like the spell just like like it makes a bat bang noise. Doesn't actually say what the spell is. I do. I was just because I was listening to the chapters just now, guys, and I was philosophizing this. Now, why did Pettigrew choose that spell over a certain other one that he uses against Hufflepuffs? Um, I like to think. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I don't... My issue with a lot of the characters in this book, guys, is that it is so night and day when it comes to good and bad. You know, not only is everything that a bad person does evil... Well, apart from... Depends if you consider Snape a bad person. But aside, Snape aside, like... Grill, not Grill the World. I always middle up, up now. Um, Lockhart, Gilroy. Uh, everything he does is either stupid or evil. You know what I mean? Everything that Lucius does is is evil. Um, I like the idea that Pettigrew had a chance to do a worse spell. Hmm, probably didn't actually. Okay, I, I may be giving you too much credit because right now, Pettigrew is surrounded by people that are hate him and a werewolf. <laughs> and so, he probably just needs to do the fastest spell. And I think that uh, Avada Kedada, which I'm still saying wrong, I shouldn't do it whilst playing it myself. Um, that is a spell that takes longer than other spells, doesn't it? It's not like a bup. Um... And so, that's probably why he decided to do it, because he's going to do Crookshanks, Ron, Harry, Mighty, <laughs> Black, Werewolf. Wait, Snape's woken up. Snape. <laughs> you know? Um, but I also like to, the idea that 
Oh, man. Maybe I'm being too sentimental. Maybe... Maybe Ron actually meant something to Pettigrew after all these years. Probably not with the way that these books are written. The way that, like I say, bad guys are bad guys and they have no redeeming quality. Um, that's probably unfair as well, actually. Though, obviously, I'm thinking of, uh, of Snape and it depends if you consider him a bad guy. Other characters, obviously Voldemort, Quirrell, they're all uh, irredeemable, aren't they? There's probably someone really obvious I'm not thinking of. Either way. Even Malfoy, guys. Even Draco with the way it ends. In the movies, at least. Anyway. That's my little thought about Pettigrew. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now. Uh, Pettigrew escapes very fast. It's literally like one sentence. It's like, he just shrugged down and runs into the dark grass. It's like... Cause, and often, when I'm listening to audiobooks, or when I'm reading some of my dyslexia, it is hard to sometimes concentrate on what's actually going on. It is a throwaway line when it says that that, uh, that Pettigrew got out of Dodge. Um, I've got down here, Lupin legs it into the forest. <laughs> and Black is bleeding and gives chase. Um... Harry says to Hermione, they need to to get the knocked out ones to the castle uh, and tell someone. Uh, but then they uh, then they hear the, hear uh, Black's yelping. It's very interesting that it's Harry that says to Hermione, we need to be, do the intelligent thing and get the people to safety and get back up. But uh, but as soon as he hears Black yelping, that's when he goes back into Harry Potter mode. Is like, oh god, we need to go to. Uh, Save him now. And Hermione goes with him, incredibly. Um, and th they give chase and they find Black uh, next to the lake. Now, in the movie, it's just like a little... Um, I don't know what to call it. It's not a pond, is it? Well, it's, it's essentially a very big pond. And that's what I was visualising throughout this. But it's not, though, guys. It is the lake, isn't it? Because it says that there's at least 100 Dementors. There aren't 100 Dem Dementors in the movie, guys. 100 people is a lot. Um... How oh, do you speculate? Ah, oh, Dementors in Fantastic Beasts. That is a cracking question. Should we do a little bit of research? Because I don't know if they are technically beasts or if they could potentially, potentially be uh, ghosts or humans that something terrible's happened to. So I had a curse put on them or something. Now, is this in alphabetical order? Because if not, I'm shafted. I think it is. Uh, D. Demig. Demigais. I, 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 I definitely remember that name. Uh, Dementors are not in here, guys. It is D E, isn't it? Yeah, so they are not in here. What is the origin of, Dem of a Dementor? Because they have eye sockets, guys, with scabby skin that's gone over them, sure, but they have eye sockets, though. If they are creatures, because and also they, they speak English, apparently, as well. Well, they can understand English when Dumbledore gives them a rollicken. Unless he used a different language. Um, but they have eye sockets, which would mean that they are humanoids, at least. So what is the gig with them? Do they have baby dementors? Oh, that would be adorable. Oh, imagine a little baby Dementor riding a Fristral. Thanks. But they are not fantastic beasts and I don't know where to find them. Apart from Sirius Black's house. Too soon? No. He doesn't die. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway. Um, side note. This is why my chapters are always way too long. Right, so. Da -da 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 yeah, so Black's like going, no, please. Like that. Um. I do question why he turned from from an animagus because from what I gather, an animagus isn't something which you need to focus. No, it can't be. It absolutely cannot be. I was going to say that that it, it may potentially it could be that it is a spell that you need to focus on for it to to keep up, much like the um, the anti spell that Snape was doing on Quirrell's spell on Harry during the Quidditch match on the first movie book. Um. Where you had to focus. But it can't be because Scabbers falls asleep. Unless it turns out that Pettigrew is a more talented wizard than Black, which would be amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, for some reason, um, Black turns into his, hu he turns back into his human form. Uh, I, this is when I get a moment where I think I may have actually thought of something which no one else had thought of, guys. Okay. 
This isn't true. You've all thought of it. But I'm going to say it anyway. So, Black was in Azkaban. He turned into his dog form and just walked out the door. He didn't turn around. That Now, he wasn't welcome anymore. Ignore me. Now, Lupin. Obviously not everyone's favourite guy, because he's a werewolf. Finds out that Black killed Jay... Betrayed him, quite frankly. And Pettigrew by killing him. And Lily and James. Wouldn't Lupin... Presumably being the only, uh, the only person at this point who knows that Black can turn into a dog. Go and tell someone... Dumbledore, let's say, because Dumbledore always gave um, gave Lupin a chance. Mentioned, oh, that Dumbledore probably knows best, though, so maybe he did. <laughs> maybe maybe Lupin did tell Dumbledore. Why didn't Black tell people that that Sirius could turn into an animagus? Because pre presumably. Azkaban is something that everyone knows about. I think it's something that they even teach their kids, in fact. And Dementors run Azkaban. And Animagus are rare. There's like seven in the last century recorded. Before the other four, of course. But it must be something that students... Maybe not students, but it is generally known that Dementors are not effective against animals. And Animagus. And so Lupin, knowing, knowing, you had to remember in this, in this, you know, in this twist of the, of, of the story, he knows that Black can turn into a dog. He also knows that Black killed two, three of his best friends. Because I don't, it's so interesting that we didn't get a scene where, um, where Lupin's talking about Lily. Because that is one of my favourite scenes from the movie, guys. It really is. It's so... Harry's face during it is just lovely. Uh, not like that, you know. It's, it's, it's very... He's, he's, it, it, we see a relaxed and happy Harry that we just have not seen up to this point, you know? A pride... A prideful Harry. There we go. A prideful... Pride... Pride of his family. Yeah. I thought it was lovely, guys. And that is a movie exclusive. Either way. So yes, why didn't uh, why wouldn't Lupin have told someone? Because he wouldn't want Black to get out. He absolutely wouldn't want Black to get out, would he? Would he? I don't think so. Anyway, moving on. And also, they're going to be sending Pettigrew to Blood and Azkaban at this rate. Well, that's what Harry's plan was. Um, he wouldn't be able to swim very. Well. Mm. Rats can swim pretty well, not as well as a dog, I'd argue. Not for as long as a dog, I'd say. They, okay, rats can swim extremely well. I cannot see them swimming across a channel. Or, you know, a, a, a long bit of sea, you know? Then again, dogs... Anyway, we're getting way too sidetracked. So, yeah. Pettigrew would be able to just walk out the door. Not turn around now. He's not walking anymore. Anyway. Um... Do, 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 do. So yes, they they, they, they they get to um, they get to uh, black. There is a bit here in the movie which is really badly done, guys, and I'm sure that you all know it. It is a mistake, right? It's got to be an editorial mistake. It looks in a weird way, it looks cool, but also it doesn't make any sense. It does take you out of the moment where uh, the camera really dramatically zooms in on Black's face and like goes ah! as he wakes up, but then literally the next cut it cuts him back. And so unless he literally woke up and then passed out instantly, much like Ace Rimmer does on uh, Red Dwarf. Ah, oh, I can't remember what the episode's called. It's not Dimension Jump, is it? It could be Dimension Jump. See, I'm going to have to look this up now, aren't I? If I do this, will it, will it do anything? It will not. First Ace Rimmer episode dimension jump i feel like it is dimension jump there you go guys i know my series one to six red red dwarf <laughs> um 
the way he words it isn't isn't very good, but uh, it's just like really like macho character. And like like they they go he's doing something very very painful. He like says, "I'm sorry, I have to do something really girly for a moment." <laughs> sorry about that. He like passes out for like two seconds. Stupid, 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 stupid. But you know it's a comedy. So it's fine. Um, yes. So I got completely sidetracked now. But yes, th th that bit in the movie is so weird, guys. And it's got to be a mistake, right? There's something quite off-putting about it as well. So maybe it was a very artistic decision to have him literally wake up and then instantly cut to a shot of him being knocked out again. <sighs> I don't see it though, guys. I feel like it was a, it was a, it was, I feel like it's a mistake. It doesn't look bad. But yeah, Re watching it critically, it seems very odd. I need room, guys. When I'm watching these movies, I'm not watching them critically. Much probably why I love the Fantastic Beast movies so much. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Sorry. I've been watching uh, Twelve Angry Men recently, and there's a character on that keeps on saying, uh, "You know what I mean?" Anyway. Um. Oh yeah. By the way, I don't think anyone got the reference. I think that maybe one person did. Last episode, where I was saying, "Mr. Black." I'm amazed more people didn't get that, guys. Type in Mr. Black The Simpsons into YouTube and it'll come up with like a short little video. And sure, it's a throwaway moment, but it's back in classic, brilliant Simpsons. And it's a hilarious scene <laughs> where they go to Camp Krusty. Mr. Black. Sorry. Anyway. anyway, get on with it, Veggie, please. I, d I just don't want this first chapter to take an hour because it shouldn't, right? Oh, da -da 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 -da. Um, so yeah, Harry starts saying he's going to be all right. He's going to. Uh, I'm going to go and live with him. I got down here that it almost sounds so selfish, but ha I feel like you know what it is. It's not selfish. It's not selfish at all. What it is is it's Harry hyping himself up because he like says to Hermione, "Think happy thoughts and uh, and uh, do the Patronus," and. Uh, her mind is like, pick up a penguin. Uh, that didn't make any sense to anyone outside the UK, not from a certain age. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, this is a disgrace, guys. I'm, I am a disgrace. This is why I get so sidetracked on these videos. I just reference P -p 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 pick up a penguin. <sighs> Very nice biscuits. They have milk in. Right! Get on with it. <laughs> right, so... So I've got down here, it half sounds selfish from Harry, the way that he's wearing it. He's like saying he he's going to be alright because I need to have a happy life. But it's not, that's not what he's thinking. He's, he needs to big himself up and dream of the, him, you know, having a happier home with Black than the Dursleys. And that's why he's saying it. And so, yeah, my notes here are stupid. Um, Harry gets Hermione to try and cast the Patronus as well. Uh, the Dementors are actually uh, actually closing in on them. I feel like I feel like the way they're describing it is that they kind of they kind of moving on to Harry fir Harry and Hermione first. I think I I think Harry like says they they're going to they're going to uh, get me first and then and then Black. I feel like that's what I said. And so there's no little soul wisp coming out of Black's mouth. They go back in again. Which is just, it, it's symbolism. It's fine. It's fine. I'm talking about in the movie where the, like, the little blue thing comes out of the bath and it goes back in again. Maybe it's like the, maybe it's the wizard's equivalent of a mint. Anyway, I'm an idiot. Right. Um, what did Hermione start experience? Uh, oh, that's right. Um, so as the Dementors are closing in and they, and they knock Hermione out, presumably that means that Hermione is being having horrendous memories brought back or, you know, horrendous thoughts and everything. The joy ta being taken out of her and being replaced with just the misery. Is she thinking about McGonagall in the cave again? <laughs> Under the tree trunk, I should say. What else would it be? Her getting frozen on chamber, although she dealt with that pretty well thinking about it, didn't she? It could have been being attacked by the uh, snake dude. Um, what else? Could it, it could have been something in the, in the human realm. Could, I'm, I'm not really sure what she's afraid of, apart from... She's kind of... In a, I feel like the movie is where it really added in the, her being afraid of heights. She's, afra she's afraid of flying, because it's just she isn't particularly good at it. But then again, I'd imagine that all Muggleborns uh, are not going to be very inept at 
flying a broom. I was going to say because they haven't experienced it, but then again, Harry picks up on it like a... I can't say that. <laughs> like a rude thing. Um, not that rude. It, 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 the sentence I was going to say would have in, it included the S word, and I don't swear on my channel, so yes. Ignore me. Moving on. So yeah, what did Hermione start to imagine? And also, uh, what did she what she, did she start to think of... Um, oh, that's a nice one. What did she start to think of for the Patronus to... Uh, for her Patronus to appear? I'd like to think that it's Ron and Harry saving her in the toilets. In uh, Philosopher's Stone. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Anyway. And, uh, oh no, no, she, she took the blame, didn't she? I like to think that it's that. Anyway. Uh, Harry gets Hermione to try and cast the Patronus. Already said that. Uh, Hermione, Hermione, like I say, is knocked out cold. Harry gets the Patronus to kind of work. It's, just, it's like a mist that, 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 that's in front of him. Um, Harry not using happy thoughts, but determination that Black is innocent to cast it. Yeah, so so after a while, he stops saying um, he will be alright. Uh, I'm going to live with him. He will be alright. I'm going to live with him, which is his happy thought. He starts to just say he's innocent. He's innocent, which is interesting because that isn't happy thoughts. That's justice. That's determination. Very Undertale reference, which we, we will get to another kind of an Undertale reference in the next chapter as well. <laughs> or is it this one? It's the next one, I think. All right. So yes, he's he he started to just use determination rather than that rather than happiness. Um, I like the, I like the reason why he's actually able to cast it in the next chapter, but we will get to that. Uh, the description of of the Dementor's face is horrible. Obviously, the hands as well. Like I say, they they do have eye sockets and everything, um, and just like really horrible skin all, all over it and everything. Um, the Patronus withers and, and disappears. The Dementors lift Harry up to, to, to uh, presumably to kiss him. Not They're, they're, they're not just like... Uh, it's very interesting that they're actually going to kiss him because up to now they haven't actually been trying to kiss him, have they? They've just been feeding off his emotions. But obviously obviously this one who's grabbed him by the, by the neck is famished. So he's like being picked up by the neck. The Patronus saves the day, which is wonderful. And the chapter ends with the line, could it be? Which is an excellent way of ending it. Um, so yes, the Dementors are actually going to kiss Harry first, which is very interesting. Maybe because Black just doesn't have much um, much joy in him anymore. Um, or at least Harry thinks that that's the case. I mean, because it does say that Harry thinks that they're coming for him first. Um, oh yes, yeah, so I got down here. So Snape and Ron are, lay are still laid out. So that means... Crookshanks, Harry, Hermione, Snape, Ron, presumably Black, are all knocked out all at once. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is a lot of characters, guys. Um, to all be knocked out all at once. Obviously, that's completely different in the movie, guys. So, we, we go into a few differences here. Snape, it, it, Snape protecting the free is not a thing, guys. And that is a great moment in the movie. I really do. I, I think it's wonderful, guys, that, that, that we had the moment where where Snape is, like, holding... Um, he holds Hermione back. Because when, when uh, Ron goes to uh, give chase with, with Black and, uh, and Lupin, uh, it's just Harry on his own. Whereas uh, um, Snape stops, stops Hermione from, from giving chase. Ron's... He's not perfectly fine, but he's not knocked out. Crookshanks is like a... Again, a non-entity. I feel like we, we've seen all of Crookshanks in the movie at this point, you know? I don't think he's ever really brought up again. You know, significantly. I presume that would be different in the movie, in the book. Um, but yes, everyone's knocked out. Um, so there's no Hermione Howl? Which is interesting, because I thought that was very cool of Hermione in, in, in the movie. Um, you know, distracting Lupin. Um, it's very... Because, yeah, Lupin just... Retreats on his own. It's very interesting, guys. But you know, a savage creature isn't just going to fight to death. It it's going to look after itself as well. So if it if it feels like he's outnumbered or doesn't want to pick a fight, or the fact that he that even the wolf version recognizes Black, you know, even though they did fight, uh, maybe that's why that that's why he retreated. Not it is not because of Hermione's howl. You know what? The howl does kind of take away. You know what it does? The howl kind of takes away from what happens with Harry next. Kind of. But you could say that that would be the case with Buttbeak being freed as well, though. We'll discuss how time travel works, guys. But the fact that Hermione hears Hermione 
Oh, well, she may not have done because she's getting held back by Snape. Yeah. Either way. Um, so yes, Lupin retreats on his own. No little not soul coming out of Black's mouth and then going back in again. Uh, Black in the movie... Seeing the Dementors then passing out again is bad editing. I don't know. Let me know what you think, guys. I find it hard to believe that in such a crucial scene there would be such a mistake. But there is... A, it, like, it, it's a wonderful camera shot where the camera like moves over, like looking down at Black's uh, face. And then like, he like, wakes up and goes, ah, like that. And then it instantly cuts to him back out cold again. I can only see that being a mistake. But maybe I'm missing something. Very often I'm, I'm missing stuff, something in these things, guys. Um, and he's out for the rest of the scene. Uh, Ace Rimmer, I've got down here. <laughs> I'm always confused by Harry saying he was, uh, he saw James in the movie. Yes. Now, in the, um, I never understood what Harry meant when, when he said I, that he saw James. Because in the movie, you just see the stag. Now, if you're, if you're observant, you can kind of see a bit of a black robe rattling around behind him as well. But it's simply, no, it, do, it does show a figure. But it doesn't look like Harry. It doesn't look like James. I guess that's because in the movie, we they really wanted to hold off on the twist. And if it just showed someone Harry Potter shaped, the audience is not going to think, oh, it's James Potter. They're going to think, oh, it's Harry. How did he do that? Must be some sort of magic. Which it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But yeah. The, the fact that, that that's Harry thought it was James. In the movie, when I first watched it, I was thinking, was it? Did he really get a sight of him? But, you know, it couldn't show him as clear as Harry because it didn't want to want to give away the big twist. Um, and up to this point, uh, I, did, uh, I had no idea, and Harry in the movie shouldn't have any idea, that that James is a stag as well, or can be a stag, but that isn't no, because Harry doesn't recognise the creature as being a, uh, as being a stag until the end of the next chapter. So, um, so it would be that he's clocked on to. Yeah, and also at this point in the book, he doesn't know it's, that that he can turn to a stag either. Uh, I had no idea the relevance of the stag. Uh, I I thought it was Dumbledore. I feel like most people probably assume that that was that's what was going on on that scene. Um, Movie Harry doesn't uh, seem to 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 figure, but they could have couldn't make it look. So yeah, that's basically what I'm saying about it. they they couldn't make it too clear that it that it was a James looking character because movie audience would have just thought, oh, it's another Harry. I guess because they haven't talked about James and shown James, if they'd had lots of flashbacks with James, then they probably could have gotten away with it. But in a movie, you show someone who looks like Harry, everyone's just gonna think, oh, it's Harry. <laughs> um. Yep, who, a movie Snape holds back Hermione, so book version um, is a more dire situation. Yeah, it is. The fact that everyone is knocked out, but the fact that Hermione's there as well getting wrecked. Um, yeah, it's definitely a more dire situation. But everyone's just knocked out. <laughs> everyone is just passed out. Um, and what happens next... No, and and who who saves saves the day in the situation will be excited in the next chapter. But that's my notes for Dementors, guys. That is, um, you know what? That's under forty minutes. So I will take that. I will take that. Great chapter so fast. Like I say, twelve minutes long in the audio book. But the next one is a much chunky one, chunkier one. So let's get on to tw chapter twenty-two. Hermione secret. Harry wakes up in the hospital and overhears Snape and Fudge talking about Snape's heroism, her heroic action, sorry, <laughs> and how the children were under a confundus charm when they, they attacked him. Ron is still out, but Hermione is awake and, they bo and both her and Harry start to talk to uh, Madame Pomfrey, which leads to Snape and Fudge coming into the room. After much arguing and yelling, Dumbledore finally arrives and says that he needs to talk with Harry and Hermione alone. Dumbledore says he believes them and Black, but there is no proof and the Dementors will be performing the kiss soon. Dumbledore then throws Hermione a clue about time, gives him a strange dire directions about S Sirius, uh, Sirius's location, and says that uh, more than one life can be saved, um, can be saved, and then leaves. Hermione takes 
out her necklace, which is a time turner, and her and Harry travel back in time. They figure out they can save Buttbeak and Sirius if all goes well. Without being seen, they rescue Be Beaky and take him to the uh, take him to the forest. The two wait uh, out. Uh, wait it out watching for their past selves to lead the passage and Harry tells Hermione that he thinks he his dad is the one who conjured the Patronus he saw. Hermione is skeptical but Harry insists that it looked like it, it looked like his dad. All the action happens again and they follow themselves down to to where Sirius is. Harry waits as long as he can before realizing that it that it wasn't his dad he saw but himself casting the Patronus. The two go back to to Beaky and take him back to the tower where Sirius is is and rescue him. There's a tearful goodbye and Harry and Hermione watch the two innocent fly uh, fly fly to freedom. So again, thank you very much. Thank you very Max. Thank you very much, Max, for your uh, summaries and also thank you so much, Jonas, for this for these side panels. Let's get into my notes of this chapter, guys. So this is a chunky chapter and I don't know what the philosophy is behind. Um, how how long you make chapters and how many chapters you should have in a book and everything but it does seem like this could have easily been broken into two maybe maybe it's because no i i feel like the penultimate or at least the the, the, the final fight i guess this is essentially the final fight isn't it the final action sequence it's best to have in, in one go. I got my notes here, guys, but whilst I was out uh, walking Woozle this morning, I was listening to the chapters again, and I have actually written down a few notes here as well. Um, but, yeah, I will go through those, hopefully, wh when they are relevant. But let's get into, me, uh, into my notes. Oh, by the way, I got my time turner, of course. I had to, of course, for this for these chapters. Um, so, yes, uh, Fudge actually awakes to Fudge's voice, which is not something I was expecting him. And he's thanking Snape uh, and promises him a, a potential first class uh, honor, uh, Order of Merlin, which is pretty big news. Snape's just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Snape tells Fudge that it was Harry, Hermione, and Ron that attacked him, but they, but he says that, th that they were bewitched by Black. Um, so, yeah. I mean, at this point, Snape is telling the absolute truth. There is one thing later on which he, ref which he purposely does not. It's something that he that he he doesn't take into light when talking to Dumbledore later on in the scene, which he should have done. But here he is t t telling, um, telling it like like at least from his perspective, exactly how it was. The fact that it was Harry, Hermione, and Ron that attacked him. He could have said that it was Black that attacked him, or Lupin, and everything. But no, he's he's telling it like it is at this point. It's very interesting that he uses the term bewitched, because wouldn't that be quite a sexist term in the Western world, right? I think it would be right because bewitched. It's it's suggesting it's a. Uh, I mean, any any spell where you're controlling someone's got to be bad, but to you, but to call that bewitched, that to me seems quite sexist. Oh, Snape, I don't know. That it, it seems like a term which wouldn't wouldn't be used much, you know. Hmm. I mean, unless the term no, it is a negative connotation. I feel like it's a negative connotation, but I could be wrong though. Um, and of course, they didn't see anything else happen after uh, after getting blown away. But um, I got my note down here saying, does he actually believe that 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 the kids were bewitched? And I think that I think that I think that he did. I honestly do think he did. I mean, he he doesn't get on well with anything. I mean, he most of the time he's telling them all to shut up anyway, and so it's possible that he, that he didn't think. But I I do feel like at this point he does believe that that was the case. Um, they've gotten away with a great deal before. Yes, um, with, with um, so Snape is talking about Harry, like the fact that that he that he seems to get away with it without getting you know, expelled or in any trouble or anything, and um. And they believed that Harry, Hermione, and Ron were trying to catch Black uh, before getting bewitched, of course. Which is nice, guys, because that is... It, it, I don't know if it is on purpose, but that really feels like a callback to Diagon Alley at the start of this book, where Ron's like saying, oh, Okay, so we'll catch him, Ron, right? It's just like, that's... Ron's philosophy there is what Snape thinks they are like. And, and it, 
and to an extent is what they're, they're, they're like, you know what I mean? So I thought that was a nice little reference. I feel like it was a reference to, to what Ron was saying at the start. And then, like Snape says about how, um, how, uh, uh, how are you, uh, and, and all three of them get away, get, get away with, um, a great deal. Again, that, that's Ron's philosophy of, you know, what do they say? Uh, um, beg for forgiveness, not permission. Don't, yeah, that's right. Right? Don't ask for permission. Beg for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. I feel, I feel like that's it. Uh, which, you know, to be fair, he, he's kind of on the money. He's kind of on the money. Although, to be honest, whenever Harry's been breaking the rules, it hasn't been to try and catch Black. It's been to have a normal teenage year, you know? Which, again, you can. You, I feel like you could definitely question the mora morality of that. Because... He's risking other people, but he's also undoing a lot of effort that other that a lot of adults have put into protecting him. But again, it can't be easy on Harry, though. Um, Potter has always been given an extraordinary amount of license by the headmaster. Now, I find it very interesting that Snape says the headmaster here, because he's he he is. He's talking to Fudge. He doesn't think anyone else is listening. Um, and so it's not for students' benefit. He knows that Fudge and Dumbledore have a history. And so I feel like... For one, Snape is trying to put blame onto Dumbledore here. But the fact that he said the headmaster, it's kind of... It almost feels like he's turning the knife there, saying, Oh, the headmaster, the person who should be looking after these people and everything... I feel like he's kind of twisting the knife there a little bit into uh, f f to Dumbledore, which is interesting because we know that Snape completely respects Dumbledore, but the fact that he's um... oh man, I'm trying to think of, of, of an example. But, but, but when when you when you refer to someone's rank rather than their name, it being a very condescending sort of pointing out how it's in oh, I, I can't describe it, guys. I'm trying to think of of an example. I can't. I can't think of an example, but I just feel like the fact that he's saying he's saying the headmaster instead of Dumbledore is purposefully saying the headmaster, the person who should be in charge of all this. I I feel like he's twisting life with, with, to Dumbledore there, which is interesting because I I would I would expect Snape, Snape to actually do that at this point at least. Um, Fudge then says we all have a bit of a blind spot when it comes to him, Harry, which is Fudge is and useless guys he really is and even snape's like saying that there that there should be some sort of punishment going on here and 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 fudge is like saying oh we'll, 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 we'll do all that and everything just completely uh playing it off you know yeah he's he is fudge is kind of useless but you know it's good that that harry's not going to be getting tr in trouble as well so it will be interesting to see if there's any repercussions for what they did to snape though because um Yes, that will be very interesting. I don't even know if it's going to be brought up again. It doesn't get brought up in the rest of this chapter. Um, Black Harry and the girl, all unconscious by the time I reached them. Talking about Snape reaching um, reaching the group. So obviously, in the, in, the, in the book, the group is slightly different. It's Hermione, Black and, and Harry are down by the, by, by the lake. And so obviously, Snape recovered from, from his condition. Saw Crookshanks and Rod laid out. We don't hear anything about Crookshanks for the rest of this chapter, guys. I hope he's all, hope he's all right. Um, and so, uh, heads down to to the lake and finds finds the the other three. He does say that the Dementors had already dispersed, of course. Um, and again, yes, yeah, Snape says uh, suggests that that Harry should be suspended. After all that they, they had done to protect him. Which I, I personally completely see that guys. I really do. And it's the same like like Lupin saying. I, I'm not sad, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed about Harry. The fact say. When when, when, he, when uh, he found out that Harry had the map. He was like. He was. He, he, he came off as being really disappointed. In the fact that Harry would. Lily and James would want Harry to be safe. And everyone is putting so much effort into keeping Harry safe. And yet, the only reason why Harry's getting into trouble is because he keeps on sneaking out. Although he is learning a lot of information at the same time, though. And so, yeah, it's it's interesting. 
But Fudge is hearing none of it, though, apparently. Um, so, yes, Ron and uh, Crookshanks, presumably, Snape... I, I, I would presume that Snape woke up, found found Crookshanks and Ron, and thought, okay, they're here, there's no immediate threat, I'm going to go and find the rest of them, and then brought them all together. Because we do see him later on, like, you know, making them all float up uh, to be taken back to the castle. Um... So yes, uh, Snape brought everyone back to the castle, including including Black. Um, uh, Madame Pomfrey's got like this massive. Uh, Harry sees it as being a boulder of chocolate, and she's like breaking bits off and everything. Um, Harry like immediately gets up and says that he needs to speak with Dumbledore. It's still night time, which in the movie I'm pretty sure it's daytime. In this scene, it is now. How does that work? It must have been a full day later. It wasn't though, because it's three turns, which is which is per hour. No, it wasn't a full day. So how the hell is it daytime then? When Dumbledore leaves Hermione and Harry, Black is still in his cell. I'm talking about the movie version here, because he's actually not in a cell in the book. But when they break... When they break... Um, black out it's like sunrise it's like very early sunrise which would suggest that the scene with Hermione Harry Ron in this case in the movie and Dumbledore talking about uh, what's going on and the fact that the dimensions are already up there it's daytime so Black must have already been released he had he has because it flies off but he flies up into the moonlight though doesn't he oh now I'm I am so confused there's something weird going on with the weather in those scenes, guys, because I swear that Black flew. Uh, serious. Black. Buck. Beak. Hopefully, it'll come up with a picture of them flying off. It is. It's not. Okay. There's something weird going on with the time here, guys. So, so it looks like the break of dawn when they save Sirius. But then when Sirius flies off, it's like. It's, it's midnight again. It is! And by the time they get back... So then they, they head back to the, the hospital ward. Ward, sorry. Um, they head back to the, to, to the hospital ward. It depends how much time has travelled... Uh, okay. How much time has travelled between... I swear to God, when when when, when they break um, Sirius out of, of of the tower, again, in the, in the movie, not the book, it's like the break of dawn. But then he flies off into the night sky. And then, in the next scene, they need to rush back to the hospital wing to be back where they were... <coughs> Pardon me. Where they were when they used the time turner. So did they stop for breakfast or something? Because that is a long time later. Because it's, it's 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 daylight outside. Is it? Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I need to check this because this, this is this is twisting my melon. So I'll make sure that I don't play any audio because I don't want to get any copyright issues. Doo doo doo. Oh, I mean, it could be night. I guess it could be night time when, when they're talking with Dumbledore. It looks very bright, though. It looks like a rainy day to me. Either way, enough waffle. Um, I'm, being, I'm being pedantic talking about talking about that, that, that issue, but that, that, that has just thrown me for sick, to be honest. So now I've completely lost where I was with my notes. Uh, yeah, so so it looks like it looks like in the movie it is still night time when when Hermione and Harry start to use the time turner. But my goodness, that moon is bright that night. If that is the case, because it looks like a day, it looks like daylight in there. It looks like a rainy day, anyway. Anyway, moving on. Harry explains uh, in panic, uh, and Pomfrey shoves chocolate in his mouth, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, I, I wish that I wish that had been in the movie. <laughs> Uh, Snape uh, says, "Granger, hold your tongue again." That's like that. He, you know what? There needs to be a. T you know what? That'd be cool. 
Is there a t-shirt which says, Granger, hold your tongue? There has to be. Because that is his splimmin' catchphrase in this book, guys. Granger, hold your tongue t-shirt. Granger things. Doesn't look like it. Well, I mean, there should be. Because my goodness, Snape says that a lot in, in this uh, in this book. Either way, moving on. Oh yes, yeah, so, so when when Snape says "hold your tongue" for like the fiftieth time in this book, Fudge then says the young the, the young lady is disturbed in the mind. We must be we must make allowances. Which I don't know why I found that line so funny, but Molly is like, "Well, who's who's disturbed in the what?" Um. So here is Black. Provide him with. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Oh yes. Uh, uh so, so so Dumbledore then obviously enters the room, starts to try and well, not really defuse the situation, but trying to just get Snape, Fudge, and even Pomfrey, who goes off in a huff, uh, rightfully so, um, to 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 leave them alone, so so he can talk with Hermione and uh, and Harry, um, and Snape is is like. Seeing the writing on the wall and, and seeing that that Dumbledore is clearly, he clearly sees stock in what Harry and, and Hermione have been saying and what Black had been saying as well because he's he's actually been speaking with Black and interesting. Um, hang on. Oh, I'm still I'm still confused by the weather, guys. I swear that when um. When Ron like says, "Hey, you were there, now you're there." It's daytime, but it can't because Black's literally just. Oh, move on, Veggie. I'm sorry. There's something weird with the weather, guys. I swear that it's sunrise when Black is uh, on the back of Bud Beak, which is a very different scene in the book, and we will get into that, guys. I gotta say, I feel like I prefer the book version. I really do, despite the fact that it cuts out such, such some beautiful dialogue. But I'll explain my reasoning when we get to it. If we get to it. Um, bah, 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 bah. So then Sirius says to... Uh, to um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Snape says to uh, Dumbledore. Uh, Sirius Snape proved that he's capable of murder at 16. Uh, you, have you forgotten that he tried to kill me? Um, now that is after. Now obviously... That is irrelevant. It just is irrelevant, guys, to this current situation. You can't say, if someone's killed before, well, that must mean that they must be... Sure, all things are pointing at, at, at it being black at this point. But if there is, if there's new evidence, you can't be going to send the Dementors off to, to, to do the kiss yet, guys. You just can't. Um, and there is new evidence. Now, before Dumbledore... This is my first little note that I've written down here. Before Dumbledore entered the room... Hermione and Harry had told Snape and Fudge and Pomfrey, who's there, and an unconscious Ron, who already knew, uh, that um, that Scabbers, Ron's rat, is Pettigrew. Uh, and that he's an animagus. Then Dumbledore enters in, and throughout all this conversation and everything, um... Snape, more than anyone, is getting a chance to talk here, and uh, and he he doesn't take that into consideration when he's talking to Dumbledore. Obviously, at this point, I don't know if he does believe it or not, guys. If he actually thinks that Harry and Hermione are bewitched still, or if he just thinks that they are on team anti-Snape. Which could very possibly be it, guys. It could very possibly, especially the way they talk about the way that he was tricked and everything like this. Um, whereas he doesn't see it as a trick at all. He sees it as an as, as attempted murder. He tried to murder him. That, that, that's what he says in this line. At this point, when Dumbledore comes in, he could have said, well, they're saying that Peter Pettigrew, the one who died that night, it was Ron's... Uh, Ron's um, rats. I was going to say snake then. Um, but, you know, he, he is tunnel visioned here. He was tunnel visioned the last, uh, uh, last, uh, chapter as well, where he, 
he sees it and he and he doesn't want to believe that there's anything more to it that's the way that i interpret it the fact that he did that doesn't the fact that he said that the fact that um harry and hermione told snape and fudge that peter pettigrew was scabbers the rat that is new evidence What they need to do is unwitch. Presumably, if you've been bewitched, there is a way of taking that that spell off you. First of all, Pomfrey should have the ability to do that. But secondly, they need to do that, or at least wait for the spell to wear off. The fact that that the Dementors need to act straight away is very, very fudge, and it's also very Snake. It's all like, no, let's get, let's, because it's it's. He wants he wants Sirius to ha to have a fate worse than death. That he wants Snape. He wants Black to have a a, a death worse than uh, fate uh, worse than death. And so that's why he's not listening. Now there's a great line that's in that is in the movie, which I don't think is in is in the book. Well, we'll we'll get to that because that's after Snape's left. So, but but the fact that someone is capable of murder does not mean they murdered everyone. And now granted, but if, if there's new evidence, the fact that he's it, it may have attempted to murder someone before, which I think he kind of did, guys. I know there's lots of different opinions of it, but no, you know you know what it is. Okay, I'm, this is literally how I see it in my head, and please correct me or tell me your opinions. I think that's a better way of putting it. I see it as Sirius wanted to get Snape hurt. I wanted he wanted him to be humiliated, and he wanted him to um, to stop snooping around. And if that included him dying as well, Black wouldn't have minded. That's the way that I see it. I don't think he was actually trying to murder him. I, I that's I know it's we're talking about legal process here. I actually don't think that in his mind, Black was actually trying to kill Snake. That is my opinion. But that's you know that, that's a talk for a couple of chapters ago. So uh, saying all this in front of students is not great as well. The fact that he's saying, do not remember that you tried to kill me in front of Hermione and Harry. But Snape is an emotional guy. He actually is, guys. We, we need to remember that he is... He is a, a passionate, emotional guy. Him saying this in front of the students, maybe if he if like if he like turned on the lights, do you not remember he tried to kill me like that. But no, he's he's saying in front of everyone. Do you not remember that he tried to kill me in front of Harry and Hermione? It's like, like wow, he is a passionate guy. Is Snape? Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I was going to say that Lupin could have given them the lowdown, but... Oh, yeah, so so I at this point, whilst going for the book, I was thinking, well, hang on. Why? Surely it's fair. Surely he can't be serious. Surely it's fair to wait until Lupin's calmed the heck down and and ask him his lowdown on it. And I don't mean D.L.O. Brown to finish it. Or, and tag team. No, 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 no. D'Lo Brown's finisher was the sky high. His tag team was the low down with um, one of the head, fra the head thrashers. No, the head bangers. Right. Ignore me. I'm talking about wrestling. Right. I was going to say that Lupin could give them the low down, but then very rightly. Um, obviously, first of all, the, 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 the Dementors are scheduled to kill uh, Black basically soon straight away but then Dumbledore points out werewolves are so mistrusted by most of our kind that his support will account for very little um also also them being friends black has oh yes and, and, and points out the fact that Lupin and black were friends as well again that's going to make Lupin's the fact that the fact he's a werewolf it sucks guys the fact that that would mean that you're less likely to trust someone Oh, boy, I can't wait to meet um, Fenrir, to be honest, because because there has to be president there. There has to be president. There has to be uh, the, the, the the rotten apples, you know what I mean? That that made everyone else, all, all werewolves, seem 
I mean, they're tainted, isn't it? That, that's the thing. But that, obviously, they feel like it taints their, their rational mind as well. So, yeah, I freaking love Lupin, guys. I really do. Such, such a my sort of character, you know? Um, and Dumbledore points out, Black has not acted like an innocent man. Doing what he did to the fat lady, which still blows my mind that it was actually him. Um... Uh, get, get breaking into Gryffindor Tower and everything, which did make me think. It's on my notes somewhere. It's it's the next note right here. Oh my goodness. Okay, plug your ears, Max, because I know you're a big fan of these characters. It's all Fred and George's fault. It's all Fred and George's fault, guys. If. If. They hadn't stolen, and it was stealing... Uh, the map from, um, oh my goodness, what the heck's his name? I really like him. Oh my goodness, what's his name? Mrs. Norris's mate. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Flint, not Flint. Filch. Flint's blooming a, a sliver, Eddie. Filch, my goodness. Um, if they hadn't taken that from Filch, and, okay, this is a little bit of a stretch, and if Black knew that's where the map was being kept, he could have popped back into Filch's office, which is not going to be as secure as Gryffindor Tower, for good reason. Um, grabbed the map. Maybe broken into Lupin's office and just put an arrow next to the map at Ron's bedside saying, Look at this name just next to Ron. That would confuse Lupin. In many ways. Um, we have speculated that maybe the map doesn't show the Marauders on, on it. It shows everyone else. But no, that has been confirmed to not be the case. Because that's how Snape knew in the book that Lupin was heading towards the Whomping Willow. Although in the movie, that is definitely different. We will get to it though. So yes, if Ren George hadn't saw the map, all of this could have been <laughs> averted. And Pettigrew, actually Pettigrew would actually probably have been killed, wouldn't he? Well, where would have he? Where would have Pettigrew been though? Because because Pettigrew would have known that that Snape that that not Snape that Black was on the way. So he may have been hiding out away from Ron, away from Harry. But but Black knows that 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 Scabbers is at the castle. Maybe that's why Scabbers left. Because we were speculating why Scabbers um, ran away, was was hiding away from Ron, Harry and Hermione. Maybe that's because he knew that Black was on the way back and assumed that the map was still in, in um, uh, well, not in Harry's possession. Although he would have known. Would have Scabbers known that Harry had the map? I mean, I mean that's another reason. If if Scabbers saw that that he, that they had the Marauders map, he's thinking, "Oh, boss, that's my name in it. I need to get out of Dodge so they don't see it." It's all starting to make sense. It's all coming up, Veggie. Um, Harry expects Dumbledore to have a perfect solution, which is so nice. He, he feels like reading the plate. It's like, "Oh, okay, Dumbledore's come in. I've expected everything to be worked out." <laughs> which, to be fair, it kind of does. But it's a nice moment for Harry to th think, like, "Oh, life isn't just we get into trouble, then Dumbledore comes along and." Says everything's okay. The fact that that he is valuable—is that the right term? Infallible. One of them. It's a nice moment to show that Dumbledore isn't uh, isn't God, basically. But then Dumbledore does have the perfect solution straight away after the day. And so, um, Black is being kept in Flitwick's office, not in the dungeon, not in the weird sky tower like it is on uh, on the movie, which is beautiful, cinematically beautiful. Very brave, brief scene. No, he's actually in Flitwick's office. Now, why isn't anyone keeping an eye on him? Sure, I'm, I'm sure there's guards outside the door. There is a window which he can't open. But still, you got this guy right there. Just chain him up. Do, do what do what um, Lupin did to Pettigrew. Yeah. What what Snape did to what Snape did to uh, to Black. Snape should have been charged with all this. <laughs> Although he, that would have been that Black would most definitely have died, though, so maybe not. Um, oh, I do speculate that maybe Flitwick's office is charmed, but obviously it's not charmed very well, though. 
because Hermione basically blows the lock off the door, off the window and then he just jumps out. Um, no slapping of Ron's leg, which is a funny movie moment where like uh, where um, Dumbledore's like talking to Ron and Harry and that like, goes like that onto Ron's leg, which is funny. Again, it's a kicking Ron when he's down moment. Um, I do like the moment, but it is disrespectful to Ron yet again. Uh, and in the movie, I don't think this line is in the book, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the movie, there's a really nice Dumbledore line where uh, where he's basically saying three 13... Because Ron's awake. Three 13-year-old wizards. Uh, you know, your word um, is not going to be that worthy to with them. He says, uh, a child's voice is meaningless to those who have forgotten to listen. I'm not 100% sure what it means, but I think it's a really nice line, though. I really thought that was actually quite a... A, a sweet line in a weird way. Um, and so, uh, so uh, Dumbledore does give Hermione the, the hints about what they need to do and everything, as we discussed in the uh, in the uh, summary just now. Um, the chain of the time tunnel needs to go around each person's neck. Now, that is the case in the movie as well. I just didn't pick up on it. Quite frankly, the chain on this one isn't, isn't very long. It couldn't fit Ari's head in this. Maybe Dobby's head. Um... Now, Dobby's got a massive head. What am I talking about? He's got a small head. Um. Uh, pick it. There you go. Pick it. You can fit a whole family of pickets in here. Uh, but, um, bow truckles, I should say. Veggie bow trucker will be returning soon, guys. I hope. I'm so sorry for the wait on a uh, Hogwarts legacy. It's ridiculous. Um. So, it, it does suggest to me that it's possible, and maybe it did happen that Hermione and other students would use it at the same time. Now, we hear about the fact that McGonagall had to do loads of paperwork and, and asking uh, the Ministry to allow Hermione uh, to, to use it. She says that, that she's a... Um, uh, what term is it? Something student, like a, a, a very promising student. Uh, I, I think that, that, that she basically said she... I can't figure out what, what, what the term is, but a model student or something like that. Now, McGon McGonagall knows that she isn't. At this point, she knows that Hermione is, has definitely broken some rules. Sure, they're not completely her fault, but she knows that she's still friends with... Uh, well, for a lot this year she wasn't, but friends with Ron and Harry. So, uh, so yeah, I think that even McGonagall was twisting the truth a little bit there. Um, now, when they use the Time Turner in the book, it changes their location. It moves them to the, main, to the entrance hall. Now... I presume the reasoning for that is when you use the time turner to go back to a time where you would have been present, it puts you near you. Not, yeah. Because straight away, Hermione's like, quick, let's get in this cupboard or something. And they listen to themselves running past. So I'm guessing that that's why it changed their location. Where, in the movie at least, they had to get back to the same location where it was used. Which I, I presume will be the case in the, in the movie in, in the book as well, but we actually don't quite get there in this chapter. Uh, we find out that one turn equals one hour, which is very interesting. So three turns e equals three hours. Um, we're gonna have to write permission to Hermione to to use one. A lot of paperwork apparently. It's interesting that there is paperwork in uh, in the Wizarding World, but you know we see a lot of papers flying around at the Ministry, don't we? Uh, Harry works out what to do with Buckbeak pretty fast. Yeah. In the, in the movie, it's all like it does feel like they're kind of thinking on the feet, but Hermione is definitely the one who works out and keeps on having to remind Harry what they're doing. But it's actually Harry who works out straight away that Buttbeak is the other person that they need to save. Um, I think that Hermione kind of works out in in the movie, but pretty considering how baffled ha Book Harry is by the whole time traveling thing, he really is. Um. <laughs> he keeps on going on about it. He's like, this is weird. It's, like that. it's amazing. Uh, he does work out that Buttbeak is the other one that they save pretty, pretty sharpish. Um, oh, yeah. Now, and Harry says this sentence. Now, I want a small discussion. This ain't going to be another hour, guys. But he says, this is the weirdest thing we've ever done. I don't think it is. Now... Okay, if if we're talking about we, as in me and Hermione, not me, sorry, Harry and Hermione, maybe maybe that's true. I would still say the strange thing that Harry has done is go inside the diary in Chamber of Secrets. I'd say that's weirder than this. Granted, he didn't see himself, but 
that's more of a trip in my opinion. So yeah, him saying it's the weirdest thing that we've done. But then again, if he's talking about him and Hermione, you know, and or Ron, maybe it is. Yeah, because Hermione was knocked out for a lot of chamber. Yeah, may maybe it is. Yes, yeah, so I got down here. Tom Riddle's diary trip was pretty weird. Are there anything? Is there anything else they've done that that's weirder than this? Maybe it. Maybe they haven't. If, if you can think of an example, let me know. Nothing in any in any class would be as weird as this. E boy. <clears throat> No wizard is allowed to change time. So it is possible to change time. So yes, so so one of the rules is that you're not allowed to change time. Now, technically, they do not change time, Hermione and Harry, because they always have... They, they always have saved Buttbeak and, and Black, and themselves, of course, with the Patronus. And so they're not changing time. They are... They are fulfilling time they're, they're fulfilling the prophecy of them going back and and saving themselves so they have not actually changed time although this does her saying that i'm pretty sure it's her money says it was her money says that that does confirm that it is now possible to change time which is not something which we've run into before guys uh changing time is not something that's happened because like i say <coughs> we heard the axe go down on the pumpkin in the movie, on the fence it is in the book. It's actually not the pumpkin, so it's, in a, it's an offence. We hear Hagrid sobbing in the in the book, um, but he's sobbing because Buttbeak has been set free. So everything that they everything that they do always did happen. So they technically didn't change time, but we do hear about the fact that it is possible to change time. We hear about wizards that have accidentally killed themselves in the past. Which really questions what happens then, because surely, if, this is my thing, if it is actually, maybe Dumbledore's being cute, maybe it actually isn't possible to change time, but if it is possible to change time, okay, so, so if it's not possible to change time, then someone going through their life, going back in time and then erasing uh, and killing themselves accidentally, from the, killing themselves from the past, that can only happen in time travel where you cannot change time does that make any sense because if killing your past self is changing time then that means that it's impossible because if he kills himself from the past then he will never be there in the future to kill himself so the only way that a wizard can accidentally kill themselves is if it was written in time that that would happen I'm not making much sense, am I? I hope I'm making sense, guys. But because if if time isn't written, if there isn't if, if destiny is not set in stone, then going back in time and accidentally killing yourself in the past would have no repercussion because you wouldn't be there to do it. The only way that you would be able to do it was if you were destined to die that way. I completely lost everyone now, haven't I? But time travel in this has been fascinating to me. And this is the first time we've even heard the suggestion that you can change time. My argument is it's possible that it's not possible to change time. And, and Dumbledore is is being cute. But also, you know, the Ministry would have said this. And McGonagall would have said this as well. Maybe they're all saying it with the, with the knowledge that it's not possible to change time. Because, like I say, the only way that... That you can kill yourself in the past is if time is set in stone. In which case, you were always destined to do it. Wow. I've lost everyone now, haven't I? I, I hope I half made some sort of sense there, guys. So they get down to Hagrid's hut, and uh, and Harry like says about him going in to to grab Scabbers. Um, and Hermione says that, 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 that they can't do that because you'll be seen. And Harry says, uh, we will only be seen by Celsus and Hagrid. 
just immediately dismissing all the laws and standards of the wizarding world. This is very interesting, guys. It does make me wince sometimes when he says things like that, because obviously he's right, because well, he's, he's not right in this instance, but often his, his law breaking and his rule breaking is what saves the day. But when he when he's so quick to do it, it does make me wince a little bit. Granted, Pettigrew is the one who killed his parents, and so well led to led to their death. So he has reason to be, um, you know, wanting to get that ball rolling. But then uh, Hermione says about how it's often that time travelers would accidentally kill themselves from the past by mistake or future from the, by mistake. God, the future one must be a trip because that means that you know it's coming. Wow. Um, if someone kills their pre previous self, how would how would anyone know? They would stop existing, so not be able to kill themselves. Exactly. Well, we just got through all that, all that waffle. Let me know your thoughts on that, guys. Um, there's no Dumbledore playing for time. So when Fudge, um, Fudge, Dumbledore, McNear, and the the old council member, they keep on refer referring to him as the old council member. It's like he's got no respect at all. This guy. Um, uh. When they arrive, Dumbledore isn't actually playing for time at all. He knows what's going on. Like he like he like has a, like a wry smile when they find they find out that Bud Biggs escaped. Um, but instead of Dumbledore really playing for time, it's just Fudge having to like read out something, which he says that McNear and Hagrid, as a witness, have to listen to. Like it's it's procedure that they have to actually listen to the words that, that he says and everything. Um, I just realised I've missed my two other walk notes that I made. Uh, when when uh, Harry and Hermione are trying to uh, convince Dumbledore about Black and Pettigrew still being alive, uh, they say um, his paw, I mean his finger, uh, he, 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 he cut it off himself. That's not an equivalent, guys. It would be toe. It should be his, t his toe, I mean finger. Because uh, the equivalent of a paw is a hand. And so that is a pathetic little note that I made whilst I was walking through uh, a word this morning. Um, also, again, uh, Hermione says how um, how Snape hates Sirius all because of some stupid trick. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I I've read a lot of your comments. I don't think anyone sees it as as lackadaisy. Is that the right term? Lackadaisy, great. YouTube animation. Really good. Um, beautiful. Really love the art style of it. Um, they're very flippant on the severity of what Black did. They really are. I don't think anyone has said, oh, it's just a trick. If you, if you feel like it is, guys, then please let me know. But all our heroes at the moment are just saying, oh, it's just some stupid, like, some silly trick. A lot more serious to me. Maybe I'm maybe, maybe I'm reading it from the wrong angle, guys. But I feel like at least the majority of people feel like it is much more than a silly trick. And even Hermione at this point is referring to it like that. Um, but yes. Do 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 do. do. Alright, guys. I'm trying, trying to move through my notes so I don't get lost. So yes, there's no. Uh, Delaying the execution by Dumbledore in in the movie because in the movie, like say, uh, like 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 Fudge says, I, I just need your name on here, and Dumbledore says, oh, it's a very long name. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, there's no throwing stones. There's no uh, which I should have picked up on in the earlier scene, but there's no st bit where like stones start throw, throw, coming through the window and Harry gets hit on the back of the air or anything. There's none of that, um, which is a nice addition to the movie. I thought that was quite cool. Harry bows to Buckbeak whilst he attempts to, what, be just before attempting to free him, which is a nice little detail. Um, we hear McNear's first name, which I'm not sure we have done before, but it's Walden McNear. We may have heard it before. McNear gets some, gets some dialogue, guys. Scottish accent on the Jim Dale version. I'm sure he would have been on the uh, Dean Fry version as well. I've got down here that why surely there's a spell that Harry could have used on the chain or the rope. It's actually a rope on the movie, but on the movie, uh, sorry, in the book it's a rope, but in the movie it's a chain. Surely there's got to be some spell they could have just like to remove remove the chain or like you know make it disappear or something. But no, it's all it's all manual in this scene. Unless it's magic rope, 
But it shouldn't need to be a magic rope because it's because it's a it's a it's if they if they're chaining up black, sure, use magic and everything. But it's a creature though, and so it really shouldn't need to be magic. Um. So yes, they get but big free just in time and walk him into the woods. McNear, um, I they all see that that butt beak's gone. Like I say, McNear actually smashes his axe into a fence rather than a pumpkin, which is Hagrid must have been pretty annoyed about that pumpkin. I think it's a pumpkin that that McNear chops. I think it is in a movie. Um, and we see, you see, this is interesting. Hagrid is is wailing like saying, "What can make you clever, boy?" When he realizes that butt beak's got away in a movie, like Hagrid's just like butt beak. <laughs> it just looks a little bit annoyed. It's kind of different. Um. But yes, it's very, very nice. I do feel like Hagrid would be still in a lot... He would be in more trouble now. Because if, if he said, okay, you can continue to be um, care for magical creatures and keep your job and, and your home and everything, but we're going to execute this creature, keep it safe until then. I guess if it was stolen, that's different. But, because McNear is like, so, no, 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 McNear says that he was freed. So, so McNear actually it backed him up then. Because if they, because if, if, um, if like what Hagrid said is true, where Hag Hagrid says, but be pulled himself free, clever, clever boy. Clever boys. Um, then, then that would definitely have. Hagrid being in trouble for not keeping Butt Beak safe, but McNear is the one who actually suggests that he was released and potentially stolen. Yeah, well, Dumbledore is really the one who suggests that he's stolen by saying um, um, that they wouldn't have led him, led him away by foot. You should search the skies, which is in the movie. It's slightly different. I, I'm pretty sure that 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 Fudge like says that um, we we need to search the area, and. <laughs> in in the movie this is and and uh and Dumbledore says search the skies whereas in the in the book it's 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 McNear who says um we we need to search him and he says McNear if if someone's going to steal uh a um puppy <laughs> then then um hippogriff there we go uh then then they won't go by foot they search the skies you you'll have to search the skies and so Slight different, but really nice scene. I, you know, the bit where the crow lands on Fudge's head in the movie, was that staged? So if not, that's perfect timing. The actor is like, he he pull, he plays it perfectly. If that wasn't staged, I mean, you could stage that sort of thing because you know birds are very intelligent and everything. But if that was just a coincidence, that's a great bit of comic timing that that crow had. Absolutely. Uh, so they actually see Harry, Ron, and Hermione approaching the Whomping Willow. Obviously, Harry and Hermione from the future. Um, this isn't the case in the movie. The first thing we see is Lupin turn up. Freud immediately... Oh, pardon me. Freud immediately by Snape. So it's clearly that in the movie, Snape is actually tracking, like, keeping an eye on Lupin. Makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah... The first thing that that they see in the movie is is Lupin going in there, followed immediately by, by Snape. But where, whereas in the movie they actually see themselves going into it, and Harry's still going on. I like, say this is weird. But not, like the, the thing is, Harry keeps on saying this is weird, but Hermione keeps on to say to Harry, "But Harry, we be careful. You can't be seen. You know, don't change anything." And she's like, "You'd imagine that when when Hermione first started doing." the time turning it was a lot of stress in addition to all the work and everything a lot of stress keeping to the rules which you know she really wants to it's very difficult to do uh and so then you have harry thrown into this situation and she's like harry do not do we cannot be seen on it and it's going on about the rules over and over and over again which is amazing i guess hermione from the past could have worked it out if they had seen hermione had seen herself there May not have been an initial thought, but she may have thought, oh, boy, that means that I must have come back to this moment. Why is that? Which could have, of course, changed, changed time as well. Unless it's all in stone. Right. Um, Hermione says, if only the, that Dumbledore had come with them at this point, because obviously they, they see Dumbledore and the gang going up to the castle. i got to say, the whole place seems a lot small. It feels like it's all right, Nick. It's like the Whomping Willow, the castle, the lake, and Hagrid's hut is basically there. 
like very very close to each other which is kind of weird it's not how i in, in the movie that's that that's it's it's like when they're, when they're watching the Whomping Willow, they're also seeing Hagrid and Dumbledore uh, like walking off to the castle and everything, and then McNear coming out to get the Dementors and everything. Uh, it all feels very close in, unless it's just a very open area. I guess it could be. Not many trees around. Hmm. Um, but anyway. So yeah, Harry, Hermione says that it would have been great to bring Dumbledore, but Harry says that, well, that would have meant that Fudge would have come along as well, and Fudge would have ordered McNear to execute Black on the spot. I don't think that's true, because I don't think that we have the death penalty in the UK in this. Okay, Fantastic Beast 1 um, scene. I don't want to say spoiler, but... I feel like, in fact, it's Fantastic Beasts, what's ha going to happen to the lovely Tina, who I do have a bit of a crush on, I must admit, guys, and and uh, Newt, is death. And they're using their memories to bring them to... No, no. in fact, um, I can't remember his name. And I can't say the other name, because that is a spoiler. Graves, there we go, says that they've been sentenced to death. But then again, in the movie, they... No... No, Hermione says that that is a first fate worse than death. Yeah. Um. Do we have the death penalty for in the in the UK? Do we have the death penalty in the Wizarding World? Because Azkaban is meant to be worse than death. The Dementor's Kiss is meant to be worse than death. So do we have the death penalty in the Wizarding World? Try to think where someone is lawfully killed in Harry Potter in in the UK. This is specifically in the UK. I don't think that's what McNear's job is. I think McNear's job is to, is to work for the um the, the destruction of dangerous creatures. Was it? I can't remember the, the exact name for it. So I don't think that he would have uh, given Black the chop. <laughs> Maybe what he means is that McNear would have got the Dementors because the Dementors are working underneath McNear, but they're not though. Although it is McNear who runs out to get the Dementors after they caught Black. In fact, that's a good point. They could have chopped his head off then. So yeah, so so Harry is off there. I feel like Harry's off there, unless I've missed the point, which is very possible. I am an idiot after all. Um. They actually see Lupin, uh, Lupin approach and Snape, which, which we do we do in the movie. That's the first thing they see. Uh, Harry says he is going to grab the cloak uh, so Snape can't use it, but Har but Hermione like like grabs his um, his robe so he, so he actually couldn't. They're actually wearing. They're, it's very interesting when they said robes where, in this point because I I in my head they're wearing what they're wearing in the movie, but uh, um, in these scenes, but they're not though. Hermione grabs Harry's robe. So unless Harry wears robes in his casual time, they're all in school uniform, um, which is obviously very different in the movie. Although it, it was nice seeing them in their casuals in, in the movie, quite frankly. Uh, I thought it, it added quite a lot of personality to, to them, to be honest. Uh, they hear and see Hagrid stumbling and singing on his way to the castle, already drunk. Now, I feel like in the, in the movie, because it's three hour window, right? So they still need to wait for the fight to happen, uh, the Dementors to be to, to be stopped, get on Buttbeat, get up the tower, free uh, Black. That, I would say that maybe half an hour has passed between Hagrid's hut scene and here. I'd say at the most, actually, quite frankly. Hagrid's already pissed, guys. And I mean drunk, because I know that pissed in America means angry, doesn't it? I once saw a YouTube video titled... Um, um, McMahon approached uh, Vince McMahon approached by a pissed Undertaker and I uh, sorry wrestling reference again and I thought it meant that the Undertaker was going to be drunk off his <laughs> his cloud let's put it like that but no he's just angry anyway, um, yes when you when you say someone's pissed in the UK it tends to mean that they are drunk <laughs> um, which I'm sure you probably know that let me know if you knew that um yeah, yeah, I, I do have down here that maybe it's magical, magical alcohol. Because obviously we had the scene with uh, Slughorn and Hagrid pissed out of their, off their cloud as well. Maybe it's just very fast acting. And Harry. No, no, no Harry's not drunk. He's just had that, um, 
He's ha he's got the uh, the luck potion, doesn't he, from Red Dwarf? Again, Red Dwarf reference. Um, when Snape picks up the cloak, Harry angrily says, "Get get your ha filthy hands off it." That's he really doesn't like Snape in the bo in the book, guys. He really doesn't, which doesn't come across in the movie, guys. It just doesn't. Uh, the way that 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 Harry speaks about Snape and the Slitherings, but most of all Draco. Again, it's rent free, guys. It's like this this rage that Harry has, which just isn't in the movies. I'm sure it will change because obviously, you know, Harry's anger also becomes a, a a significant part of the point, the plot, point of plot, part of the plot. But um, but yeah, that was a nice little addition that that he said that. But of course, in the movie, he didn't use the cloak, did he? Um, Snape was right behind Lupin in the movie. Yes, he he literally like he looks like he's hiding in the trees just so as soon as Lupin goes in. He could follow in. Um, I've got a stupid note down here, guys, but I've got to make it. Hermione says, why didn't the Dementors get serious? Now, that to me is incredibly funny. Because it sounds like Hermione's criticising the professionalism of the Dementors. <laughs> but no, she's actually saying, why didn't the Dementors get serious? Black. That's why I called him black, guys, because it's a lot easier. <laughs> um... They discuss, they discuss who could have uh, cast the Patronus. Uh, Harry says that he thinks it could have been his dad. Very interesting, guys. I, I, I've, I've, when, whenever I do these chapters, I rewatch the scenes just before. So in between doing the first chapter in this video and doing this, I have watched these scenes. And as soon, it's like the first thing that happens after Harry sees the person, passes out and wakes up, he says, I saw my dad. So that does... That that fills in a lot of blanks, which I was talking about in the last chapter. Again, I forget this stuff, guys, but he does say it. But again, the, here they discuss it more. Hermione very intelligently suggests that she that it could have been uh, James's ghost, which is awesome. I don't think I don't think ghosts can cast magic, though, can they? Surely they can't. Is there any example of a ghost casting magic that affects the the the, the, the living world? Moaning Myrtle makes water splash around. Doesn't she? I swear that when she flies down the toilet, loads of water comes flashing out, uh, flying out. So they can influence the physical world then. Right? Okay, I can't remember. I feel like Moaning Myrtle does affect water somehow. Uh, I could, I, I'm probably wrong on that. Uh, in the movie, Harry, when her mind like says, but, but your dad's dead. Uh, uh, like, ha ha movie Harry does actually sound really annoyed at Hermione, which is very... I, I like that about it. Uh, that's real. It's like, y you're reminding me this. I know it's the case. I'm just trying to work out how I just saw my dad. Because it, it must be a very frustrating situation for, for, for Harry, uh, thinking that he's just seen his father. And Harry actually does speculate that ha maybe James is actually alive, much like Pettigrew. I think this is in his head, but he does actually speculate that maybe James is actually, actually still alive. Which, you know, it's pretty heartbreaking considering what happens, but he's not down on it, though. He's not down on it. Down on it. What, what happens next, I should say? Uh, they realise that they are exactly where Lupin goes running. <laughs> where are to do to the werewolf. I've got a note down here saying thanks, Hermione, but that's both of their faults, let's face it. Um... They run off back to Hagrid's hut, which is different, and Fang is, like, kicking off when they go running in there. Um, so Harry says that he can't see what's going on and that he's going to go and take a look, and Hermione just looks completely sus at him. Just, she, here she's on the... Because she said this so much about, don't, don't, don't uh, go do that, don't go do that, don't change time and everything. But here it just says, I'm going to go and have, have a closer look. And, uh, I'm going to go and have a look, and Hermione's just staring at him, really, really suspicious expression. <laughs> Again, the the the, the free the, I, I say free down here, but it's actually four locations. In the book, sound like they're so close. It sounds like the lake where Sirius is. Where okay, the lake is obviously visible where from where, where Hagrid's hut is, but where Sirius is is also right there. Which means that the Wampy Willow is has to also be right there, and at least a visible path up to the castle is right there. So in the book, it does feel like it's a smaller place than, than it is in the movie. That's my interpretation of it. Anyway. Also, there seems to be less waiting. Like, uh, like it feels like there's proper passage of time in the movie. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong there. Um, uh, yeah, so, so obviously Harry and Hermione are watching them getting wrecked. Obviously, it's Hermione as well in, in, in the book. And um, and Harry is like saying Harry waited and waited for James to show, to show. And then it says, in the book it says, but no one came. 
and that immediately gave me chills, guys, because if you've played the game Undertale, like to its you know to its fulfillment, that's a dark term. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll preface this with in the in in Undertale it is, but nobody came. But the line, but no one came, instantly gave me chills because that that line, but nobody came. It, it's giving me goosebumps, guys. It's it's a dark thing <laughs> in Undertale. Undertale is an excellent game, guys. It really is. I I I haven't talked about it for a long time. Over the last couple of years, guys, I, I've unfortunately my, my, not unfortunate because I'm delighted that you guys are here. But a lot of the people that used to watch me are kind of fallen off because I, I have changed up what I cover a lot. But we used to like play Undertale and, uh, and all sorts of different video games. In fact, the, the first things I ever whittled is a little Sans. If you played Undertale, or you, you probably would recognize Sans if you if you know much about video games. But Sans is a character from Undertale. First thing I ever whittled that. I'm so pleased with that. Those legs are like all one piece of wood as well. It's all one piece of wood, I should say. Um, but yeah, so Undertale was something which I covered on the channel and I did a play for it of it. It's such a good game. It, it really is such a good game, guys. It's best to go in there not knowing anything about it and then you play through it a couple of times and you learn exactly what, what you are and aren't meant to, meant to do and everything. But the characters in it are fantastic. But I swear to God, guys, if you say, but nobody came to anyone who's played Undertale to its foot, to its to its full potential. So no, I can't put it in, in the exact way that I want to, but that term, but nobody came. It's chilling. Anyway, <laughs> that is another uh, side note. But we're nearly through this thing, guys. We're, we're, we're nearly through my notes. Um, so Harry, and it, this is very interesting because in the movie, he just like runs down. And I think he, I thought he was panicking, thinking, oh God, I, James isn't here. I need to go and do something. But no, in the book, it actually explains he, re he has realized that he is the one who has to do it, which is so, that was, getting to this point in the book was like, oh, that's, that explains so much. That's cool. And it also explains why he's able to do it. And it, it, okay, granted, in the movie, he does quickly on the back of Butt Bee, like says, hey, hey, Wally, I was able to do it because I've done it before. Um, which is a great scene. I, I like that little bit. But the fact that it's Harry in Harry's head, he works out, oh, hang on. Maybe it was me doing the Patronus, which means that I can do it, which gives him the confidence to do it. That made me really happy. And again, guys, that means that time is kind of set in stone in my head. Ed. But um, that, that was awesome. That was a really nice reveal, actually. The fact that it's actually Harry who worked out. Because when watching the movie, I thought he just did it because out of desperation. So he knew that he wasn't breaking the rules. Yeah. He knew he wasn't breaking the rules. Which is nice because because he, he's like been saying like, uh, maybe I'll just go in there and, and grab scabbers or I'm going to go and get the, the, the cloak so so Snape can't use it. Um, and Hermione's constantly saying, no, no, we, we, we can't change time and everything. Harry knew that he wasn't changing time when he did this. Ah, this is, I, this is a good reveal. I was, I was actually very pleased with this little moment. Um... Knowing that he would do it gave Harry the confidence to cast the Patronus without doubt. Loved it. I loved that, guys. I, that, which is so cool, because teaching someone to, to do the Patronus is going to be incredibly difficult. It's going to be, it's going to be incredible, incredibly difficult, difficult for Harry. Unless, that, unless your student knows that they do have the ability to do it with, without fail. Ah, it's a, this is a, a, a nice moment, guys. Um, does Lupin ever find out that he did do it? Well, he did do it properly, or kind of properly, in the movie earlier on, didn't he? He did, kind of. Either way. Of course, during the during the Quidditch match as well. Um, I'm so glad that we're not, not talking about Quidditch anymore, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I do feel like I've I annoyed quite a lot of people with my attitude towards Quidditch, so... Going forward on Quidditch, I'm definitely going to be different. So I, I I know that you're here for my honest opinions, guys. But at the same time, I don't want to be upsetting anyone. And I don't want me to come off as a complete idiot. And I do feel like I came off as a complete idiot. And so uh, I will be curbing my enthusiasm around that. Um, you see Snape collecting uh, collecting the unconscious, putting them all together. Apart from Crookshanks. So God knows what Crookshanks is. Um, no fight with the, with the werewolf and Buttbeak. Yeah, that was an addition that was in the movie. Um, which is tied to Hermione howling. You know what I quite. You know what. I've only just thought. I've only just realised this. So so uh, it's not a completely thought, thought through thing. 
I kind of like the fact in the book that there isn't that moment where Buttbeak and the werewolf fight. Because it kind of makes Lupin less of a victim. Yeah. I, be, I, be, I think that makes sense. I was, I was working out that sentence as it was coming out of my mouth, guys. But th that scene with Buttbeak... Well, well, that scene with Lupin about to grab Hermione and, and Harry... And then Buttbeak saving the day and everything. It kind of takes away the fact of how much of a victim Lupin is. In this whole situation. It, it actually does. I don't mind the movie and the scene though. It's a nice action scene. It's a good, good suspense. But scary. For kids that must have been a scary moment guys. This is this movie is full of scary moments. So. Um, but yeah. That being left out in the book. I kind of. I think I prefer it. Because it allows you for a moment to think less of Lupin as a living creature. Yeah, I like it. I think I just made a good point. <laughs> so it's only, how many videos have we done? So it's only done, it's only taken like, um, I think we're well over 50 Harry Potter videos that I've done. It's only taken over 50 videos for, for me to finally make a good point, guys. So go me. Um, so, uh, they see McNear going to get the Dementors. Yes, they do. Uh, when they're flying off to go and save uh, Black, Hermione, she, she, I like the moment in the movie, guys, where she says, I don't like flying! <laughs> you know what it is? You know what it is, guys? Is that um, movie Hermione in this chapter, in the in the movie, is very, Harry, don't do that. She's very, she, she's very annoyed with Harry. Whereas in the movie, in the book, she's like, "Harry, don't do that because we can't." Do so, so it's it's a it's fine, it's fine change. But for then for her body's like, you know, guard to be down so much, she's actually screaming as they fly through the air. I thought it was quite funny. Um, and it's not a criticism, guys. Hermione in the, in the movies is awesome as well. And this section is Hermione's moment as well. Like, like literally, like for, she's the one who who works out how to get butt beak away. She gets like the the the, the um. Pheasants? Not pheasants. Uh, ferrets out and stuff like that. Um, she's constantly dragging, not dragging, she, oh, she not dragging, sorry, I didn't mean dragging. She, she's holding Harry's hand as she leads him to the different locations, where in the book it's always Harry that, that's in front. Um, he, she is constantly t telling Harry to, to that we can't change time and everything, but it is in a, in a, a we can't change time. Whereas in the movie, she, in the book, she's like, we can't do it. Harry, we can't. So I love them both, guys. Movie Hermione is awesome. She really is. And I, I and the fact that she's screaming on the back of Buffy, I thought was a really funny moment. I don't even know why I'm mentioning that. Oh yes, that's right. Because in the movie, in the book, she's not screaming, but she's like saying, "Oh no, I don't like this. I don't like this." Which is funny. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the scene in the movie as well. In a like, it's a beautiful shot as well with Buffy flying over Hogwarts as well. Just gorgeous. Um. Why would they leave Black unguarded, guys? Even in a in a win, in a in a ring with a locked window, I did speculate that because it's Flip Week's office, it could be particularly charmed. But it clearly wasn't charmed enough because they just get him out the window. They must have assumed that Black was definitely. I mean, Black was working on his own, but they must have assumed that he definitely was working on his own. But why would they assume that? If they assumed that he was a Death Eater, which they would have thought, right? Yes, they would have thought he was a Death Eater. So why wouldn't the Ministry think that he was working with other people? That is a good point. That's my second good point I've made on my channel, guys. That's amazing. Um, correct me. I'm, I'm sure that, that there's something wrong there. So the fact that someone could... could like, you know, with, with a broom. They could have used a broom. Although, obviously, with the Dementors around there, it would be much more difficult. But... Yeah... I don't know, guys. It just seems a bit slappish. <laughs> Putting him in Flitwick's room. And no one being in there with him. Anyway. I, I, I'm I I'm picking holes now and I shouldn't be. Because I, I thoroughly enjoyed these chapters. Uh, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. When Harry is telling him to, to go back, uh, uh, Black asks how Ron is first. Ah, uh, what happens to the other boy, Ron? Now, this, guys, I believe is something which happened earlier on as well. I'm pretty certain that the first thing that we hear Black saying, correct me if I'm wrong guys, I'm pretty certain that the first thing that we actually hear Black say in the Shrieking Shack was, is he alright, or I didn't mean to do that, or he'll be okay, or something like, I swear, I can't remember what it is, but I think that the first thing that we hear Black say 
is essentially apologizing to Ron. And having seen what happened to Ron with, with, with uh, Pettigrew, the very first thing he doesn't say, what are you doing here? The very first thing he says, what happened to the other boy, Ron? That makes me, you know what, guys? I, I, I think this will be different. Because I, I know that some people say that, that Sirius Black is their favorite character in the Harry Potter world. Which is awesome, guys. It's fantastic. Up to this point, I'm not that much of a fa fan of him. But it's little lines like that which really makes me care for him. Now, someone pointed out such a good point. And I, I'm so sorry that I didn't get your... I should have jotted your name down. Because um, last time I was saying about how is your Patronus and your... Your uh, your possible Animagus. Because imagine that you, your Animagus is, is chosen for you much like your Patronus is. It's destiny, you know. And we're talking about how how uh, Pettigrew is rat-like, you know what I mean? And um, and presumably James is quite a proud character, be, being a stag and everything. And someone pointed out, saying, "Veggie, you're absolutely onto it. Black is like a dog. He's like a loyal dog, and he really is, guys." That's why he didn't care if Snape died, because he's being loyal to his friends. Dogs are loyal to a fault, guys. And so, that's such a good point. I'm so sorry I didn't jot your name down. If you've made that point, please let me know in the comments. But, uh, but yeah, that, Black is, a, and I mean this in the nicest way, he is a loyal dog. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like the fact that the first thing that, that he says is, is, the, is the other boy right, Ron. He should know his name, because you know, he read him in the paper, don't he? Um, but Black wants to thank Harry, but Harry is just keeps on interrupting him, like saying, "No, we need to get out of it. Get out of it. Go, go, go!" Like he's actually cutting Black off and everything. So there's no emotional scene where everything's calmed down. <coughs> Hermione like gives him a, a bit of space, and the beautiful scene in the movie, guys, where like you know he says about how, how you have your mother's eyes and everything, and and saying that that your parents will always be here. And I, I think he says that and everything, which is all beautiful guys it's a beautiful beautiful scene i think i definitely want to know your opinions on this i think it being left out means a lot more now serious in the movie we have we at this point we just think he's awesome Gary Oldman's always going to have that effect, unfortunately. And I mean that, unfortunately, as in he's an actor. He should he, he should be able to put anything up, across. But any Gary Oldman character, you're going to end up loving. You know what I mean? Um, much like uh, Alan Rickman. Absolutely. Um, but having that calm, everything's relaxed, we're safe. Hey, I'm going to give you a, a life lesson here. I feel like it takes away from Harry. I actually do. I loved the fact that Black was saying, "I can never, th I can never thank you enough. Uh, you really are your 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 father's son and everything like that." He does say all this, but Harry's like saying, "No, go, mate, go, get out of it." He's, he's not. He's not. He's not even reacting to what 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 Black is saying to Harry must mean the absolute world to Harry. I'm getting emotional here, guys. But Harry is seeing the bigger picture and saying, get out of here. We don't have time for this. You need to go now. This is Harry taking command. And I thought this was so much better. I love the scene in the movie, guys. I really do. It, it It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And I also love the scene where... I am getting emotional, guys. I'm sorry. Um... And I also love the scene after they save S S Black from the from the Sky Prison rather than Flitwick's um, not Sky Prison the, the the tower that that he's in rather than uh, the Flitwick's office. Um, I love it when like you know, they're, they're flying off and Hermione's like trying to stay focused and everything. She's she's looking a little bit more confident now, but Sirius is like going woohoo on the back of Buttbeak and like looking at Harry like you know seeing the son of his best friend having this wonderful adventurous moment and everything. I think Harry's laughing as well. I love that. I love the emotional speech and the and the, the sweetness of that scene. But the fact... But I feel like they take away from Harry's bravery. Harry has... And Hermione, sure. 
But but how? And in fact, Hermione is telling him to to go. I was going to say sod off then. But <laughs> Hermione is telling him to to get out of here quickly as well. It's not just uh, it's not just Harry actually. I feel like it takes away from both the characters. I feel like it takes away from Harry and Hermione. The fact that they are just like and, and Black is saying all this it's such important stuff to Harry and Harry just keeps on saying, "Get out of here! You need to go right now." Is awesome. I loved it. I prefer the book. I prefer the book version. Which blows my mind because if you'd said that you that if you told me that that scene where they the, there's the calm before uh, Buttbeak and Black fly off into the into the moonlight isn't in the movie, I would have been like, oh what? That's a shame. I don't think it's a shame. I feel like the book did better here. I hope I make sense when I say it's taking away from Harry and Hermione's bravery. Because they are so focused in the book. They are so focused on saving and keeping Black safe. For, for Black to have the moment where he's like going, Woohoo! Much like the book the book cover from, from the, uh, you, know, you know, that book cover which we, did, we discussed before. Not this book cover, the other one. Um, and him giving Harry a life lesson and, you know, saying all this sweet stuff to him. It kind of, it makes, it feels like Black is the hero of the moment. Harry and Hermione did an unbelievably awesome job here. And it's not triumphant. It's not like going, yeah, we did it, or anything like that. It's like, get out of it, Black, now, go, go, go. I prefer the book version. I thought it was awesome. I really did. Now let's move over to the book club, guys. Uh, I'll get that set up in just a moment. I need to go get my hot... I don't know if I want a hot trunk today. It's really hot. I'll make a decision. But either way, love these chapters. Let me know your thoughts on that last scene, guys, because I think the book version, despite the fact that it takes away so much beautiful dialogue and everything, I feel like it's better done in the book. I really do. Let's go over to the book club. Oh. Someone's not happy about the book club. Can you hear that? Yeah, you can. Let's go to the book club. I'll do that at the end of the video. Okay, guys, time for the uh, Harry Potter book club. So, like I say, if you want to be a part of this, you can uh, join the Patreon for as little as you want and get access to everything that's on there. There's no tier system or anything, including these uh, Harry Potter book club blogs. And, yeah, they're always the funnest part of doing these videos, guys. They do take a while, but that's fine. Now, there's, a, there's some basic rules to, to follow about, like, keeping it a certain length and everything and not mentioning anything in future chapters, which is ironic considering what chapter we're, we're going today. Um, but yes, we will get started with said comments in just a moment. I did decide to get a hot chocolate, guys. Um, in my, uh, Hufflepuff mug, of course. Um, I was thinking what would be the, the cold alternative to a hot chocolate. And I was very close to making myself a mojito. <laughs> but I thought that would be a bit of a mistake. It is quite early still. And yes, I, I don't know if I want to be drinking mojitos whilst recording YouTube videos. And so I decided against it. Um... Although I do have uh, uh, mint in the garden and so on. I've got some limes as well. One tiny little correction, guys. When I sing about the but nobody came thing, it, in Undertale there's a couple of times when it appears. But I mean, I mean in the bad path. I don't want to give too much away with Undertale because it is an incredibly in-depth, clever game. But if you go the bad path, when nobody came comes up, that's that's when it's creepy. Okay, guys, so let's get get the, get this rolling. So as always, guys, I only ever read the top comments, so I don't re read replies. And so if you want to reply to them, you can. Always, please, please be respectful and friendly in those replies, though, guys. But um, um, basically, like that, it's very rare where where where, where th things go up. And so if you, if you, if you just like you know, be respectful, even if you disagree with someone's uh, opinion, it doesn't matter, guys. We're here, we're here to discuss it all, you know. So either way, let's get on with Seds' comment, who's the first person to comment. Thanks for these reviews, Veggie. Thank you for, for watching. Love these chapters. Perfect chapters outlining Harry's natural leadership and courage and Hermione's cleverness. No need to give her lines from other characters or make her um, seem flaw like a, some flawless hero. We, yeah, we, we, it's, yeah. Giving other people, uh, other people's lines to her, as I can tell, is like a real. I mean, I, I've started to find it strange as well when it happens. But I can tell people who read these books for years, it must really stick in your crawl. Her character is fascinating as it is in the books, and it shows how Harry, over the years, earns the right to become leader of Dumbledore's army. In the movies, that seems a bit unearned, if that makes sense. I, I, I. 
I believe you said. In fact, you know what? What we were just saying about at the end of that last chapter, I feel like that showed a fantastic leadership by Harry. In a movie that seemed to be about... Uh, and, of course, Ron's character in the book, street smart, courageous, and a truly good friend, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, Ted. And the leadership thing is so interesting because you know what? I am starting to see that. And particularly in that last scene where Harry and Hermione were basically telling uh, Sirius to get out of there. I thought was so good and it was actually better than the movie version, which I did not expect saying. Thank you so much for your comment. Jake, pedantry time. Ped pedantry time, yes. Uh, Lupin says he must take the Wolfbane potion every day in the week, le week leading up to the full moon. Ah, now that's interesting. In which case, does he really need to take it on the night of the full moon? Okay. <laughs> he does. As someone who who semi-regularly misses doses of his non-wolf wolf, werewolf medication, I'm not sure missing one out of sev seven do doses should really be as bad as if he'd taken none. Here's an interesting question, Jake. Was it as bad as if he'd taken none? Because he's turning, and as soon as he turns, black's onto him in dog form. And so it's possible that it may have been worse. Yeah, we may not have seen the worst. We, we So, what I'm saying is, if he'd taken none, I'm sure that this werewolf would be worse. More wild, more scary, maybe even taller. You never know. I don't know. I don't even know exactly how it works. I don't think anyone does, does it? It's not true, is it? Um, but... To miss one dose, I reckon it's very possible that what we saw was a slightly watered down werewolf because he had been taking them. But it's very interesting though about the, I mean, you, the thing is you said medication there. And this is a potion. And I think that that might be where the difference is as well. It's not, medication is a something which is all about treating the body in the right way that it needs to be treated. Whereas potions is making the body in the right way it wants to be. So... That's a fascinating question, though. I wonder how exactly Dementors communicate with humans. We discussed this later on. We keep hearing about conversations between them and Fudge and D Dumbledore as well. But all Harry ever sees them do before passing out is pointing and attempting to kiss people. Which makes them sound like an adult film actor. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I reckon... I re in my head canon is that, is that they can understand English. I don't think they speak it. So I reckon that it's pos maybe it's some sort of sign language, in fact. Very possibly. Very possibly, in fact. But I think that um, a conversation would be a human talking to it and then gauging their physical reaction uh, and, uh, you know, to it. I, uh, that's how my, my head canon is. Or it could be a, a separate language altogether. It could be parcel tongue. I mean, it's not parcel tongue, but it could be something like parcel tongue. Um, yeah, that's my head cannon for it. Uh, I also love how amused Dumbledore is with Buttbeak's escape when the other others and Hagrid at Hugger's hut are just baffled. Yeah, he he, he has a, like a, a wry smile, doesn't he? I think he may even have a like little chuckle to himself. I do love the movie version where he's like clearly playing for time, uh, and even when like when they like. Um, when Fudge and the gang are leaving or coming in, he's like saying, oh yeah, look over to the... <laughs> as the group is like running away. Awesome stuff. Both are great. But it's nice that he did allow himself a rice smile though. Um, it's almost like he knew the plan already. As Hagrid says, knows everything, Dumbledore. Yeah, I think he did. And, I, and the thing is, it wasn't that the plan... In my head canon, wasn't a plan. Dumbledore knew it was going to happen because it had to happen. <coughs> this is going back to this discussion with time travel, guys. It, I hope I made some sense earlier on when I was talking about that. One last thing. I was watching your uh, chamber reaction last night. Thank you very much. Do you recall calling Dobby a prick several times and Hermione he, a psychopath? Has your opinion of Eva changed? 
Oh yeah, if we, he was being a prick. I, 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 okay, at, at the start, Dobby is absolutely being a prick with the cake. I'm trying to think what happens in the movie. It's pretty similar, isn't it? I have still got my time turner, by the way, guys. Um, Dobby is a prick, and I feel like he's more of a prick in the movie. Hermione being a psychopath, particularly in Chamber. Oh, that's when when she's talking about the. Um, I'm probably, sure I say it a few times, but I remember remember I recorded that when when um, she was talking about the polyjuice potion and everything. It was. It's the first time we've really seen dangerously rebellious Hermione. And you know what? It goes back to the whole mudblood thing. It really does. And that comes across a lot more in the, in, the, in, in the book than in the movie. The fact that Hermione is determined to get the Polyjuice Potion to work. Um, so, so they can prove it was Draco. It's very directed, you know? And so, yeah. I feel like Dobby can be a prick. Obviously now, having known his, known, well, his movie story at least. And obviously his role in Chamber. He he can be a prick, but he's not a prick. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Hermione being a psychopath, probably not. Where was the last time that Hermione was a psychopath? I mean, she slapped the hell out of Draco, didn't she? No, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll take that one back. But we shall see, though, guys. May come back again. Right, moving on. Thank you so much for your comment, Drake. Um, Marianne. Hi, Virgie. Uh, okay, nothing to do with these chapters, but there is <coughs> my take on squibs. Ah, yes, we were talking about this last time. Squibs are. Um, oh, that's right. I, I put this. I made a meme for 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 this in this description. There we go. This is why we're talking about squibs because I put this in the description, guys, because I'm an idiot with my mugger there as well. So that's why we're talking about this. Um. Scribs are people who are born to wizard parents, but who have no magical abilities of their own. The, the author said they have to have at least one magical parent to be a squib. She also states that muggle-borns, muggle-born wizards were believed to be descendants of, from, from squibs. Muggle-born wizards, descendants from squibs, who married a muggle. This means the magic gene is passed on generations in the same family. So I'm right then. So it's the... It, this is very interesting, Marianne. So uh, we'll read the rest of your comment in a moment. So what you're saying is there is a fundamental difference between a muggle and a squib. Uh, parents aside, scientifically, there is a difference. Then I'm right then. Oh, hang on. She also states that Muggle-born wizards were believed to have to have descended from a squib who married a Muggle. Descended. So they. So so. <laughs> squib has a ch ch child with a Muggle. I then presume that that is a squib as well. That squib then has a child with a muggle, and their and that child would be a muggle then, right? So down the line, those that, that, that muggle must be able to have. Yes, yeah, so I'm right then. Okay, well let's read the rest of your comment. So I don't think your theory of two muggles having a squib child can be correct. However, I shall use your own words. Sometimes you have to just agree to disagree. Marianne, this is very interesting because going on what you're saying, she also stated that muggle-born wizards were believed to have been descended from a squib. So that means that one of the muggles must have been descended from a squib, which means that you can be a muggle after a squib in 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 the, uh, in, the in the in the in the order in the family tree. You can have muggles after squibs. Which means that they are different things. 
scientifically, right? But then for two muggles to have a squib, how would that... I guess my thing is, is that I always see it as a science thing, rather than a, um, a, a cultural thing. Where, as in, cultural thing as in, like, you know, we, can't, we call our parents mum and dad and everything. Not cultural, guys, just like the way that we... It's, it's a human concept to, to call... Oh, man. I'm still... Marianne, honestly, this is very, very fascinating information. I'm still not... A, I'm still... I'm still backing my horse on this, I'm afraid. What I, what I guess it comes down to is, is Squib just a title? Or is it an actual thing? Because if it's an actual thing, then I think that it can be born out of two muggles. Even more so if two muggles... Because the thing is, what you, what you said here has differentiated between what a Squib is and a muggle is. Parents aside. Because a Squib... Someone who's descended from a squib has the potential, but then Muggle. No, hang on. She also stated that Muggle-born wizards are believed. So if so, if that believe if if that is true, one hundred percent true that Muggle-born wizards um are descended from squibs, then scientifically, squibs and Muggles are different things. I don't know. I find this so so fascinating to discuss, but it sounds like you you do disagree. So that is a lot of food for thought. That is fascinating information, Marianne. Thank you for that. I love how much you you are fascinated with squibs. I find them interesting too, as even though they got to know about <laughs> both magic and and the Muggle world, they never fit, fit fit into anywhere. I would love more in depth story about Fitch's childhood and what he experienced after realizing. <coughs> he wouldn't get his Hogwarts letter at age 11. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, I, I would love a squib story. It doesn't have to be Filch per se, although I find Filch a fascinating character anyway, particularly as he's from quite a strict um, Wizarding World family. Proud, I should say, rather than strict. Um, but yeah, I'd love a story about, even if it's just a short story about a squib. I'm always, I'm, I always back the downtrodden guys. I'm always, you know, I'm always going for the underdog and everything. And so that's why I find Squibs been fascinating. I really do. Great comment, Marianne. That is a lot of food for thought. Great appreciate. Lizette. Um. Lizette, sorry. Uh, I, I think, I think to remember about Black and Snape discussion is that the, the books were written for children. That only really started to change during the fourth and fifth book. JKR has had in, in, invested hard into making Snape an unlikable character and imagining him dunking his head against the ceiling as, as payback for all of his antagonism is is funny to children. I can see that. I can see that. But but surely you don't find. Mm. But then you had the line about him saying to Dumbledore, "He did try to kill me." Ah oh, man. Uh, it's very interesting hearing it from a different age group. Actually, uh, that's that's very interesting. As it s certainly was to me when reading this book, age 10, 10 11. That's fascinating. Is that? It's very difficult for me to, 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 to gauge it on that level. As an adult analysing the situation, I find it appalling. But I honestly think that many of the horrible de depictions in these chapters were written for pure comedic effort without knowing her that her books would ever be as popular as they ended up be being. Doesn't excuse Sirius' actions, but I doubt JKR meant him to be unlikable at all in these chapters. That's very interesting, Lizette. That's very interesting, because I've got to say, uh, from my standpoint, I do find him quite unpleasant, but like I say, the, the, the way that he's always asking about how how Ron is and everything, I thought it was great. 
And he is one of my favourites too, along with Snape. There you go, very interesting. Very interesting you said about the, the, the roof scratching and everything like that. Um, I, maybe that is getting Snape back for um, tying him up with the snakes. With, with what looked like snakes earlier on in the scene. It could just be a straight up re revenge for that. Rather than it being anything going further back into their past. Although, obviously, neither of them have let much go, have they? In my opinion, Snape is driven by fear in these scenes. I honestly think that he has been fe feeling unsafe the entire year. And that it is all culminating for him here. He is afraid of... That rhymed on me. That he is afraid of Lupin, which he has been since seeing him... In werewolf as a child true not only is he forced to be around him this year but his his would-be murderer who he fears even more is now on the loose and heading for hogwarts where he his dangerous werewolf friend is already is ready to help him pass pass security and nobody has been willing to listen to his warnings Let's also not forget that he thinks that Black is coming to kill Harry, who Snape is keeping alive um, in honour of Lily. Uh, it just made me think about something then. Black is using the, using the tunnel to get to the fat lady, right? That wasn't Crookshanks, that was the tunnel. So Lupin could have told people about the tunnels. And then that would have stopped Harry from going out as well. Yeah. Lupin's decision making is very interesting in this. It's very interesting that you say that Snape is looking at from fear. That is something which which uh, I haven't actually considered much. But I think you're absolutely on the money. I doubt Snape has slept well the entire year. Not to mention that the Dementor's presence at the school certainly would affect Snape at least his power as powerfully as they affect Harry. Since his past is... Way darker than Harry's. <coughs> Interesting. I feel like there's probably con uh, context which I'm missing there. I know that he can conjure a Patronus to spare himself. But I doubt that he wants to do it if he doesn't have to. As it would remind him of Lee. Well, that's, a e that's an excellent point. And that, you know what, that's like Harry wanting the Dementor to make him hear his parents screaming. You know, wanting to hear his parents, I should say, rather than hear his parents screaming. That's a great point, Lizette. That, that is a lot of food for thought for Snape, and that is definitely another way of looking at, it, look at him in these chapters. Thank you so much. Michelle. Uh, I really love Snape and S Snape's serious uh, parallel here in these chapters. Sirius moves an unconscious Snape in the tunnel after Hermi Hermione reminds them that they couldn't leave him there. True. Not caring about knocking his head feet against the tunnel. making him Oh yeah, his, his feet as well. I forgot about that. And making no effect to prevent it. Yet later, when we see Harry and Hermione travel back, we see Snape lifting S Sirius on... <coughs> on a stretcher with the others to take them back to Hogwarts as soon as he regains consciousness. Despite Snape's anger and hatred for, for Sirius, <laughs> I just laughed at something which I will say in a moment. He, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, <laughs> he, he is doing this without knowing he is being observed and he doesn't hurt him when he, he has a perfect opportunity. Nice detail. That is brilliant point, Michelle. I will say this. Harry and Hermione are only watching it for, for a little while. And so, out of shot, on the way back to the castle, Snape may have, <laughs> may have been like flicking him in the ear and things like that, you know? We, we know. It's true, though. From what we see, Snape has been the, the consummate professional, which is nice because he has been unprofessional in these recent scenes. But now that, 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 that everything's calmed, he is back to, okay, what's best for business? This. And I'll take everyone back 
safely and respectfully. But we don't see the entire journey back to the castle, that's what I'm saying. Do we? Hang on. When, when are Harry and Hermione seeing that? Oh, I'm, I'm getting very... It must be after... It's, it's when they're getting butt beat to go and save Sirius, isn't it? Of course. It is. Great point, Michelle. But yeah, like I say, we don't see the entire journey. <laughs> so you never know. Maybe he's bumping um, uh, Black's head on the way back or something. You never know. Or maybe it did say that he took him on it. I'm pretty sure it said that we saw him getting put in the mall on stretches, at least. Yes. Anyway, great point. Thank you so much. Dara. As always, your time is impeccable. Thank you very much. Just finished the last beast item. Oh, yes. No, I went and collected that yesterday. So hope I can post it on Friday. Yeah, so, so Dara and family send me, like, um, uh, boxes per book and everything, guys. And... <clears throat> Has, has just sent me a Fantastic Beast one, which I went and collected yesterday. And so I haven't opened it yet. There is a um, an unboxing video, which I recorded a few weeks ago now, but I just haven't got round to posting it, because I don't like to post it when I haven't been posting other stuff, if that makes any sense. And so that will be on the way soon, but thank you so much, Tara. Um, and make sure David keeps his foot calm. Uh, first day off. After 14 days of 12-hour shift. Oh my goodness, Dara. Hope you enjoyed those days off. Let's start with Hermione's secret. Um, Fudge also doesn't really believe the story. I know he only believes what is convenient for him. But honestly, it sounds sort of weird, doesn't it? Uh, but, 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 okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause you right there. Because it, it sounds like you're moving on to another subject. My interpretation of fudge is this. You know, actually, perfect Hagrid, of course. You know uh, when, um, well, in my movie reactions, but also in my um, in my tribute to uh, Hagrid on, on in the community posts, uh, I said about how I know Robbie Coltrane best for a TV show called Cracker. Um, and there is one episode... I won't give any context, of course. You know Christopher Eccleston? He's also in it. Christopher Eccleston, who played the first of the new version of Doctor Who. Um, Christopher Eccleston's character is like a police chief. And uh, and, and Fitz, uh, Robert Coltrane's character, is like a criminal psychologist. And they, they basically get this guy who they want who they believe is is a criminal to admit to a very very serious crime um and they're like yes success and everything and then it turns out that the guy was only saying that just in spite of of the people that were trying to get him to to, to admit and everything and so they'll know going down the right line that they got that they got the wrong person and there is actually a very bad criminal uh, out and about still and Fitz Robbie Coltrane's character goes to the police chief Chris Eccleston and says it, it wasn't him. He he's just admitted that that that, that it wasn't him. Um, so we, we need to reopen the case. And the police chief is like, well, no, we, we've got we've got our person. That's it. If 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 so if another crime happens, that's fine. Then then that, that local police force will then look into it and everything. But we've got our man. So his philosophy, the police, and this is bad. And this obviously is a bad start for their relationships. The fact is, Chris Eccleston's character's philosophy was. We wanted the guy to, com to to admit. We got him to admit. Happy days. That's it. Whereas Fitzgerald, um, Rob Coltrane's character, was like saying, "Well, no, th th but that's not morally right." I, that's what I get from Fudge. Fudge's role here is to catch Black and to get get him the Dementor's guess. That's his role. So he doesn't really care about the fact that there may be something else going on. So, well, my job is to get serious kissed. And so that, that, that's really it. That's how I see Fudge's morality in this scene. He doesn't really care about the fact that there may be other circumstances because he's busy getting on with the job that he's been told to do. That's my interpretation of him. He's a fascinating character, Fudge. He's in, in the movie so much more than I was expecting. Um, also, what do you think about Snape past... Snape's part of the story being ignored by Dumbledore. I know his version is not correct, the correct one, still. What is the... 
Because you have to remember that there, there, there are two conversations that are going on. There's Snape and Fudge. And then um, Snape and Dumbledore. I'm not sure which part Dumbledore is ignoring. If it's bringing up the fact that, that uh, Sir, Sirius has the... Uh, um, is proved that he has the ability to murder, that is irrelevant in this case, Dara. Uh, but I don't think that's what you're talking about, though. So I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what it is that Dumbledore um, is ignoring when it comes to Snape's take of this story. And like you say, like even though it's correct, I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate what you mean by that. I'm sure it was written that way to show early where the characters stand. Fudge believing in more reasonable story of a, 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 ro roni, a rounding up wizard, maybe? Rounding up story of a roan up wizard. Dumbledore doing, sorry, that's me. Uh, Dumbledore going with his own dis decision and listening and believing to three 13 year olds over others. Well, he has also sp talked with Black as well. I'm pretty certain he has, right? I think so. But like like Dumbledore uh, says, is that um, people have forgotten how to listen to children. So so Fudge and, and Snape are just basically preparing everything that, that Hermione and Harry are saying, but also because they think that they may be bewitched, so... Also, shout out to Pomfrey. I could do with... With this enormous chocolate bar, please. Yes, it sounds amazing. It's like a boulder, like Harry imagines it. But we needed to see where Harry gets chocolate shoved into his mouth. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Pomfrey is great. I always appreciate Pomfrey. Thank you so much, Dara. And by the way, guys, my, uh, though Dara's uh, first language is in English, my dyslexia made a, 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 a hog's dinner. That's not a pig's dinner out of reading that last part. So I apologize. Thank you so much, Dara. Great, great comment. Jenny. I wonder why no one thought of giving Sirius and, oh, Sirius, the ver, verticium so he could prove his innocence. Oh. I sort of get it when he was first arrested. There was witnesses and never, and he never denied that he killed, he killed James and Lenny. But now Harry, Ron and Hermione saw what what happened? I know it was said that they're just kids and the w their words mean nothing. There we go. But I think it's unfair that something like that, this, given someone the Dementor's kiss, can be decided on or, by one man, even though it's the minister himself. Well, like, yeah, you, you're right, Jenny, but I just get the impression that, that Fudge's mindset is my only role here is to get Black kissed and anything else is just like an annoyance and something that we can deal with later and so the fact that it has to be done there and then is so frustrating but it is this whole thing of black just wants to get his job done Sirius does want some revenge to to an extent and also Sirius not Sirius sorry, um, uh, Snape d uh, does want to get some revenge but also is fearful and also believes that, that, that what he's saying is true also it's interesting to see how Hermione panics in dangerous or unexpected situations whilst Harry keeps a cool head and immediately knows what to do. It's true. Yeah, I, 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 I would never say that Hermione in, in the in the um, in the book is is perfect, but uh, as in, I'm not saying that she's. I, I would never say that she's across the board, better than movie Hermione. I do definitely prefer book Hermione. But movie Hermione, it, like, very rarely panics. Um, and is very good at, at being level-headed in, in extreme situations. So, but I feel like she did pretty well. I mean, the thing is, she, she was just terrified of Harry screwing up. Cause, because she Harry doesn't know the reper repercussions. Hermione knows how really bad time travel can really shaft things. And so... Um, she is definitely panicking, but because the thing is, it's, it's like she's she's gone back in time to do this, but she also needs to keep a leash, a leash around Harry, making sure that he doesn't do anything stupid, you know. So maybe that maybe that's where the panic's coming from. Janet, great comment, thank you very much. 
Josh. I really appreciate how much the books let a big moments breathe. The movie doesn't, doesn't, and I know they had to keep moving, but it diminishes the impact of such moments. Yeah, unfortunately, that's always going to be the case with, with um, um, movie interpretations, not interpretations, adaptations. I'm optimistic that the TV series will do the story much more justice. Ju because they can take their time with it. Yeah. I mean that that from what I gather, that is the entire point of this movie of this TV series. So it'll be very interesting to see. Because they will change some things. Some things will it's not gonna be word by word, the book. And so it will be interesting to see what things they do change. Maybe they'll modernize some things. Yeah. Josh, great comment, thank you very much. Slim. Sirius immediately steps stepping up as as Godfather, uh, setting up to the Godfather, Godfather plate, um, offering Harry the one thing he wanted all in his life, a loving home. Absolutely. I noticed too that it was Sirius that protected the trio, not Snape. Not only that, he actually tries to pull Lupin away from Ron and, and Pettigrew. Yeah, because they're blooming connected to him, aren't they? Which is difficult. Yeah, I mean, Snape's out cold, but, but absolutely. It, it's serious. In the movie, he does like say, uh, run, run, and then just turns into Animagus as his focus. But he's in the book, he's definitely a lot more focused on getting them to actually get to safety. And he's like saying, uh, get to safety, I'll I'll look on. I think he actually says, I'll, I'll deal with, with getting Ron and everything like that, I think. So yeah, absolutely stepping up to that plate. I don't know why the movie chose to alter this and give Snape a hero moment. Damn, you know what? You know what, Slim? I was going to make this point earlier and I blooming didn't. I think it was... You know what I think it was? It's because th they didn't want to have Snape being carried along by Black. I, they, I don't think they wanted to show the darker sides of... Not the darker sides. The, the crueler sides of Black. The, I cannot imagine them having the scene where Black is walking along the corridor and Snape is bumping his head. That that would never have been in a movie. I feel like they wanted Black to be much more, as soon as that scene was over, to ba for Black to be the ultimate babyface. Good guy, I should say. And so, so they could have had Snape being unconscious, but I guess the scene was easier to tie up with him being there to protect Ron and Hermione. And to stop them from chasing Harry. Maybe so they could have that scene with Harry and, and uh, Black uh, by the lake to be more simpler. It's a good point, Sam. It's, great. it's a good point. Lord, I think Snape should receive praise for taking everyone safely up to the castle in the aftermath. That's uh, the bare minimum you would expect from a Hogwarts teacher. It is... But also, it does show that Sir, that that Black did have the opportunity to. Sorry, it sh but Snape, as a human being, did have the opportunity to eliminate Black, uh, get revenge, or you know, solve the case, as you, as you could also say it. He decided to play it by the book, which he didn't have to. Whereas before, he wasn't playing by. He, he was saying that 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 um, I, I can call the Dementors here. Why go back to the castle? That's a good point. I think that he does deserve some credit, but I, I do see what you mean. Sirius would never make uh, make a mailman, though. He delivered he, his delivery of Snape's body out of the tunnel was less than kind. Very true. Despite Snape's constant desire to see Sir, Sirius receive the Dementors' kiss, true. And I, you know what? That's true, Slim. The way that I see it is that I think. Yeah, I didn't think this before, but I do think now. Serious. Oh my goodness. Black bumping Snape's head on the ceiling was revenge for him being manacled by Snape in the previous scene. And nothing else. I see Snape and Black being quite petty. I actually do. I see them as being quite petty. Not, 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 I'm not saying they're bad people. But I do see them as being quite petty gits, <laughs> if I can put it in that way. And so, I think that despite 
everything that happened, all, all, the, all the things that, that, that Snape put Black through and all the things that Black put Snape through, I think that moment when, when Snape's head's bumping off the, off the scene was purely, are oh, you going to put me in manacles? Are you gonna, I'm going to put you in manacles and I'm going to bump your head. I just see that as being a really petty little thing that, that, that Black was doing there. That's, that's my interpretation of it. Um, did you enjoy the time travel aspect? Was it what you expected? I thought it was great. Um, like I say, it felt a lot sm like a smaller area. But other than that, I thought it was brilliant. And I feel like the movie did a brilliant job as well. Yeah, I thought it was great. Madame Pomfrey for president. I can I can, I can agree with that. I hope, I hope that she shows up more in the future. I'm sure she will. Um... Because she's going to get busy in the later movies. <laughs> Sending you good feelings. Loving your Lord of the Rings uh, uh, appendices reactions, by the way. The audio commentaries for the films by the cast are utterly hilarious. Really? Oh. Might edit this later. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping you got in everything you wanted to. Commentary being funny. Wow. I can't imagine. I mean, they are very funny people, but they are long movies, though. One great commentary is the Knowing, Knowing You Alan Partridge DVDs, which had Alan Partridge doing the commentary on it. That was me. But we're not here to talk about Alan Partridge. Thank you so much for your for, for your comics, and that was excellent. Sandra. That, hi, Veggie. Uh, as chapter makes these chapters make this chapter makes me want to start uh, a Madame Pomfrey Appreciation Club. She gave me. Mrs. Weasley vibes when it c comes to caring for people. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Ham and chocolate the size of a boulder and shoving it into Harry's face. Breaking it with a hammer. Briskly. Almost choking Harry by shoving a chocolate down his throat when he's stopped shouting um, at uh, Fudge and Snape uh, for a millisecond. Spluttering he he hysterically at anything that doesn't come under the healing code of conduct. Yeah, it's true. Again, though, she's got one job to do, and her job is being in... It's almost like Fudge in a weird way. Fudge has one job, to get black. Pomfrey's job is to make people better, and anything that gets in the way of that is a nuisance, and she does, and she wants it got. She, gone, sorry. I say, yeah, I'm loving the Pomfrey appreciation here, guys. I'll I'll jo I'll sign up for that club straight away. Uh, Dementor communication in in interests me when Fudge is telling the Dementors to go back to Azkaban. How does he do do this? Oh, hang on. Dementor communication interests me when Fudge is telling Dementors to go back to Azkaban. How does he do this? Uh, I don't think this has happened yet. It can mean a spoken thing or a gesture. Oh, this is what we were talking about just now. Maybe. They can only follow commands from whoever is controlling them. Well, it it was it was McNear that 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 was going to go, go and grab them, wasn't it? But also Snape said that he could bring them to them. Very interesting. The Minister of Magic or Voldemort, of course, in the future ones. Oh, that was the Minister of Magic as well. I think. Edited. Ow! These things are dangerous. Um, edited, P.S. I I had forgotten that Lupin told the Dementor to leave on the train at the start until I was re-listening to your book club video. Ha. Same with the Dementors telling them to... <laughs> F.O. <laughs> during flight... Flight... Flight of, flight of the Fat Lady. Still interesting. Yes, Dumbledore, that's right. Dumbledore has definitely spoken to them. But again, they may not be in that language. I presume that they can't... I think that Dementors can't speak English. I think that they can understand it. Um, and, you know, the way that they're reacting, then their body language can indicate if they're actually going to listen or not. That That's my interpretation. Great comment, Sandra. Karen. Hi, Veggie. Um, I want to start off saying that I'm not... A, a, a Snape fan or hater. I, I, yeah. Neither am I, Karen. And uh, sh I, I, I'm sorry, I've already paused your, your comment. But I do have a lot of trouble blanking out what I know because of the movies. I like to think that I break down each character's acts on them, you know, individual acts fairly. And that's why I'm thinking that despite everything, 
what Sirius was doing when bumping Snape's head was out of pettiness, out of what had just happened to, to Flack, uh, rather than any deep-seated revenge or anything, or malice. That's my interpretation. Anyway, I'm sorry, let's continue. He's a middle, a middle character for me. Uh, the movies, in my opinion, do make Snape a more likeable character, they do. Like when he shields Harry and Hermione from, from Werewolf Lupin. You can't say for sure that Book Snape would have done that too because the situation never arised. One could only hope. I think he would, Karen. I think he would. Not only because he really doesn't like Lupin. You remember when... Um, I can't remember what it was, but I feel like it was in Chamber. When Harry and someone else made someone else's potion explode. And everyone was like covered in like things which were like making blisters. like, And I think Draco's head like blew up or something like that. Not blew up, but expanded or something like that. Um, my, my surprise was how professional Snape was in that scene. He's like, okay, line up if you got splat splattered, I'll, 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 I'll fix all this and everything. And only when everything was calming down, he then said, I'm going to get whoever got who, whoever did this. So I think that Snape does have a professional mode go form. We did not see that in the previous Shrieking, Shrieking Shack scene, though. Um, I'm sorry, I completely lost what you were saying. Oh, yeah, about defending Hermione and Ron. And Harry, um, I think he would have done. I think he would have done. That's a, the, but that's my interpretation now. And again, I'm, I know I know the movie the movie Snape. So it is it is my 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 viewing of these characters is tainted. I feel in chapter twenty one, Snape's flaw is he allows hatred to cloud his judgment to to an extent it frustrates me that neither snape or fudge li listen to harry and hermione oh absolutely and i am definitely more disappointed about snape i feel like fudge is th again i've said it so many times in the last 20 minutes but fudge has one mission to get done and that's that's all he cares about uh snape the fact that when dumbledore comes in no one says peter pettigrew I, I completely worded... Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I worded something completely wrong earlier on. Um, I did. I'm sorry, guys. Because it wasn't for Snape to bring up the Peter Pettigrew being Scabbers thing. What I meant was, it when Dumbledore comes in, Snape, having heard what Hermione and, and Harry has said, says to Dumbledore, Pettigrew was not in that room. Which means he is 100% saying that what Harry and Hermione had just told him, he is blocking out completely. That's the point which I tried to make earlier on and I failed to. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm an absolute schmohog. Um, yes, damn it. That was the entire point I was trying to make and I didn't actually make it. But the fact that he, that he actually said to Dumbledore that Pettigrew was not in the room. All the time. Um... My biggest question is why Dumbledore trusts Sirius. Even Dumbledore mentions Sirius hasn't done a great job of making himself look innocent. Absolutely. Attacking the fat lady. Dumbledore always seems to know everything going on. Well, yeah. And I, I, I do feel like he, he... I don't know how, but I do feel like he, he knows you know, what, what, what things to push and everything. Um, which is part of, you know, why he's such a lovable character and everything, but. I mean, the thing is, maybe. Dumbledore knew that Peter Pettigrew was still alive somehow, maybe? I'm not sure. It's a tough one, but he does seem to always have all the cards, doesn't he? Which is so nice that we had the line where Harry is, like, kind of disappointed that that Dumbledore doesn't have this solve error thing spell or something like that, you know? That was a really human moment, in fact. Last thing. There are a few things that the movies did that aren't in the book that I really love. In this, it would be a visual visual hints for time traveling, like Hermione throwing the rock and, and her uh, howling. I think it adds so much for 
for being such a little detail. It's true, Karen, and I reckon that the reason why they did it is because in the movie, obviously live action and everything is going to be a lot faster. And so they didn't want... So they could put out these little hints because there's so much going on that you're going to forget about that hint until it pays off. Whereas in the book, if you finish a chapter and you, and you go thinking, about, oh, I wonder what that rock was all about. You don't have that time to try and reflect, you know. But yeah, it had th those moments were very cool. And I like the Hermione howling thing. I was surprised that wasn't in the book. I was surprised that wasn't in the book. Great comment, Karen. However, in one of my book, my first book club clubs, I wrote this about Professor Snape. The thing that characterizes Book Snape is that he's verbally harsh, but physically gentle. Um, now, now we have a perfect example. When Snape had his arch enemy Black at his mercy, the man he hated the most in the world, what did he do? He conjured a stretcher for him. He could do anything he wanted, murder him, torture him, you name it. If he'd murdered him, I think Snape would still have to stand trial for murder. It, I mean, the thing is, I don't know how the wizarding world works, but you know, you, you can't kill a murderer and they and not even get interviewed by the police, you know what I mean? Um, how I, I, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not being, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, pull strings here or anything. But like I said to to an earlier comment, we, it's very possible that Snape may have shoved an elbow into his ribs or something at some point. Because we don't see him in the entire journey back, you know. So I do like the idea that somehow, some way, Snape got his revenge for the head scratching, you know. His head must have been in quite bad shape, actually, by the end of that, thinking about it. Yeah. But from what we see, he has been the consummate professional, which I, which I do agree with you, at this point. He didn't, because it's not who he is. Snape is not a violent man. Reader, readers who accuse him of being a sadist fundamentally misunderstand his character. Sirius, Sirius, Sirius doesn't seek to hurt people. On the contrary, he's consistently portrayed as a character not concerned with other people's physical safety. That's, that's literally the opposite of saying oh, it, that he is concerned about physical safety. Like, like, like I was just saying about the uh, the science, the the potions class, I should, I should say. Um, I mean, I do feel like Snape contradicts that to an extent in the previous scene, where he's like saying that he's going to set the maybe the Dementors are going to be interesting in, interested in kissing Lupin, and why take you back to the castle when I can bring the Dementors here and everything. That is the side where Snape is letting himself down there. But I do feel like he is someone who who does care about people's safety. But I, I know there's so many different takes on, on this character, though. Uh, Snape's gen gentleness star starkly contrasts with Black's brutality. Both men f found themselves in the same situation, having their unconscious enemy at their mercy. But the way they treated them couldn't be more different. I think it tells... Us, everything we need to know about these characters, the contrast between them is striking, literally. And I think Rowling is too good for of a writer to be unintentional. I'll say this, um, Hawa. It's very interesting, guys, because several of these comments are brought up the head bump in. I don't think. Harry's interpretation, which is all we can go on, is specifically Black is not putting any energy into avoiding it happening. So Harry and Hermione aren't watching Black basically smacking Snape's head against the wall or anything. It's basically bumping on the, on the ceiling and his feet are bumping on the steps and everything, um, which would be a, a, a bit painful. Brutality is not the word which I'd use for that. Pettiness is the word, not pettigrew. Pettigrew, uh, pe pettiness is the term which I'd use for that. And so, it's not... I mean, you say, you know, that, that Snape didn't torture him, he didn't kill him. Well, I mean, Black isn't doing the same to, to Snape either. I mean, obviously, he doesn't really have any, any cause to kill Black uh, Snape, although he has attempted to do it before. 
you know, arguably. Um, I I don't think the bumping off the ceiling is is that brutal. And when it, when he's when Snape is scraping on the ceiling, it's when Black is kind of taken back by what Harry's saying, so he's completely not paying attention now. Um. Yeah, he he's not mercilessly beating Snape, is what I'm saying. He is being a petty git, in my opinion. Um, and I think that's a revenge for the for him getting in shackles in the previous scene. Um. Sirius is non. Severus's non-violent nature is among the top reasons why I love his character so much. It's way it was also one of the reasons why I never believed he was a bad guy after Half Blood Prince came out. Wow, I'm looking for your book reader first, right? Um, murdering Dumbledore seemed so much out of his character that I simply knew there had to be more, and it and it, and it was going on the movies. I. I, I don't think I said it immediately, but because I thought that Dumbledore said don't to Snape, but he didn't. He said please, which is such a big difference. And because I didn't hear that properly, um, if I'd heard Dumbledore saying please and, and that registered properly, I think I, I, I think I would have been suspicious that something would be up as well. And also, Alan Rickman was portraying... Snape as doing something that he didn't want to do, and also we had the scene earlier on where where Snape's saying you can't you can't ask me to do this as Harry comes in, you know. Um, yeah, there were definitely uh, little bits of information teased throughout that movie, but getting to the book cannot wait. Though that's going to be fascinating to experience. Thank you so much, Howa. I, I I I always appreciate your comments. I hope that I I sound respectful in my replies. So actually, I feel like this was a very respectful conversation. I feel like sometimes I'm I can be quite flippant, but I I I, I hope I wasn't this time. Kent writes. It's interesting how much Harry cares for Sir Sirius. When he finds out the fake truth about Sirius, he hates he hates the man, but learns to actually. Tr the actual truth he sorry but learning the actual truth that he hate turned to that that hate turned to pure love he chased after Sirius to make sure he was safe as well as well willing to leave the Dursleys to live with him willing to go back home uh, in t I'm sorry guys go back in time to save him if we really stop to think about that even learning the truth, Harry still barely knew Sirius. Oh, absolutely! I, I completely agree with that. He really, he really doesn't. Um, if we really stop thinking about it. He was still a stranger to Harry. knew him knew him just for a few hours. At least the books give so much more detail in the the, the movies left out to make it less weird. But both book and and film it's such a weird concept it is well i mean in a way um the movie does have that scene where black and harry are speaking alone to each other because hermione's gone around the corner um which just isn't in the movie it's in, in the book at all which i was really surprised by but you, you're right but also he sees sirius as the one connection to his parents as well, although Lupin as well, although he, he gets on great with Lupin as well. I love the hospital scene so much, Snape and the minister being there with Harry and Hermione trying to convince them rather than just Dumbledore is amazing. I agree, it seems weird that that it's just Hermione, Ron and Harry being left alone and then Dumbledore comes in. That does seem a little bit strange, but, but also it's quite a short scene as well in the movie. So it's definitely better having the uh, a proper discussion going on, or argument, I guess you should, you should say. Thank you so much for your comment. Jacqueline. Black's gaunt face broke into the first true smile Harry had seen upon it. The difference made was startling as though a person 10 years younger was shining through the the of oh, the starved mask i i put i said scarred for a moment he was reckon 
recognisable as the man who laughed at Harry's parents' wedding. Yes, absolutely. That's such a beautiful line. Such a nice but heartbreaking moment. It's very, very sweet. Also, the description of Lupin's transformation sounds absolutely horrible. It's true. I didn't go into that, but it absolutely does. It bre it's breaks my heart that he has to go through that every month even though even with the wolf wolfbane to keep him sane on a light tonight Dumbledore cracks me up every time in the time traveling sequence both in the book and the movie I agree it, it, it is good in the movie it definitely is a uh, way he's like playing for time and everything this is also what I meant by the movie time travel being my personal ca canon up to just after the De Dementors, rescuing Sirius makes more sense in the book. There was no need for her to blast the door open. You're already supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Sorry, ignore me. Um, also, yeah, it's true. She, she just probably br like smashes the lock, doesn't she? It's kind of bizarre. Also, there really realistically wasn't nearly enough time for a conversation between Sirius and Harry that happened in the movie. It's true, Jacqueline. And But you know what? That never dawned on me, though. It really didn't dawn on me uh, like, at all until now. But you're right. The, the, the rush that Harry and Hermione are forcing S Sirius to get through, to go, I should say, is a lot more realistic. So, yeah, I agree. Great comment, Jacqueline. John. In the movie, Snape did protect Harry, Ron, and Hermione from the werewolf, Lupin. While... That didn't happen in the book. You have to remember that he was still unconscious during uh, all of this. So he wasn't able to do anything. Very, very true. I think it made... It, I'm sorry. I think if he had been conscious, he would have protected them just like he did in the movie. That's my opinion, John. I agree with you. I, I, and it sounds like some other people may not, but I think he would have done. I feel like Snape has two modes rage and ultra professionalism and I feel like he, he even just being an adult with kids around there is something which just kicks your brain into I need to protect these kids and I feel like that absolutely would have kicked in um not only because Harry's there but uh, I'd be with, with anyone I actually do great point John I, I, I agree with you it's a dance thing I know what I'm about to say is going to get a lot of hate, but Reggie's an idiot. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm going to get it out of the way first. What if Sirius wasn't bumped, bumping Snape's head and feet on purpose? Hear me out. Sirius has spent the last 12 years in prison without a wand, unable, unable to do practice or mag, of, of, of practice any magic and he's now doing a hovering charm with a wand that it's that is not his own he's extremely out of practice and using the wand that probably doesn't like him um he may be struggling a bit to do the charm correctly i i think that that is absolutely possible as a dance thing now it is harry's interpretation that's that black is not putting much effort into avoiding it happening but harry interpretates a lot of things wrong though doesn't he um i think you make a very good point actually about the fact that it wasn't his wand he hadn't he hasn't cast anything for so long on that same note i'd like to defend sirius a bit over the last few chapters he spent the last the, the last more than a decade in prison as a convicted murderer and blames himself for the deaths of basically his own family uh oh yeah that's actually very true i'm sure the reason he's not lost any sense of mo i'm sure the reason he's lost all sense of moral compass com compass is due to the fact that he he's convinced he's still going to spend the rest of his life in Azkaban anyway. Well, that's true, because he's just going out there to kill Pet Pettigrew, isn't he? Because who would believe his story? He already thinks of himself as the bad guy, so why would not be... So, so why not be a bad guy? That's not to say that I agree, I agree with what he did. 
I'm sorry. I agree with what he did. That was questionable. But I can see where he's coming from. Yeah, his, I mean, his mental state at this point is definitely something that we should absolutely take into consideration. So it's possible that back when... Back when he tricked Snape into going to the Whomping Willow, Child Black was just thinking, ah, this will be a laugh. Whereas now Snape is like saying, who cares if he died? Maybe that, maybe that is a, a, how his different approach, you know, going on his life, um, life experiences. Um, I'm sure you noticed that Snape was unconscious when they all came out of the Whomping Willow. And was not awake to try and protect um, the kids when Lupin transformed. I had honestly forgotten that that was not in the book until I reread it. But before rereading. And I'm a little sad it wasn't. I can totally see that being something Snape would do. I'm glad the movie added that little bit in. Same with what Sirius said to Harry and Hermione uh, before he took off on Buttbeak. I wish they that conversation was actually in the books. This is the thing, Dance. I mean, I, I, I love that scene as well. If I was to pick, I mean, the thing is, the book is new to me. If I was to pick right now, one or the other, I would go with book just because I love the panic that Harry and Hermione are basically saying, Sirius, get out of here. And don't call me Shirley. What? Um, yeah, th this rush to get him out. That is so awesome of Harry and Hermione. They're not, there's no emotion there. It is completely action stations you know i thought it was great but but it is a beautiful scene but i'm gonna be the most beautiful scene in the movie um so both of them are great uh i love that hermione went with harry to go after sirius by the lake and that harry asked her to to help with the patronus charm absolutely i love that little extra bit just shows how great a friend hermione is especially what she's been through with this book okay i'm rambling enough I'm gonna go hide now. I I think dance. You you made some great points here. I I I I I don't think. Um, I mean, I definitely hope that the replies that that that, that you got are respectful and everything, because I I thought you you make some brilliant points about bringing a serious this mental state um into question. Not not into question, but counting that towards his the way he's acting. Yeah. Great. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there go. I, thought I, I thought I lost it there. I thought it was great. It's a dance thing. Uh, great comment. Darcy. Um, these chapters are so frustrating to me. I cannot stand when people won't believe the main characters. Oh, I know. We, I absolutely know what you mean. It's so... It's... On anything, it's always like, just... You know what I also hate? Is when... Oh, what I really hate, Darcy. I'm sorry, you set me off now. Darcy, in like a movie or something like that, when so when someone's got this crucial information and they need to tell the person, and they, and instead of just saying the information, they're like saying, if, if you just give me a second to explain, if, if, if I can just say it, if, if you just listen, if you just listen to what I'm saying, if you just give me a chance to just say it! Oh my God! Newt! was uh, guilty of that in uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. I was screaming at the screen for him to tell uh, Tina about uh, his marital situation. <laughs> that might be because I love Newt and Tina. I really do, guys. And the fact that, again, I don't want, I want to voice spoilers, but because, even though Tina wasn't in the last one that much, I, I thought this, what she was in was made me so happy. <laughs> it really did. Right, back to your comment, Darcy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> To this day, I still don't understand why Sirius or any other characters present could not cons consent to taking Vitasserium or having their memories put in the pensive. That's a very good point, Darcy. That would that must be something that's used in the legal procedure a lot. I mean, it should be as long as they can put them back in again. Because obviously there's one on Fantastic Beast where it's basically removing the memory completely. Hmm. Um. By the way, guys, this taking Fertasirum. Um. That's the that, that's either the second or the third time that's come up. I gotta admit, I don't remember what that is. I'm guessing it. 
I'm guessing it's in the book at some point, or in the movies or something at some point. But I don't remember. It's like, I presume it's like a truth serum, right? I honestly don't remember it. I really don't, either way. Um, this is the Whistling World, and yet there is something no po possible... Some, somehow, no possible way to prove Sirius's innocence. I've read these books so many times for years. I'm still so mad about this, Darcy. I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, it's, it's one of these traits, isn't it, in movies and TV shows and everything, where, um, like, everyone has just been reluctantly stupid. Reluctant? No, that's, like, completely unfairly ignorant. Willfully ignorant is probably the best way of putting it. Well, Darcy, I'm glad we're past these chapters now. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the next one, the next one more. But great comments, and I, I completely know what you mean. <laughs> if you just listen, up. I mean that's that's uh, what, what I was saying was different because because you're saying you're saying people who just completely just don't listen to to the evidence that's in front of them. Whereas what I'm saying is kind of the opposite. But yeah, <laughs> great comment, Darcy. Jacob. Uh, all school year, Harry has believed Black wanted to kill him. Thinks Black even broke into their room and got the, got the wrong bed. But straight away, after seeing the truth and realizing and really knowing <coughs> nothing about Black other than he was he wanted to kill Wormtail. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. <coughs> Harry is happy to move on with him. Disney's really are that bad. You know what, Jacob? That, I feel like, is the key point. Because I can't remember how it's worded that scene with with with, with um, Black and Harry talking about him moving in. But the first thing that Harry brings up is the fact that he doesn't want to live with the Dursleys. And so I think it is. I feel like that is actually a huge chunk of... Of the reason why Harry is so loving and trusting of Sirius so fast. That being said, he does also he's also seen pictures of Black in the past as well. <coughs> Although he's had bad connotations on his pictures lately. Great point. No, I, I feel like it is. I feel like it is the, the hatred for Dursleys. Harry uses his hate a lot. His hatred of Slytherin, his hatred of Draco, um, his hatred of Black, his hatred of Snape. He uses that to his advantage a lot. <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry, he uses that to motivate him a lot, is what I'm saying. So Harry is definitely someone with a lot of hate, guys. And that is not something that comes across in the, in the movies. Not at all. Thank you so much for your comment, Jacob. Sorry for coughing all the way through it as well. Kristen! Ha, Veggie. I, on the theory of squibs. Okay, let's get going. They can see magical creatures, places. Exa example, Dementors. Mrs. Fig saw them. And Hogwarts Filch just don't have... Just don't have many magic powers. They can give birth to a witch, wizard, because they have the gene. I believe... A squib can only be born from a magical parent, but wizards, witches can be born from anyone that has magical genes in their blood. But why would that seclude squibs then? Because I feel like I, was, I, 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 I feel I can hear my tone of voice change when I'm having this sort of discussion. I'm sorry, Kristen. I don't mean to sound rude. I really don't. It's something that I'm very uh, fascinated with. If it's true that squibs can see magical creatures, are you telling me that no magic, sorry, no muggle-born has ever been only able to see magical creatures and that's it? No other magical ability only being able to see magical creatures. I think that, that I'm sorry, I sound so aggressive when I'm talking about this, don't I? I'm so sorry, I don't mean to. What I'm saying is, you're telling, you're not telling me, I am. I need to calm down. Thank goodness I didn't have that mojito. <laughs> um, so people who say that that squibs cannot be born from muggles, you're 
that argument would suggest that at no point in his in the history of wizards and, and humans, which I presume started at the same time? Very interesting question. I have no idea. At no point ever throughout the entire history of the human wizard race have two muggles given birth to a child that can see magical creatures but do nothing else. I think that would have happened. I am so sorry about how angry I sound when I talk about this stuff. I'm not angry. I'm not angry at all. I just find it so engaging, you know? But I just like saying, you're telling me. You're not telling me anything, Kristen. I'm so sorry. I must have sounded so rude. Um, moving on. Uh, for the chapters, I always thought the fact that... Uh, when I say you're not telling me anything, it's like, I, what I'm saying is I was suggesting that you were arguing with me. And I don't think you are. I think you've just given me some fascinating information. Um, so thank you very much. Um, for the chapters... I always thought the fact that they had so much time to talk to Sirius in the movie didn't make sense because they were on the run on a time limit. The book does <coughs> it better. They wouldn't have time to talk. Dumbledore wouldn't have let Harry li live with Sirius, but it would be nice to see him pop up at the Dursleys to see him. That would have been amazing. Imagine that dinner party. Invite Dobby around as well. Oh my goodness, that would be cool. Ah, oh, I need to see a, a little animated short about that. Mr. Black comes for dinner. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. And yeah, again. The limits of time doesn't bother me too much. It probably should, but it doesn't bother me that much. Because it's probably 50 seconds. Um, but it is more realistically. And it, and honestly, I think it, it's, it, it adds to Hermione and Harry's character so much more. They're like saying, forget your praise. Get the hell out of Dodge, mate. I loved that. I, I didn't expect to... I, I cannot believe that I prefer a version of this story where that scene doesn't happen. Where, where Black is talking to Harry. That blows my mind. But also, Black doesn't seem like the sort of character that would have that little talk with Harry yet. Maybe he will do, but at this point, I don't think he does. I'm finding it very easy to separate movie Black than book Black. I really am. I really am. Black books, of course, a uh, sitcom. From the early 2000s. Ignore me. Uh, right. Thank you so much for, for your comment, Chris. And, and again, I'm sorry if I sounded aggressive with replying to your squib stuff. I just find it so fascinating. Um, Maria. In the last video, you remarked on how many people said that Sirius was either their favourite character and said you were curious about why he was such a favourite. Sirius is definitely one of my favourite characters. Okay, quick drink of this because I'm going to just see this. Oh my goodness. Um, Sirius is definitely one of my favourite characters. And although I don't remember exactly when and why I started to like him, I think it I probably started with the scene in, in chapter 20 where he offers Harry a chance to come live with him. It's awesome. And it's out of... It's not because he thinks Harry's so great. It's because of Harry. Uh, it's because of Lily and James, isn't it? Um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be interrupting so quickly. I think it's possible to start. Probably started chapter twenty when he offered the chance to come live with him. It's such a little moment, but it's so great <coughs> and well written. I remember reading this part as a as a kid and being so excited for Harry and just so happy for him because the other other books in the series came out I just assumed that Harry would eventually go live with Sirius Ups, you, you and me both when, watch, when watching the movies I thought he would I really enjoyed imagining what that would be like for Harry where where they would live and the things they, they, they would do together it's all very heartbreaking in retrospect but it's also 
great to see the bond that Harry and Sirius start to form in these chapters. I was going to say that Black could go home, but not when he's on the run, though, could he? So, no. Because I guess that I assumed that he would clear, that Black would clear his name. But I also, I assumed that the Dursleys would stop being in it after, like, Azkaban. So, um, yeah, I was waiting for that moment as well. For, for you know, Harry and, uh, and Black to, to, uh, to finally have a home. Also, I find the conversation with Snape and Fudge having in the hospital very entertaining. These chapters are just so great. It is entertaining, you know, because the, the way that Fudge is really bigging up Snape. And Snape's not playing... The thing is, is that Snape is t just telling it like he sees it. He, he's not, like, saying, yeah, then I did a backflip and Black trying to, like, take me out. And he, he's, he's saying it exactly uh, as he sees it. So, yeah, it's good stuff. I'm glad you find it funny, because obviously the previous comment found it very frustrating, but yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm loving how much we're getting fudge in this stuff, guys. It really is fascinating. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. Kevin. Hey, Veggie. I wanted to comment on this much earlier when you were discussing the Dementors showing up to the Quidditch game and their strange attraction to Harry, but I figured that this was a much more appropriate chapter to bring it up. Bring it up. Okay, Kevin. The interactions between Harry and the Dementors and their fascination with him is one of the most amazing bits of foreshadowing the entire series with hindsight. The Dementors kiss kisses out your soul. Now, what do we know about Harry that would make him so more so much appealing than anyone else to a creature that feels feeds on souls? Oh my goodness, this series could have ended with Voldemort getting sucked out of Harry's soul. That would have been it! That would have been it! That would it have been it? No, it wouldn't. It would have been it, because he would have been brought back in Goblet. Right? No, no. It was the blood of the person that, that de defeated him that, that they needed. It wasn't actually anything to do with Voldemort. So that would, that would have been one of the Horcruxes already got. Via Dementor, nonetheless. That would have been amazing. Although, Voldemort doesn't have any love or happiness, does he? So I don't know how palatable he would be to a Dementor. I always get this wrong. Dementors suck out the joy from people, don't they? Yes. So I don't know, he probably wouldn't taste very nice to a Dementor. But that would have been amazing if the Horcrux was already destroyed. Like, on, on uh, Definitely Hollows, they're like saying, okay, we need to find a full, final Horcrux. Oh, hang on, a Dementor at it. <laughs> Rit. Or maybe the Dementor would have turned into Voldemort. Spooky dookie. A bit like, I can't say that. A bit like something in Buffy. There you go. <laughs> right, Kevin, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, I greatly appreciate I greatly appreciate who, you holding out on that. Great, for, seriously, brilliant. Brilliant point. Stark. I always worry I'm saying it wrong. Stark. Um, hi, Veggie. I finally decided it's time for, for the first comment here. Okay, Stark, uh, Stark or Stark. I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong, but your first comment. Thank you so much for, for, for this. I'm looking forward to this. I really enjoyed the book club and this comic community. Sometimes there are really great interpretations coming, uh, interpretations coming up here that I hadn't thought of before. Oh, you and me both. I, 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 it, it's so fascinating experiencing this story for the second time because I've watched the movies uh, but with so many takes on it it's blooming wonderful these chapters are really bittersweet I already had my hopes up for Sirius offer offers Harry to live with him from now on and leave the Dursleys for good it would have been a wonderful thing but then it all goes south and th this hope is destroyed again complete not completely as Sirius I can escape alive, but for the, the largest part, yeah, and the, and it almost dangles that sort of thing with, well, maybe Harry will get another chance in the future. <laughs> I'm really enjoying time travel stories. I'm really, really enjoying time travel stories, and what if scenarios? I liked the parts with the time turner. It's it is handled in a clever way as it gets clear. It gets clear that nothing really changes. 
the trio just misinterpreted stuff before absolutely this book really is the the one i enjoyed the most mainly because of lupin and the marauder the marauder story yeah the marauders tv sh show written from lupin's perspective would be awesome oh my goodness wouldn't it he would have to be the main character guys he would have to be i would be all for it now we get close to the fourth book oh my goodness i didn't even think about that that's crazy um the one that has been robbed a lot of great and funny scenes for in, in the movie that's interesting i will be back once we reach the the first major scene stark stack 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 uh, thank you so much for the comment that was awesome i really really appreciate it the, the the time travel stuff is awesome and i agree i feel like everything is written and so i think it's even the case when wizard goes back and accident accidentally kills himself i think even that's written which means that this is the only way that that could actually happen because if not then it, time time would shift and it would mean that he would never be there to threaten himself in the future oh it's confusion but it's 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 fun to work this sort of thing out though lupin's tv show i'd be all up for and yeah on to the next book. I have heard that Goblet of Fire is, is arguably the one that's changed the most. I remember seeing that a lot actually in my movie reaction comments in fact. But um, looking forward to it because I thoroughly enjoyed the movie as well. So maybe I won't after, <laughs> after get into that but we shall see. Thank you so much for your first comment. I hope to see you in the future. Mel. Oh my goodness Mel. This is a chunky comment. Um, hi Veggie. How are you? Okay. I know it's probably wrong about wrong what I'm about to say but it's always crossed my mind up until now Dumbledore wasn't supposed to know about Sirius's innocence but rereading these chapters it seems to like seems totally in the in in the knowledge even the in, in even in the film when Buckbeak is beheaded um he already seems to know that he must be be planning to divert the minister's attention so that Hermione and Harry can get high butt big. Absolutely, he absolutely is. Th then he, th then, I'm sorry, then use him to help Sirius escape. I do, I feel like Dumbledore did know the entire uh, thing. I don't know how exactly, but I feel like trying to interpret how Dumbledore could know something would be very difficult because I think he's got a lot of means, you know, that we wouldn't even understand. Except that this point in the book and the movie, no one yet knows Sirius' story. Let's imagine that Dumbled that the Dumbledore from the day that Buck's sentence is in, in fact, a Dumbledore from the future. Oh! Who knows the end of the story? Oh my goodness, Mel. That is a great theory. No wonder he knows how to use a time turner properly. He's been doing it himself. Wow. Also, why... They could have used time turners at other times in the future. But they had to get permission from the Ministry, though. Yeah. But the Ministry could have time turned when Blum and Voldemort got wiped. Let's not think about that. That's that's when things get very confusing. <laughs> um, I always thought that Dumbledore never helped the trio outside of the outside the idea of going back in time, but maybe he did. After all, Dumbledore is om omniscient, but at this point in this book film, Sirius is still guilty as hell for for everyone. Absolutely. What could Dumbledore have known or understood at that moment to decide that Buck would be useful in the in in the future? By the time Buck was beheaded, um, had Remus already seen Peter's name on the map? No. Yes, or oh, it's around it's around the same moment, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I think it was late, later on. So smart a Dumbledore. One scene that touches me was when Harry discovered his Patronus. 
We see less of his emotion in the film. The phrase, it stared, it stared at Harry with its large silver eyes. Slowly it bowed his antlers to him and Harry realised, prongs, he whispered. That is beautiful. And also, uh, it's nice because in the earlier chapter it said that, that the person who cast it went to Pat. The, the Patronus, but what it actually was, was Harry just being overwhelmed trying to just touch it. So th that was a nice little detail as well. He has a moment of en of encounter with his Patronus, which is so, is which which is not his father, but is totally seen his, his, his father in it. It's almost a uh, father-son moment. I think it is. I feel like it is. It's, it's much like why Snape's Patronus is what it is. Um, and I'm sure that Snape does see that Patronus as essentially being... I, I feel like I can say that. <laughs> um, metaphorically, Harry enters into com communication with his father as if it was his father looking at him with silver eyes. On reading, reading I even wonder if it wasn't his father at the time. He and he 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 became becomes a stag, like his father. Therefore, becomes a man. I find. Oh, I see what you mean. My goodness, I find that moment symbolic. Oh, absolutely. In the film, I find the decision discussion he had with Hermione on Buck's back rather rushed. Oh, it is. It, 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 at that point in the movie, they are getting all the information out that they can, but you're right, it really is. The problem is that in the book, we have Harry's internal monologue, which you just can't do in a movie like this, and so they needed to get that information out stat. Hermione's not even listening to him as well, which is the great thing. Um, fun fact. Do you know the origin, the origin of Dementors? There isn't a, this isn't a spoiler... It doesn't appear in the book. It's a side content that ex that's expl explained by JKR. The, an the antidote is is long, so uh, so oh anecdote uh, an anecdote is long. So I'll summarise. In the 50th century, a dark mage, <laughs> Ecridis, no need to read it. Thank you. <laughs> the name is too complicated. Uh, living on an island of Azkaban. It in his fortress, he would deliberately lure muggle sailors to his island to kill them and perform some what dubious experiment on them. Oh, this is this is interesting. These experiments were a, a ray, resulting in dementors. The wizard died, and the dementors stayed. When the minute. Ministry discovered the island. It was already infested by Dementors who reproduced. So we do have baby Dementors then. But they feared destroying the fortress because the Dementors were indestructible. Oh, that's interesting. And seemingly attached to the island. The Ministry was afraid of... Rep... 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 Repels if they... If they fired the Dementors. Uh, a succession of ministers followed, including Raoul, um, who decided to build the prison and co collaborate with them. My goodness, that is fascinating. Love from France. Mel, fantastic comment. Um, that is fascinating about the Dementors. I mean, I was asking that exact information earlier on as well. Great stuff. Thank you so much for that. Benjamin. Um, there is one thing that always bothered me. It was Sirius's goal to go from the beginning to kill Peter Pettigrew, but he knew the true story. After this book, he he goes into hiding. I mean, what really changed? Peter is still free. Sirius is still innocent. The Wizarding World still thinks he's guilty, except for Harry, Ron, Hermione, Lupin, and, and Dumbledore. Why does he now leave? Yes, I know that Peter is not in Hogwarts anymore, and Sirius has no idea where he went but what would be the ministry's explanation for why Sirius left Hogwarts for them he was always 
after Harry and Harry is still there. I hope th this makes sense <coughs> and makes any sense to you. Sorry, my English is really not that good. Oh, Benjamin, your English is perfect. Don't worry about that. Um, <coughs> it is the, the lack of evidence of Peter being there. The fact that, that, it, that the ministry, like I say, likes to accept one reality and stick to it. That's, that's Fudge's philosophy. And so... For, for Sirius to then turn out to be innocent, for one, that would mean that uh, the Ministry did a horrendous job in in uh, in solving this crime. And so it's almost like a cover-up, isn't it? Now, why... Are they, I guess they could say that because Sirius failed to kill Harry, he then gave up because he's a coward or something like that. I, I think that's where you could interpret it. But that is a very fascinating point, though. But yeah, because there's no evidence of Peter, because try and find a rat in a random location, you're, you're going to struggle. Um, unless you have the map, of course. Um, yeah. It's interesting, but I just feel like the Ministry... I mean, we know what the Ministry gets like. I feel like even now the Ministry is kind of... We know that it's not particularly well run. Great comment, Benjamin. Well... The relationship between Harry and Sirius has to be one of my favourites. Now that Harry knows this, that Sirius is innocent, he immediately sees him as a father, father figure. And my take on why that is, Sirius is James's best friend. I think Harry sees his father to be a part of Sirius. Although, oh, through him, he could have a parent again. Well, I completely agree. And also those photographs that he, that he would have seen of so many. I think there must have been so many of Sirius. I think so. And also, quite frankly, Harry is desperate for, for, a, for, for a father figure. That isn't a professor, you know. I, I, I feel that makes a complete sense. But yeah, his relationship with James and Lily would be absolutely uh, very appealing to... to um, to uh, Harry. Great comment, Will. Monique, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. It's another tricky one. Hi, Reggie, chapter 20. I found it so creepy that the Dementor positioned Harry's face for the kiss. I know. We, as well, as we know, in the movies, they just sort of swoop in with, uh, with them and um, it seems less personal for a lack of better word. No, absolutely, it is, prom it is an actual kiss in the book, isn't it? I'm sure it will come up, so I want to just note that I've always wondered why Sirius' casual casual dis disregard for Snape's bumping into things has him, has, as he moves him, to be intentional, or if it was just because he was getting ready to approach Harry with the fact of his, of his godfather invites to to live with him that's actually very true as well he may not even be paying attention that he's not paying attention because he's potentially going to be saying this to harry that is actually a very interesting take as well <clears throat> Sirius was clearly so insecure in this moment i mean he was offering everything he had to harry and i felt like he was terrified of being rejected yeah i feel like that's definitely the case with the scraping i feel like the scraping is is the case which only happened after harry agreed so yeah that could have been happening the, 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 in the point before chapter 21 the intentional uh po portion of the exchange between um or the initial uh, portion of the exchange between snape and fudge snape does this thing where he will, will defend harry and then immediately give he, give it the but but he says they've been bewitched and then follows it up with the things that Harry should be suspended. Oh, that's actually very true. He did the same in Chamber of Secrets. The whole wrong place at the wrong time. But in this case, it accomplishes numerous things. It allows Snape to appear reasonable while painting the seed of Harry being, uh, being bad and needing punishment while... While he immediately discredits the truth from being believed by suggesting that the one reason they would say it uh, is because they were being bewitched. Snape makes sure that there is no chance of the trio, Sirius and, or Lupin, will be believed 
with that one conversation. Yeah, he's definitely pulling strings, isn't he? In the way that he replies to all of Fudge's um, uh, comments. Absolutely. I think the moment with Dumbledore quietly shutting, shuts uh, uh, and more and more unhinged Snape down. A very interesting and telling moment for Snape and Dumbledore's relationship. I do believe that the movie made the relationship more friendly than it may have been. I think there is respect there there but i've n never really noticed any affection between the two i think dumbledore's refusal to give snape the domestic and dark arts teacher position is a clear indication of this there is a brief exchange between snape and umbridge in um order of the phoenix that will tie into that so i'll say no more thank you so much we'll look forward to that um yeah I mean, and also the fact that snape you know referred to dumbledore as the headmaster i, I do feel like that's significant maybe i'm reading too much into it i love that harry is the one who figures out that dumbledore wants them to do with the time turner not hermione where well, it's literally the opposite in the movie isn't it it feels more in line with the fact that harry has a much more de developed relationship with dumbledore and hermione so so the idea than Hermione, so the idea that he would understand Dumbledore's motivation, then she she would just make sense. I think so. And also the fact that Harry is a lot more easier, easy with breaking rules. And also the fact that he doesn't know what the severity of it is. And so for Hermione to break the rules so willingly, it does seem a little bit off. But movie Hermione is very different. Dara deleted. I'm, I'm hoping you have another comment uh, going on, Dara. Uh, oh no, we, we've we've already read one. I think about. I think we did. Um, <clears throat> this is where Fudge really became one of the most disliked characters. I think he's up there with Umbridge, <sighs> Logan. Very interesting. Fudge only mot motivation is is maintain power. That's another way of putting it. And do what is easy instead of what is right. I completely agree with you, Logan. Don't rock the boat. That's what he's trying to do. Not, not the right, wrong right boat. If this was the Muggle world and they had just caught a serial killer, then there would be weeks worth of court cases and gathering of evidence, even though I think they would struggle to prove the innocence of Sirius. And with Peter running away, it's all right. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Sirius is like he, he has not painted himself as an innocent man, much like Dumbledore said. I love this Logan, I, I'm, I'm interested because I'm, I'm already t I, I'm already starting to really turn on Fudge, particularly in this conversation where he's just like saying, "Oh, he's just he's just not interested in any in in, in the uh, anything that's going to go against what his his current plan is." You know, very interesting, Logan. Great comment. H. When rereading these chapters, I had completely forgotten that Snape was still unconscious when Lupin turned into a wolf because the whole thing from the movie was where he arrived just after and then started to protect the trio i had all also forgotten that hermione's howling was in the film was a film thing i also and also that she was down by the lake where sirius and, and harry um i think the changes in this part of the story are fine though yeah i don't think any of them ru ruin it at all i feel like I've, i can see their motivation behind them absolutely and I think they're nice changes. I, I, I do. Um, H continues. I love what the Patronus prongs, he whispered, means to Harry. Now, when he he's heard the story about the Marauders, suddenly it's a connection to his father. And the same way that Sirius also is that, that, that for Harry. Absolutely. Yeah, it's quite amazing how much we hear about the Marauders in this, guys, compared to the movie. Um, it's really overlooked. It really is. And so I thoroughly enjoyed checking these chapters out as someone who's watched the movies before. Uh, great comment, H. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Gothic Llama. A couple of my thoughts on these chapters. I wonder if, if Snape had... A uh, mad headache after the, the scraping and the bumping of the tunnels. We were discussing that just now. <laughs> I'd imagine it probably left some marks as well. I, I love uh, Sirius timid, timidly asking. Oh no, he was already bleeding from the head, wasn't he? Blow an egg. Uh, I love Sirius um, 
timidly asking Harry to live with him. That would have been awesome. And to be honest, I prefer the film version. It's so heartwarming. It really is so heartwarming, isn't it? I personally, uh, personally, I tried to treat him like any other student. Are you sure about that, Snape? That's fair. That is fair. Why would Harry and Hermione appear in the entrance hall after their, their time turner uh, in the uh, in the hostel wing? Does it also teleport? This is what we were discussing earlier on. The only logic thing that I can see about it is that it's designed to move you near to where you were at that time. That's the only logical sense I can see from it. Which could be dangerous. But at least then you can remember where you were. And so, yeah man um now the two major things i confused i'm confused about i read s s the series countless times as a child and it never occurred to me why does why didn't sirius turn into a, a where, why didn't sirius turn into a werewolf now hear me out after he fights a uh, lupin in his dog form we are informed that he is bitten and s scratched which would normally turn a person into a were were werewolf like he like it happened to Lupin as a child maybe Sirius wasn't turning because he was an animagus form I think that could very possibly be true because it's, it must affect the blood, mustn't it? And so if a dog's blood cannot get affected by it, then it probably just wiped out the disease straight away. Uh, the curse, I should say. Um, but then we have to take Pettigrew into account. If you get injured at as a human, those injuries transfer to your animal form as is with his missing finger. We could then argue that the same happens to uh, the other way, other way. The injuries you sustain as an animal transfer for, to the human form. But then again, we didn't get that any description of the injury serious by the lake from the Dementors, nor during the rescue. So maybe it doesn't transfer animal form to human? Or is there a natural law that you can't be an, an, an amagus and a werewolf at the same time. I was thinking that could potentially be a thing. It could also be the the depth of the bite, where the bite took place. Your age could come into it, I doubt. There are other reasons that it could potentially be, but to know the reason for it would be awesome. Number two, if Lupin turned into a werewolf only, for the, only when the full moon is shining on him, does it... Does it mean you can avoid by staying in complete dark room in a cellar it can't no because uh no because he'd get chained up wouldn't he in the in the um uh shrieking shack right i think he was what about if there's a heavy storm i i mean he was fine when it was a, a it was cloudy also does that mean he turns uh turns during the day in summer when you can get the moon in broad daylight well i would imagine so yes it's just oh no it has to be moonlight doesn't it? oh no it doesn't because it because yeah i feel like the, what it said about the clouds moving and everything was actually incorrect because uh, you, you can turn to werewolf when you're indoors this is something which i've recently discovered but it's absolutely the case it just bothers me that it is now established or at least heavily hinted that werewolf turns only when the moon is visible and to me it's just a bit weird the story tries to really hard to just think some something to move the plot forward what are your thoughts Reggie? well i feel like with the moon thing is that it's just a nice symbolistic symbolistic thing like harry watching the clouds and particularly in the movie with the clouds showing them and everything but if you're indoors and you're a werewolf um then when the full moon is up you turn into a werewolf it doesn't matter where you are and so yeah i, I feel like that it's artistic license well not even to artist license it's a stylistic choice to have the clouds be the issue and like for lupin to see the moon and everything and everything that shouldn't make any difference it really shouldn't because all they'd have to do is just have him in a sealed room every night and he would be fine he wouldn't transform at all 
He, he, but he does transform. And so we do have the answer to that. I feel like it's just like a nice stylistic thing for Harry to be watching the clouds around the moon and everything. Great comments. Uh, Katie. Katie, sorry. Uh, one of the few things the movie did better was the night... The, the, the night times travel foreshadowing. Um... I'm curious on why they didn't show the Hermione was trying to help Harry fight off the Dementors. Were they afraid to show her for failing, or was it because they felt it felt unnecessary? Um, the way that Hermione is in this sequence, I think that you may be onto it to a point where they didn't want Hermione to be failing because in this sequence she is like a badass in the movie. Um. But badasses should be able to fail as well. Um, I feel like it's because they really wanted to focus on Harry in the scene. I feel like that's it. And I feel like having someone else there would kind of detract from it. They go, the fact it's Harry desperately trying to not lose a part of his 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 parents' legacy, you know. Uh, so I feel like that was the reason why. Because they wanted to focus more on Harry. Also... Is it just me, or did the Dementor attacks sound more terrifying than in the movie? Well, yeah, we had the whole descriptions and everything, didn't we? And also, it's the, the actual kiss and everything. It's definitely a lot darker. But they were pretty damn scary in the movie, though. I love their design in the movie. I thought they looked amazing. Cassie, thank you so much for your comment. Greatly appreciate Uh Gary. <laughs> I always have to double, double, double check myself. Uh, I noticed that the movie Pettigrew use, uses his his wand to turn back into a rat. What? The movie Pettigrew uses his wand to turn back into a rat. But the whole point of being an animagus is that you can turn to an animal at will without needing the wand. It played out a little differently in the book. But why do you think Pettigrew didn't turn into a rat earlier? My, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. My theory is that the spell to to force him to turn into a human has a, great, a grace period. So he can't turn his turn back for, for a few minutes. That's possible. But also, up until the moment where Lupin starts to transform, at least in the book, he is the one that is keeping an eye on, on Pettigrew. He's like saying, uh, just one move uh, out of turn, Pettigrew, or something like that, Peter. And so as soon as Lupin is distracted, that was his chance. And so his chance, he, he, got, he grabbed the wand to try to take everyone out. But when, then when that wasn't working, and the panic was with, you know, uh, Black turning into an Animagus and, and, and Lupin turning into a werewolf... He, he was less focused on and so had the few seconds he needed to get away. Whereas when Lupin was keeping an eye on him, I don't think he had a, a, a single second. That's my interpretation of it. Great comment, Gary. Digo, I just wanted to say that I kind of feel bad uh, that you apologised so profusely for to Hermione for laying Harry's words into her mouth just for her to, to call serious... Uh, inadvertently it, it called serious oh yes called serious murder murder attempt a trick in this chapter it's true she does she does i mean a, a, a joke was is worse but a tr no was it that she tricked for in on the joke no yeah harry said joke before didn't he but yeah trick is almost as bad i had completely forgotten about that myself <coughs> In her defense, I would say that she is trying to prevent the murderer, the murder of an innocent man, and therefore is in a panic. But it still is a poor choice of words. I think it is, I, and I think that she could have more focused on the fact that Snape is, he, she could have said this, I don't think she would, but she could have said to Fudge, he's just out for revenge. <laughs> but, um, I would have been brave of her. Um, but hey, Liv would be life like oh yeah sorry life would be boring if we were too perfect all the time what about me so i prefer i personally will forgive her that misjudgment yeah so will i i guess i and, and also her focus is trying to save uh black so yeah 
Gavnob, Gavnob, I've noticed that you've been commenting my videos a lot recently. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. This is your first time in the book club as well. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I can't always reply to your comments, but I have seen that, that, that you've been commenting a lot, so it's greatly appreciated. Uh, greetings, first time in the book club. Having posted uh, to several YouTube videos, there we go, I enjoyed your videos and thought first series that has prompted me to, to patronise someone. Thank you so much, Gaffnob. Uh, you've got a great day, by the way. <laughs> Chapter 19. But uh, I think it's still a merit as a actions of 20, uh, 20. That's fine. Pettigrew, it, I, I will try and read this quite fast, Gabriel, because it is quite a, a chunky comment, but I will try to interject uh, uh, my thoughts where, where, where I can. Chapter 19, but I think it still merits an, uh, actions in 20. Pettigrew is Gryffindor. Why? What traits does P Peter have that uh, put him in Gryffindor? Gryffindor are courageous... Uh, chivalry and determined. This is. This also puts the, the lie to, lie to all wizards that want went bad are in Slytherin. Well, Slytherin are ambitious, uh, um, resourceful, determined, clever. Peter sounds more like a Slytherin to me. Here's a hypothetical. Did he know Black before going to, um, to Hogwarts? Because some of these students must have known each other before going to Hogwarts. And so because of that, it could be the Harry principle. Where he simply just wanted to stay with his friend. And so, uh, would have uh, Black gone up before Pettigrew? He would have done. It's surnames, right? It's surnames. So yeah, he would have done. So maybe that's his thinking. Maybe he knew James before going to uh, Hogwarts. That's an interesting uh, idea. So maybe he, he 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 chose, much like Harry did, to to not go to Slytherin. Uh, chapter twenty. Harry went f from from you to you are a murderer, and I want to kill you. To I will go live with you in a short time, short orders, kids. I know, but is that is that Dursley effect though? Is that Dursley effect? Uh, chapter twenty one. Snape ha has a point about the three options for of themselves opinions on themselves and they the lenience the, the lenience that they get absolutely so snape where were they consorting with and tried to catch black you cannot have it both ways that's actually true as well uh that is a common problem that problem with people trying to have things both ways but th how much attention to detail you need to be in good positions. I would have expected better from Snape. Well, there you go. Dumbledore, I do not have the power to make uh, other men see truth. Too bad truth potions ha has not been invented yet by the author. <laughs> but would have cleared everything up. And as wizards do not seem to care uh, about protecting the innocent on trial... I doubt there is the right to in, to not incriminate you, and the innocent <coughs> could volunteer. <coughs> the innocent could volunteer to take your potion. That's actually a, a fair point that the innocent could too. Uh, if it's a voluntary thing, that's a lot more you know okayish, isn't it? All you would need for the trial is some truth potion and someone who is willing. Who knows the right questions to ask? Wording the questions would be, uh, uh, be of the wording of the question would be great importance. Oh, absolutely! How does the time to decide where, where to drop you off? It's not that at the place you left from in a, a different time, or a place where were at the first time in the destination time. I, I feel like it, again. I, I feel like it is reverting you back to where nearby where you are because it's quite a coincidence that 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 they, they, they get plonked right next to where the three of them are underneath the invisibility cloak you know so that that's my interpretation of it although that is a stretch i admit why must you not be seen in this case you are doing you're doing a crime so should not be seen in any case time travel or not hermione has 
being seen by others when time traveling all year at least two whole classes at, at a time. The only problem is the same pe person seeing the two at the same time. One example, Hagrid seeing them get the cloak and the, uh, from the tree. Um, I'm sorry guys, this is, this is um, Hagrid seeing them get the cloak from the tree would not be no problem. He would just think they did not go directly back to the castle, which they didn't e either time. Yeah, but it could have meant that Hagrid could have come a lot, come a lot, come over to them saying, "Hey, what are you doing over there?" And that could have changed to timelines for all the worst. They could have got Hagrid killed potentially, and so they, they didn't want to. They if they're going to make a change, they got to make it very, very minor. You know what I mean? Um. Very selective, I should say. The part about not seeing yourself is only a problem if you go back to the point before you know knew you could tr you could time travel. So in this case, Harry should not have seen Harry, but the only person with Hermione seeing Hermione in the past may wonder why she went back in time in that case. As the class test over and over again, um, I feel like with Hermione, it, it could have changed what the past Hermione decided to do, uh, uh, which could have caused a lot more problems. That they wanted to keep the narrative the same, apart from making two differences: save Buckbeak and save Black. Uh, and obviously, uh, part Harry doing the Patronus was was in there as well. How does Buckbeak hover? The humid, the, the the hummingbird is the only bird that can hover. Raptor wings attached to a horse definitely could not. At least it's in the movie. Buttbeak lands on the tower. It's a magical creature, so it could be using some sort of magic to do it. So that that that's my answer to that. I'm sorry that I'm giving you so such short questions because I really appreciate you, you making this comment, but it is long, so I need to get through it. So that's my, why my replies are so short. Uh, P.S. You will have to live with my bad spelling. I do dyslexia and other problems with English work. How English works? Oh, I think your English has been great, Gabdob. My my dyslexia is is uh, is gonna be an issue with perfectly written comments. So don't worry about that. Also, we've got a second comment. If you could, in future, try and keep it to just one comment. That is one of the rules at the top of the blurb. That uh, if you edit the comment rather than make a second one, just so then I know that everyone's had a chance to have a comment. Uh, but but I will read this as it's your first time. So for the second post, but I feel like it's very important. I wanted the message to get to everyone. It can, and I know that many. Uh, da, 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 da. Short version, long version. Da, da, da. Uh, a sufferer of PTSD has no control of what uh, uh, what will trigger an episode, and when not letting it affect them, because X is not an option. Sorry if this comes across as wrong way but PTSD is not something to downplay even employ the sufferer of it I don't know what this is re this is regarding Gabnov um yeah I'm afraid I don't understand what what this is regarding because I, I don't think you've given the context to it so I'm going to move on if that's okay Thank you so much for the comment. I, 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 do, I really don't want to skip over it, but it sounds like this is, this, you may, you're making an important point, but I don't know what to say regarding Harry Potter, though. And so thank you so much for your comment. It's greatly appreciated. If you could keep it to one comment in the future, um, but uh, but as it's your first time, and I, and I see that you've been commenting a lot on the channel, so that is greatly appreciated. Appreciate so thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move on now, if that's okay. If you did explain it later on in the comments, I, I apologize, but I have just read through uh, a large comment of yours already, so I'm going to move on if that's okay. Grace. Hi, Veggie. First time on Patreon. Oh, thank you so much, Grace. Here, and it feels good to to break out the old, the old books. First of all, one of my favorite moments in Chapter 20 that got cut off uh, in the movie, Sirius asks Harry to live uh, with him, and they get to finish their conversation. It's true they get blooming interrupted by Lupin going... Wolfie. It always made me happy that Sirius got to smile at least once in the book. And it, and it means a lot to Harry as well. 
I find it interesting that in the movie they gave the protector role to Snape. It was really Sirius who stood in front of the kids and Sirius who shoved <coughs> them out of danger, danger's way. As for the second chapter, I've never really liked Snape, but in uh, in the chapter he is downright nasty. He knows that Sirius is doomed and he is trying to get all he ca can out of it. Sirius <coughs> is my favourite character so I might be biased but I really think Snape steps out of line here especially when yelling at Hermione speaking of sp sp uh, yelling at Hermione it's, it's what he's done all book long isn't it but it is particularly here as well speaking of now you can yell at her properly since she called the prank <laughs> a stupid trick exactly it's true um Oh yeah, that prank was the word which, I, which, I, which it was, wasn't it? Um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. It's been blooming warm here, actually. I can, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on my uber long comments. This, this is okay, Grace. I, I'm sorry that I am saying it a lot, guys, but this time I feel like there's a lot of first-time commenters here, and I appreciate that you want to get all your thoughts in, and so I will read through your your initial comment, but. It just means that my, sometimes my my replies have to be shorter just so I can get through the comments. So if you leave if your comments shorter, I'm more likely to be able to have a longer reply. But if you want to get your, if you want to get your thoughts down, please do. And this is not this is an average comment, I'd say. Um, do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -do. Also, I've noticed that you would like a, sh a show about the Marauders from the perspective of Lupin. Absolutely, I personally recommend reading all the young. Uh, all the young, all young dudes. It's a famous fan fiction for all young dudes that a lot of Harry Potter fans know. It includes all the Marauders years at Hogwarts up until the Battle of Hogwarts. Um, I was surprised to find how well written it was. I'm sure you can find the audio version on YouTube. That's useful. Thank you very much. After you finish the books, of course, I was just about to say that, since it's not ca not canon, just something you might enjoy, like the very Potter musical. Grace, that is a great recommendation. I, I don't think anyone's recommended that to me before. Pardon me. But I'll endeavour to check that out in the future. Thank you so much for your comment. And, and again, hope to see commenting uh, commenting again. Pumpkin Sparks. Hi, Veggie. I've been a long-time watcher and short-time patron, but I wanted to catch up on my reading before commenting. Thank you so much, Pumpkin Sparks. <coughs> I have a lot of opinions on several topics that were brought up in the last few months. Hermione, the whole Quidditch br broomstick tobacco. Yes, I'm sorry about that. And the very flawed school system. The ramifications of uh, Muggle-born uh, status of uh, secrecy. So, so, so many illogicalities. I feel like there's always going to be stuff like that. W when it's a book with so much earth building. But, you know, I feel like a lot of it could be written off as just being magic, though. <laughs> so, that's... Is that a word? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that is a word. With the Wizarding World. But I don't want to take over take over the comment section. So, I will limit myself to mentioning mention of them for now. The one thing... That, about these chapters that really stuck, struck me since I was a child and might discuss others by and by the next chapter books, if that's okay. I totally understand if you want to keep the comments focused on the chapters and will limit myself accordingly, but my autistic ADHD brain gets excited easily and want to share my thoughts. I, I, pumpkin sparks. I was, I was diagnosed as autistic myself like a couple of years ago. And for the longest time I would get, uh, I'd make a comment on a YouTube video. And like, if the person read the, the, the comment out in a video, they'd say, wow, that's long. <laughs> so I, I, I fully understand. I, I know you're paid absolutely with that. And so I, I appreciate this. It is a long one, but like I say, it is your first comment, so that's absolutely fine. But in future, if you keep it a little bit shorter, then then it helps the flow of the video. But I know what it's like. I know what it's like when you're passionate about something, and that goes for you as well, uh, Gaffnob. I'm I'm sorry if I, I if I was a bit harsh not reading the rest of that second comment, but um, I completely understand where you're coming from. That it's it's exciting to talk about. That's why that's why I've enjoyed making this series so much, and that's why I really appreciate your support with it as well. Uh. Speaking of which, that brings me to Hermione, the whole, um... I did it. 
I haven't skipped a bit, have I? Oh, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Um, by the way, I think I've understood what uh, Garth Nob was talking about with PTSD. I think it was regarding Snape and everything, and so thank you so much for your, for your thoughts on that. Um, speaking of which, that brings me to Hermione, the whole emotions versus logic thing uh, with her. I have always read her as being on the spectrum. Oh, that's very interesting, Hermione. Uh, she ta tackles emotion situations with pure logic. She blooming does. Which is something I can totally relate to. In school, I often called... Uh, was often called cold, Stone Cold. Not Steve Austin, surely. Um, because I wouldn't really get emotional. Upset, but not like emotions, uh, emotional about things. My idea of soothing someone who is upset is breaking the situation down into logical parts and, and looking at them f from all sides. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely, isn't it, a, 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 a spectrum trait. Um, and intentionally, I understand how that might not help uh, a neuro neurotypical person, but that is my first instinct when I am upset. I also tend to uh, take too many classes and have an interest in pretty much everything uh, there is to learn. Well, that's, that, that is not a bad thing to have, much like Hermione. Lucky you don't have a time turn, though. Uh, or unlucky, I should say. Um, Hermione tends to do the same. She is inc inc incredibly book smart, log logics her way out of situations. Sometimes as troubles with, has tro troubles with emotional intelligence. And no spoilers, in the next book she gets consumed with some special interest. Very interesting. That's not the one where that guy fancies her, is it? Oh, no, it's the one with the, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to speculate. That's very interesting what you just said there. Um, all, all of that reads near, no, near, Neurodivergent, you know that word, Reggie. To me. A situation with Lavender's rabbit is the perfect example. That is exactly what I was going to bring up just now. First, when she was only upset about the rabbit, Hermione said what she, what we learned were, we're supposed to say, I'm really sorry. Then, when Pravati pointed out that Rawley uh, thing and Lavender got even more upset, that is something we can address. We can tackle a problem with logic, realizing that Toronto is full of S. <laughs> Could agree more. Well, I don't know, Jeff. Yeah, no, she kind of is. It's difficult. Toronto is a fascinating character, guys. I don't know if she knows she's full of S. Uh, she's Schrodinger's as S. <laughs> didn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe some off. And I find that we don't have to be upset about. Um, I don't believe I just said Schrodinger's S. Upset about, uh, about that part. Surely makes us feel feel better. Very interesting. I mean, that I we covered that chapter, and I didn't think for, for a second that that is actually a way that a lot of people with autism would approach a situation. It really is. I don't think I would, but that's why it's called a spectrum, though, guys. We're all different on it. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's is not the only way to read Hermione and I am I am 99.5 sure that the author didn't intend to write her as being on the spectrum but that is how I always interpreted her and I feel that she presents a lot of autistic traits that is very interesting I once we get to it I I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts your thoughts on Luna because that is the character which actually a lot of people said that they uh, they see a lot of uh, autistic traits in. Quick drink. As for the chapters, actually, it's a bit more of chapter 19, but still relevant here. I never understood why Peter was part of the friend group. I understand why, uh, why he wanted to be. He ob ob absolutely idolised James and, and Sirius, even to the point that McGonagall was like saying he was always... Uh, uh, hanging out, uh, hanging out around them, which still lets me down a little bit. I feel I don't like the fact that McGonagall said that, but anyway. Um, as we're being told by several different people, but why would 
they include him in in their clique. Good use of the word. Um, the way he was described, he was a fanboy following his idols like a puppy. The equivalent would be if the trio were to decide to include Colin Creevy. It just doesn't make sense. Ooh. I don't know how to word this, guys. Are we definitely sure that the only people, the only person that the Marauders were cruel to, I, I'm bordering on saying the line burly, but going on the books so so far, it's only really been uh, Black that's bullied them. And, and in a much worse way than bully. If the Marauders used to bully a lot of people, then there is that whole thing of the kid who doesn't want to be a bully becoming one of them. Now that is a massive assumption of the Marauders and I'm not really basing that on anything. I'm just putting it out there. Lupin would have, would have, I feel like Lupin would have t taken pity on, on Pettigrew. James, I don't know uh, enough about. Maybe Pettigrew was like a, a big victim of bullying and so that's why James brought him in. I don't know if Sirius and Pettigrew ever really got on. Uh, quite frankly, I can't imagine. I can't imagine Black and Pettigrew getting on. Again, we need that TV series focused on Lupin. Great point. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Also, the whole Animagus thing. I might not understand it correctly, but the way I read it, uh, the wizard chooses the form they will take and become an Animagus. I don't think that's the case. Or maybe it is. And once it's set, it's set. They certainly imply that James and Sirius decided that a big animal will be most useful uh, with keeping the werewolf in check. That's... Okay, so, so they did say that because they're big animals, they could. Did it say that that was the reason, though? That they chose them? I don't know. I, I'm i of the mindset that it's something that's given to you much like what your Patronus is. Although, quite frankly, I want to change my Patronus, guys. I want it to be a Labrador Collie. Specifically called Penny. Because that was my previous dog. Now I've got Woozle, Woozle the Brindle Lurcher. Um... Do, 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 do. Uh, if it was the case that you have a choice, they truly gambled with a huge uh, disadvantage on their chances. The probability of becoming a small animal is way higher than, uh, than a, a big one. Uh, that is incredibly true. That's... Uh, they, they could have been an ant. <laughs> For three ants running amok. Um... But but then what? But but it's representative of it, it's not a gamble so much as it's representative of who they are as a person. That's what I see it as, you know, the loyal dog, the sniveling rat, and the majestic, I guess, stag, prideful stag. I'm not sure, but they 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 did get very lucky though. Um. But then why did Peter become a rat? They say it's. It was so he could pass the willow button, but they could use have used a stick um, like everyone else. And also in the movie, Lupin does a spell on it. Um, I don't know if it, it, I don't know if they did choose. And also, they they just Harry's description in the text is that that Pettigrew does look rat like. As a human. Which was presumably the case before he became an Animagus. Um, I think it's one of many instances that the author not thinking further than one, one or well, then two sentences on the page. And not planning for imp implication that has the story and the world she, she built. But it just bothers me. I feel like 
the author has done a good job with a lot of it, but there is definitely some things which are questionable, which is great. Why, which is why it's great to discuss them here. I'm really sorry this got so long and rambly. I tried editing down to slightly more concise. I I did not achieve it. It's all right. It's it's your first comment. I appreciate, it. and also. I, I I understand you where you're coming from with at least with your autism. I know what it, it can be like, so it's okay. Lastly, I achieved my goal of giving love to all the the puppers. Please give Woozle a scratchy scratch scratch a scratchy scratchies uh, from from Germany. Have a, uh, from a German have puff. Thank you so much. I I will do. Um, uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Pumpkin Sparks. Thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate it. It was a chunky one, and I appreciate that, that you did try to, to shorten it down. But I know your struggles. I know your struggles when you try when uh, at least from an autistic standpoint, be so engaging on it. So hope to see you next time. And um, and yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Gaffnob has another comment here, but it's been deleted for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I will not be reading these replies because I imagine it may have something which I shouldn't see in it. But thank you so much for uh, Gaffnob for, for your comment again. And again, sorry for, for jumping o over the, the PTSD comment, but it, uh, because I've just done your other comment, I did want to move on. But I, I think it's regarding uh, Snape's um, experience with, with Black. I presume that's what it's regarding. It's only just dawned on me that the first two movies books sorry have proper final dungeons like proper final dungeons whereas this the final dungeon is the time travel stuff isn't it it's so fascinating because the next one will have a final dungeon i presume in the mains and the next one if they're similar to the movies this is different half blood prince doesn't really have a final dungeon does it Oh yes, it does. Yes, mm, kind of does. Uh, it has a it has a um, a penultimate dungeon. <laughs> anyway, go on. Let's get over this. Uh, Kate, hi, Veggie. I as I missed the last book. Um, I I need to add some fuel to the fire. Oh, missed the last book up. Oh, what's this going to be regarding? I think saying Snape's Snape has PTSD is a major stretch. People read too deep into each chapter. To find excuses for him. Or it could be just be on interpretation. But Peter's date is not something to plop on any character on a whim. There's a lot. There's not enough evidence to sh to struggle. Suggest Peter's day. At least not in how JKR wrote it. She wrote him as a prideful and selfish character. Selfish. Prideful, I see. Selfish, I... Honestly. I'd like to know what you mean by selfish. Unless he means four sliverins. Let's move on, sorry. Selfish character. who Whose pride was deeply hurt and who now seeks revenge. He is somewhat justified in his actions, but let's not pretend he's in, he is innocent and perfectly righteous. Oh, he's absolutely not. I would suggest that the way that you've worded it, saying that, um, that, um, his pride was deeply hurt. We are talking about a situation where he could have been killed. <laughs> that's, that's, but I, I, do, I do understand your point, but, uh, yeah. I, that's the great thing that we all interpret this stuff and we're all we all have our bias and we all twist it just to fit exactly how we fit you know i mean this will be hard for you to believe guys but i think the hufflepuff um were hard done by in the quidditch cup this 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 book i didn't want to mention it so i, I didn't i didn't bring it up at all i didn't bring up any bias with quidditch at all um i called it like it was on the page but you know Lesser people than me would have bias, like suggesting that their team was hard done by and that the winning team basically cheated all the way through it. But luckily, that's not the sort of content that you have here. I will move on. What the heck was that? Oh, sorry. I thought I saw something over, over here. Right. It's okay. Right. Uh, that was a joke that I was just saying there, by the way. Um, so, by the way, I'm being sarcastic. Sorry, that's another quote from The Simpsons. Um, and I also want to give a praise to... to to the movie. I really love how they did the time trapping sequence. The stone throwing and Hermione's howling tied into the time loop into 
uh, into a bow so per so beautifully. It is more satisfying than in the book. I also like the the Dementors part in the movie. It it is very. S I'm sorry. It is very scary as it should be. But in the movie, it's scary. if only they took time ahead of it to explain the full fledged Patronus takes shape of an animal. It it would be perfect. Yeah, it so threw me off. I when it appeared, I thought, oh, that's cool. Is, is that like some sort of spell? Is it? I didn't think for a second it was a Patronus. I really didn't. So yeah, that that is a that is a cracking point. I completely agree. Um, and yeah, the, the, those Dementors they were certainly creepy in, the, in 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 the movie. Even though the description of them in the book is is even more. Um, when it comes to the howling and the stone throwing, I guess what you could say is that that. No, I like it. I was going to say it kind of undermines what Harry does, but I don't think it does. No, I, I think it's fine. I, it, it, you know what it does? It shows Hermione to be a lot more of a rule breaker, which she really isn't. Throughout this entire sequence in the book, she is saying to Harry, do not change time over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very different Hermione book Hermione and movie Hermione. That is my biggest takeaway from these books so far, guys. I'm sure Ron's different, but it's more that things happen to run around him whereas Hermione's character so different and uh, from what I gather the people who make the movies did it because they loved Hermione I think that you're detracting from the character in my opinion but I've made that point countless times let's move on Kate thank you so much for your comment greatly appreciated and, and great uh, discussion about PTSD uh, and 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 the interpretations of these characters I think that was very interesting Jonas, famous of the cyborgs. Hey Reggie, right now I have many things to do in real life. So I just wanted to leave a comment here saying thanks for taking so much time, so much of your time to talk about these books. Can't wait to hear your thoughts uh, and the different opinions from the comment of the comments. Jonas, thank you so much. It, and and the, uh, thank you so much for your comments every single time. They're always appreciated and also your, your work on the side panels. Obviously, we're looking into the Goblet of Fire ones now, guys. Very ex ex interesting to see uh, see those. Um, the hours I can hear you talk about this stuff always means relaxing from a stress stressful life for me right now. Oh, Jonas, well, I hope everything I hope everything improves. I hope things get back better for you. But again, your your input is always greatly appreciated, and so thank you so much for your kind comment, Max of the summaries uh, fame. I just want to take this time to give you some much deserved and well earned praise. Thank you, Max, so kind of you. The work you put into do this kind of review, as well as your other stuff, does not go unrecognized. That's very kind. I may call uh, you may call us Veginites, but we are indeed fans of yours. I I I I don't like using the word fans. I really don't, guys. I've always struggled with that. It seems so... It, it, I don't see you as fans. You know, I, I see you as people that were able to have this great conversation with, you know. Um, and it, it is an honour and a privilege to help you with these summaries. Uh, they always... They save me so much time, Max. Thank you so much for them. Us Potterheads love talking about Harry Potter. And I'm grateful to see this community come together and share their thoughts with you and your experience in them for the first time. And as we regain, we sorry, we again relive the books. Thank you, Veggie. Max, thank you so much. That was very, very kind of you. I, it's greatly appreciated. And like I say, I, I, I really, yeah. I'm not going to make a big thing of it, guys, but that, I don't see you as fans. I really don't. I, I love seeing what your thoughts of these things are. It's like, often when something will happen in the audiobook, I think, okay, I can't wait to hear people's thoughts on this. And that's why I love doing this. And so thank you, everyone, for, for commenting. And Max, thank you so much for your lovely comments. Uh, Harry Pothead. Um, watching the movie and noticing that Snape is basically the hero who's trying to catch Black and then randomly gets attacked by Harry without the trio even saying a word then knocking out then knocked out by the the werewolf then disappears for the rest of the movie good guy 
<laughs> okay, I feel like I read that a bit fast. Okay, rewatching the movie and noticed that Snape is basically the hero who tries to catch Black and then randomly gets attacked by Harry without the trio even saying a word, and uh, and then knocked out by the were by a werewolf, then disappears for the rest of the movie. Snape does that. Snape disappears a lot. I don't think he did get knocked out by the werewolf. Only, I'm only saying that because I rewatched the scenes today. Hermione does a very poor job in catching up to uh, catching up to Harry. <laughs> okay, maybe he does. I don't think he does get knocked up by by the werewolf. We're talking about the movie, right? We are. I think that it's basically like uh, when the werewolf's coming at Snape, he's like and getting getting the free behind him. It's a great shot. It's a great shot. Uh, and then when when Harry goes to give chase to to the werewolf and the dog. Her mind like goes, Harry, like that. And Snape like goes, no, like that. And she just doesn't walk around him. <laughs> she could have done, but you know, maybe she just wasn't that bothered. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't think Snape gets knocked out by the werewolf. I need to rewatch it again now, don't I? Um, it's interesting how book Snape seem, still seems to be focused on revenge over truth, even hours after the events of the Shrieking Shack two at the most two hours so probably an hour uh anyway sorry i'm going on the the free spins he tries to discredit the trio instead of telling fudge and dumbledore about the things he had heard f heard lupin explain that is a that is true he's not letting any of that information cloud the fact that he wants black to be punished uh yeah uh, that, that's how i see it uh, da, 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 da. Or that he saw the rat when the book makes the rat a centerpiece of the scene with, with how Black is staring it down and how the only sound apart from Lupin's voice is Scabbard's frightening squeak, squeaking. That's interesting. He do, just has the thing. Harry and Hermione do say Pettigrew is the rat to Fudge and Snape. But then when we get to, when we get to, when Dumbledore comes in, Snape says Pettigrew was not in the room. It's important, it's important to acknowledge the fact that Snape is, is, even if he thinks that, that they are under Black's spell, there's no benefit of completely ignoring that at this point. Because they have Black upstairs in a, in a room with a window. I'm sorry. <laughs> the fact it's Flitwick's office is just funny to me. Anyway. Um, maybe Flitwick was in there. Like, why, would he, why wouldn't he say anything when he's climbing out the window then, Veggie? Anyway, sorry. Um, it seems unlikely that Snape would actually think that Black could fool Dumbledore with a, a complete lie. So it seems to me like his conversation with Dumbledore is based on... On feelings rather than rational thinking. I think that's definitely it. That is absolutely my interpretation of that as well. It is feelings rather than rational thinking. Um, and, and you know, he has reasons to be fe feeling those feelings. He does. He absolutely has reasons to fe feel those feelings. Snape would actually think Black could fool Dumbledore. And that is a good point. That is a good point, Harry. <laughs> Feel bad, Cordy Gary. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pothead. A great comment. Emma. Hi, Veggie. I made it in time for you. Yes, I, I did see your comment saying that, that you're uh, hoping to get in time. Uh, Sirius being happy about the possibility of Harry move, moving in. Do you think it's because he wanted... He, he, because of w wanting to provide Harry a genuinely... Uh, sorry. wanted Wanting to provide for Harry and genuinely stepping in as Godfather, or is he excited about getting a piece of James back? I think the latter. I think the latter. Sadly, it's very sad. But let's continue with the comment. I think it might be a bit of both. I think you're probably right. I think, but I truly believe he cares about Harry just for Harry. It's not always about James. Sirius had or already been in Harry's life actively for a full year before Lily and James died. And also the fact that Pettigrew is after Harry 
I'd imagine Black must have had a lot of sleepless nights worrying about if Harry is, is going to survive the next day and so on. So, yeah, I, I, I think he definitely would care about it. The thing is that we've only had one scene with him interact, which is the most painful part of it, you know? Uh, presumably the fire thing happens in the next movie. Is it the next movie? When uh, Sirius's face comes out of the fire. I don't think it was. I think, I think that was Order of the Phoenix. Either way. I'd like to know what you... Did I miss a point there? Oh, I did. Um, Sirius has already been in Harry's life actively for a full year before Lily and James died. That's a very good point as well. Okay, Emma, that, I've completely forgotten about that. I also love the description of Sirius's first real, re real smile. The difference it made was startling. As though a person 10 years younger shining through this, this starving mask. It was starving. I'm sorry. I said scarred. For a moment, he was recognisable as the man who was laughing at, Harry, at Harry's parents' wedding. Last time Harry looked at the photograph, he still believed Sirius was a murderer and almost didn't recognise him as the man he, he was in the pose that Absolutely. I'd like to know what you, you think of werewolf design in the movie versus the book. I'd have to see a picture of the book version, to be honest. In the book, they look a lot like regular wolves. This is rare com coming from me, but I actually love the design they ended up with. Though, even though it it's not an accurate portrayal, I know a lot of book fans hate it. He's very smooth, isn't he? He hasn't got that much fur. I like it. Uh, you know what I like about it? It doesn't look... It's not like um, Sabretooth. Sabre, no, Sabre Wolf from Killer Instinct. <laughs> That's my go-to werewolf reference there. It's not like this rah, sort of like monster, like ultimate final boss sort of thing. It looks disheveled and and almost frightened and almost weak, but is incredibly dangerous. I I liked it. I never had a problem with it, with his design. I bet book readers. I bet I'm gonna have to re re reread the description of it. But as a movie watcher, I didn't mind it. I think the scene when the Dementors attack attack feels much worse than the book much more emotional emotional and desperate <coughs> there's a dementor that is actually about to kiss harry and the way the book describes the moment the dementor lowering his hood is chilling in the movie harry just keeps sitting there lol you know what emma i thought the scene was great until going back today and watching it after listening to the book a couple of times because it does seem a little watered down doesn't it now in its defense you don't have the wonderful internal dialogue of harry saying he's innocent he's innocent i'm going to go live with him he's uh, no doubt he is thinking that throughout that scene but we don't have that dialogue and you know hermione's not there as well i don't i don't mind the scene but the book i, I do feel like the book is probably better no, it, it, yeah, I, I, in my opinion, yeah. Um, chapter chapter 13, Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw. Harry casts the Patronus at Malfoy. Something silver white, something e enormous erupted from the end of his wand. He knew it was short, shot directly at the Dementors, but didn't pause to watch. At, and, and after Harry catches the snitch, that was quite some, some Patronus said a voice in his ear i think lupin realized there that harry's patronus was a stag imagine how he must have felt that's a good point because harry didn't look back so he did he i assumed that he just did a big um big spark of patroni rather than actually form because it because because it turns into steam doesn't it which can hold the the, the uh dementors back but if he actually did actually successfully cast it then lupin must have been he must have had to wipe a tear away, man. That's a great point. I can't wait to hear what your reaction to Snape yelling in chapter 20 to 21 is. Uh, is that one of the ones which covered today? All I'm going to say about it is it's way out of light. Oh, well, I, I, I don't think I don't think we got there, have we? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it when we get there. 
I'm sorry my comment is getting really long, really long but I did, don't think it was an odd choice to have Ron have a cast on his leg. Oh, <coughs> sorry, but don't don't you think it's odd that Ron ha had a cast on his leg in the movie? Odd choice to have a cast me. According to him herself, Madame Pomfrey can fix broken bones in a heartbeat. She literally regrew Harry's over overnight. Overnight. In the book, Pettigrew's spell was a bigger concern to Harry and Hermione than the broken leg. That's true. And I and I think it's also why Ron was unconscious. I guess maybe <coughs> I can't remember if Harry's arm was in some sort of splint or something. So, so the arm is still as it re 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 regrows or re refixes the bone. The bone grows, but maybe because it's a snap, the leg still had to be kept straight. To I'm giving it a lot of leeway here, am I? I really am. But maybe the leg still had to be kept straight. But it's a funny visual, which is clearly what they were going for with Ron in this movie. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I love how the first thing Sirius did while he was getting rescued was ask about Ron. Boom. I'm glad someone else picked up on that. I like that as well. I'm sure that he did the same as well when he when he uh, first appeared in front of Harry. Uh, thank you. Oh, no. I think that Ron went to get him and, he, and, and like, like... Black was like, hey, don't, don't you'll, you'll injure yourself more, worse or something, something like that. He definitely cared about Ron in that instance as well. Uh, also, I love how the first thing, oh, I just said that bit. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you again for what I'm going to assume is, is another excellent five hour video. Thank you. P.S. That changed my mind to me is effing amazing, perfect editing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I think we are roughly at four hours 40. At this, I think, because I obviously my, my time keeps restarting, but I feel like that's where we are. So, and w I feel I think I think it's gonna be another five hour one. I I think I mean we are getting there. If I just grab that and then go like this, it's like another six comments or something. So I think it's probably gonna be another five hours. It always was gonna be, wasn't it? Even though that one of the chapters was twelve minutes longer than the audiobook, we had a lot to discuss today. Simon writes. Um, anything can happen in the next uh, five hours. I'm guessing that is a um, Thunderbirds reference, isn't it? Right? Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet? Thunderbirds, yes. I think so. Hello. Uh, sorry to see you didn't get my Officer Crabtree greeting in the last last time. 80 sitcoms not your thing. Oh, Simon, I, I must have missed that. You didn't say you were, you were pissing by the window when you heard two shots, I'm guessing. I'm not even sure if I want to give context to that. No, I should. No, okay. No, okay, I should. <laughs> because that, sound, that, that may have sounded very rude, what I just said. Um, there is a... There is 80s or 90s? I guess it did start during the 80s, didn't it? Yeah. 80s sitcom called Alo Alo, and clearly Simon referenced it last time, and I bloomin' missed it. It's a shame. Obviously, Crabtree is probably the best thing on it. Uh, this is so hard to describe. Okay. It's a British sitcom set in France during the Second World War. Everyone talks with a French accent, but there is a there's, there, there is an English character who is undercover as a, a police officer called uh, Officer Crabtree, who's very bad at speaking French, and so when and it's all in English, it's all in English. But when he speaks, he says things like like, like I just said. He meant to say, "I was passing by the window when I heard two shots." But it, because his French is so bad, it comes off as I was pissing by the window when I heard two shots. Which I think is one of the funniest lines he ever said. I can't, I, and he also is good morning as, as well, so good, good morning. It's a very clever concept. <laughs> the fact that he's, his French is bad and so his English is bad on the show. It's very confusing. I bloomin' missed it. I'm sorry, Simon. I feel bad. I'll say this. I am up on my sitcoms. My brother is a bigger Alo Alo fan. Um, although I did watch it as uh, uh, when I, when I was young, I, I absolutely did. But um, uh, yes, he, he he I think he's gone through the entire thing. And my God, that thing ran for a long time. <laughs> anyway, um, had to say that the dement that the Dementors kiss chapter is far superior in to the film, much more chaotic 
and have Ron chained to Lupin uh, really ups the stakes, absolutely. And I feel the Dementors are better here than in the movie, having the more human makes them a lot more unnerving and creepy than than the uh, than the spectres in the film, and the fact they can clear clearly reason is oh, I'm sorry, the fact they can clearly reason is also an added bonus. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, I'm still kind of seeing them like they are in the movies. But these things, th th these Dementors do walk on the ground, don't they? I think they can fly as well, but they do walk around, right? They are on the they're they're, they're on the floor, whereas the the wraiths, as I like to describe them, are uh, are always off the ground, aren't they? I don't think they even have legs, do they? We haven't heard anything more about Ron's massive fate yet. Uh, I think it's time, guys. I think it's time to um, to put in into the video something that I want you to start your comments with. Uh, so please start your comments with this sentence, Ron's massive feet. Don't give any context, but then the rest of your comments on this video, say whatever you want. But the comments, please start the comments with Ron's massive feet. It will just show that you got this far in the video. <laughs> Which I don't imagine most of you do, but yes, uh, Ron's massive feet is this one's, this week's one. Uh, right, where the heck was I before talking about Ron's massive feet? A mighty secret is also a lot more re reflective in the tone than in the film. I think I prefer it that there always seems to be a t tendency in the film to add action for the s for s action's sake rather than give us all a breather. You know what, um, Simon? You're right. You're absolutely right. I can see why they did it, though. I, I really can. Um, I, I, I can see it because, yeah, you gotta you got to think about... Uh, I, I understand the changes they made, but you're right. It, it, having having a breather does help a lot. Um, but at this stage in the movie, you know, it's really ramping up to the big finale, isn't it? Well, not long now until you get to the book I, I've been waiting for. Also, a muggle-born squib would be a muggle. Ta-da for now. Wow! There was no discussion there. What's that? I disagree. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Thank you so much for your, for your great comment. Chorefini. A uh, Louise. I, I, I'm sorry I'm saying both of those. No, I think I am saying the right... I'm sorry. Anyway, hello. Thank you so much for, for your comment. I always worry that I say that, that I say your name wrong. Um, Hi, Veggie. I hope you're doing well. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on these chapters. I always like the fact that Sirius's dog version is very big in the books. We discussed that. Er we discussed that earlier on. It's com it compares him to Small Bear. Makes more sense that he would help James holding Lupin back when he was a werewolf. You know what? When that line came up, I was so confused. But yeah, that 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 then explained it. The fact it is actually that huge. Um, not gonna lie, I got a little emotional when Harry realised that, that why James was was called Prongs. The movie never mentioned any of it. I know, it blows my mind that that stuff wasn't mentioned at any point. It's so, so crazy. Um, it is. I thought that Harry's Patronus became a stag after learning that his dad was an Animagus. But like Emma mentioned in, in, in the replies, his Patronus was already described as something big and shiny white coming coming from the end of his wand during the Quidditch match uh, against Draco. So I was probably wrong. Now back to the original comment. Since, thank you so much for the introduction. Since we're nearly finished book three, do you have a top three favorite characters from this book? I always struggle with this type of list, but mine would probably be Dumbledore, Lupin, and Harry. Just one more chapter, and we'll be heading into the Did You Put Your Name in the Goblet of Fire? Yes! So Dumbledore with, uh, with both his hands, both his hands on Harry's neck, like a Dementor. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, favorite character, I, 
since we're nearly finishing book three, do you have the top three characters? I don't know if you mean from the book. You know what, uh, Trofini? And again, I, 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 I Trofini. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know how to pronounce L-U-I-S. I actually don't. I'm, te I'm terrible at pronouncing, pronouncing things. I really am. So, in, 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 incredibly, I feel like I'm pronouncing Trofini more accurate than I would do the F1. Um, we'll save it till next time. Because I always do my, my favourite character of the book, and I can easily add a couple to that. I think I know who my three are going to be. I think I know. But I'll get back to you next time if that is okay. Uh, just one more chapter and we'll be heading... Oh, no, I just read that bit. Thank you so much, Trifini. Great comment. And also we need to do the bits from the book that should have been added into the movie. I think I know which one's going to win that. I don't want to I don't want to skew the, the poll, though, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave my thoughts to, to myself. But I'll, I'll, I'll put that poll up on the Patreon before we get to the next uh, book review. Remember to do that, Veggie. Make a note for yourself. Uh, Azkaban poll. Okay. <clears throat> Annette. The big problem I have with the move, this movie is the way they butcher some of the these last few chapters. I or already touched on the whole Marauder's backstory they left out. Absolutely. A lot of people who've only seen the movies don't understand why missed um, books... Why missed... Oh, most book readers detest Snape because they did stuff like change Snape, st changing Snape still being unconscious to him um, putting himself between the kids and the werewolf, him seeing pr protect, protect him and heroic. I do still think that book Snape would have done that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we need to do a poll on that. Yes, what we discover later makes him a hero, but he is... In no way likable or a good person. Meanwhile, they rob S Sirius of being the protective one. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. They also kept... Well, he does go out looping, though. Hmm. They also kept lines that make no sense without the book context. Like Sirius asking Lupin if he'd taken his potion that, that day... With no past reference to the potion anywhere in the movie. Wow. Yeah. That is kind of out of nowhere, isn't it? I never even gave that a second thought. Great point, Annie. Great comment. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Martin. Sirius is one of my favourites uh, and most complex character. I really... I can't really tell you why without spoilers. I completely understand that, Martin. I, I thought that would be the case. Him bumping Snape's head, unconscious head, deliberately against the top of the tunnel is the chapter, is in, in this chapter might be understandable given Snape just tried to get him kissed by a Dementor. I don't know why I find the way he worded that so funny. Um, yeah, I think it's because he chained him up just now. I feel like it's that petty. I really just think... I'd, that's my interpretation of Sirius at this point. It actually is. That he's kind of a petty git. <laughs> but, you know, let me know if you, you disagree. I'm not, I'm not saying he's a bad character, guys. Absolutely not. I can't help feeling just leaving him in a locker... Uh, in a locked office with the window uh, was a bit... Uh, careless given they thought he was a powerful dark wizard who could can escape Azkaban. Martin, you put it better than I could. But presumably it was on Dumbledore's order. That is a... Yeah, that's true. But Fudge has people there, doesn't he? So McNear could have been in there with him. Or the, 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 old, the elderly council member, whatever he's called, <laughs> to give him his full name. Um, can't help feeling, uh, yeah, because just in this situation, Fudge is in charge. He he outranks Dumbledore even in Hogwarts, right? Yeah, I'd imagine so. Or he'd probably ask Dumbledore what he should do. <laughs> um, presume it's Dumbledore's order. Would have given a lot to see Sirius's expression when he saw Harry and Hermione at the window, if it's 
had been in the film. Yeah, well, it's a kind of creepy shot where he's just sat there like he like goes like that. And it's like really quick, and then he cuts to them on the back of the uh I was gonna say pony then. But beak, my goodness. What movie have I been watching? Great comment, Martin. I greatly appreciate that. Yeah. Maybe it was Dumbledore's order, but again, Fudge is in charge here. But maybe Dumbledore convinced Fudge that, that would be the appropriate place because of the charms. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the reasoning behind it. Are we down to the last three comments? Oh, there's Buffy uh, peering over the comments there, guys. Deep into series three now, going really enjoying it at the moment. Some fantastic episode. Katic, hi Veggie, happy summer solstice. That was um. Two days ago, as it says on the comment. Um, other, others have already pointed out the difference from the movie uh, where Pettigrew uses a wand to transform himself back to, to a rat. Does he? I'm going to have to read. He doesn't have his wand. He's had it knocked out of his hand. He, he, I swear, because he does his weird, like that, Expelliarmus, and then he just goes, okay, I, 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 I think I'm missing something here, but either way, Katik, let's continue with the comments. Well, in the book, a wand is obviously not necessary, otherwise, uh, how would Sirius transform in Azkaban? I swear that Pettigrew does not have a wand in this scene. Oh, either way, I'll, I'll take I'll take your word for it because you've undoubtedly watched it more than I have. But still, in the book, Pettigrew's first impulse, as uh, as the confusion starts, is to dive for Lupin's wa wand. He only transforms from Harry. He only, he only transforms after Harry manages to disarm him. Now I can't decide if Pettigrew actually intended. The actual intent it was to attack his captors defend himself from Lupin or him simply wanting to get the wand with him when when he escaped I always thought of being a wizard witch without a wand feels some something like a us muggles when we lose our smartphones. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. That is the perfect analogy right there. Uh, by the way, how do you think it works with the possessions of um, Animagus? Has on has on them as they transform into the animal. The clothes obviously transform with them. That's a good point. That is something which I didn't even acknowledge, but of course that's the case. McGonagall, imagine the first shot of McGonagall on uh, um, Philosopher's Stone. It's like turning into... Oh no, that's not the first shot. It is. It is the first shot. Then they're quickly having to get dressed. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sidetracked. Uh... Oh my goodness, you just... Oh yeah. The clothes obviously transform with them, as we have seen with Pettigrew and Sirius, and previous McGonagall not be naked when, when turning back. There we go. I'm so sorry, Katik. I, I stole your comment there. Uh, but does it extend to anything anything people have in their pockets? This is this is when... We talk about this stuff in Buffy when it comes to clothing, guys. Like, because it, it, like, it, obviously when Van... Well, not obviously, but on, on, when vampires get destroyed on by the vampire slayer they they completely turn to dust which would presumably means anything that they have in their pockets is pockets is i'm saying pockets is because i've watched all the drinks um hobbit i'm sorry right moving on but does that extend to anything in the other uh, if yes could one grab a, a hold of any large object like a car or something when transforming and that would go with them into their animal form. Sorry, I'll stop. My head hurts. I mean, it's a great point, Katty. I think it'd probably cut off its things that you're just holding in your hand. But I think that it is... I think if it's behind a layer, as in in a pocket, then it just shrinks down with you. But the clove aspect is something which I've never even noticed, let alone thought about. Great point. I'll just add that the... 
that this concept of time travel, where going back in time does not change the past, but everything you do has already happened, is my absolute favourite of all the versions of the time travelling fiction. I was giddy with excitement when reading the book for the first time as everything came together so beautifully. And yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, You know what? I like that version of time travel as well. Because only because the other version of time travel is basically there's no limits, you know? And it gets a little bit insane. Um, so yeah, it's my it's my preferred version of time travel in, in fiction as well. Great comment. Thank you so much, Katia. Greatly appreciate Alchemist. Um, hello Veggie, I wonder how many hours will pass by the time you get to this comment, but I wish you, you, you much endurance. We are just coming up to five hours, uh, looking at my time, I think, I think that's right. So in the book, Sirius is locked up in Flitwick's office. Do you remember the very diff different location where he's locked up in the movie? Yeah, it's like on top of like a, it's not even like a tower, it's like a battlement sort of working thing with like a cage in the middle. So odd. Alright. Um, I hope you'll continue playing Hogwarts Legacy to discover the Easter egg that, that, they, that solves the this discrepancy between the, the different media. You're kidding me. Alchemist, I can't wait to see. Okay, we need, we need to do that. We, we need to get back to um, Hogwarts Legacy. It won't, okay, if you're watching this when, when it's new, it won't be the coming week because... Next weekend, I am going to watch the wrestling. Smackdown and Money in the Bank are both being uh, both uh, happening in London next weekend. So, looking forward to that. My heart says LA Knight should win the briefcase, but my brain says Damien Priest will. Um, Logan Paul is in it as well, but I don't think he'll win it. Um, I don't think it would be good if he'd win it, to be honest, but that's just my that's, that's my opinion. Ellie Knight, I would love to see him have the briefcase, but I think it's going to be Damien Priest, who I think is awesome anyway. In the women's Money in the Bank match, uh, who do I want to win that? EO Sky is a, a lot of a big people's favourites. I'm trying to think who else is in it. Trish Stratus is in it now. That's a throwback. I guess I want Eo Sky to win it because she's never really had a, a major push, and I I kind of worry that Becky Lynch is going to win it just because she doesn't need it. She just does not need to win the bet Money in the Bank. Look, if anyone's complaining about me getting sidetracked, I've been going for five hours, so I can have a little bit of sidetrack on the penultimate comment. Um, so yes, and and uh, Roman Reigns and so uh, Solo will most definitely beat the Usos, which is the main event, I would presume, and Seth Rollins is. Definitely being Finn Balor. Unless he gets cashed in on. By Damien Priest. Okay, enough about wrestling. Let's get back to this. Uh, Tammy. Hi, Veggie. I hope I'm not too late. You're not too late, Tammy. Don't worry about it. Although your, co your comment is the last one. Uh, I haven't really found time to comment until now. That's okay. You, you got in just in time. Uh, first of all, I can't believe how many people wrote about how nice the scene where, where, was where Sirius asked Harry to, 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 to live with him. I definitely agree, but I haven't mentioned the line. But I haven't mentioned the line. What would happen when he told the Dursleys he was going to live with uh, the convict they'd seen on the television? I mean, just imagine the Dursleys' face. That would be hilarious to see. I, yeah. And I'm, I'm also, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering what Harry's... How, well, Harry's opinion of that. Is he worried? I don't think he's worried. I think he's, he just can't wait to see the faces. <laughs> Quite frankly. Oh, they should have invited Blackground for tea, guys. That would have been funny. <laughs> um, also, I agree with people who wrote about the difference between the movie Snape and the, and the book Snape. Um, as for me, I really like movie Snape. I think he's a good person who protects the students. However, book Snape is a horrible person in my opinion. Snape's ta tantrum in chapter 21 gives, again, is this the chapter that we, I think, I think it is. Hang on, I need to check. It, have we, is 21 one of the ones which we did, which we have done today? Because I thought it was the numbers before then. Um, oh God, Veggie, take your time. No, it is, it is today's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to whoever I said about it potentially being a future chapter. I apologise. That that was completely incorrect on me. Um, Save Trantrum 
it gives a, a lot of reasons why. But the main reason for me not liking Stape will come much later in the book. So I'll shut up now. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Tammy. I don't think... I still think that book Snape would have got it between him, the, the, the students and him. He he's, he's, he's a teacher who clearly hates a lot of the students. But he's not going to let 13-year-olds take the brunt of a werewolf. I, he's not a coward. Do we have any reason to think that Snape is a coward at this point? Apart from potentially poisoning people and, and, and so on? Hmm... I mean, it's been echoed by a few commenters, so it's very interesting here, here, hearing this take on him. Uh, and then final uh, paragraph. And last, uh, and la lastly, we finally get to know exactly how McGonagall got the time turner for Hermione, which is why we were we know how now that Hermione didn't keep it, and that all the time turner stuff is Ministry registered. That is so true, Tammy, because I assumed that they had... I thought it was McGonagall's. I thought she owned it. That's so true. I always want to scream as uh, YouTube reactors who are asking in later movies, well, why don't they just use Hermione's time turner? <laughs> to be fair, that is the movie's fault. There should have been a scene where Hermione's, like, cashing it in, looking really sad. <laughs> I mean, amazing. Um, post-credits. McGonagall snatching the time... No, she wouldn't have snatched it, taking the time turner off uh, of a heartbroken Hermione. <laughs> Although, I don't know if Hermione really enjoyed using it, quite frankly. She didn't enjoy using it. It was a bloody nightmare for her, wasn't it? Either way. Uh, I hope you aren't completely exhausted by now. And wish you a lovely day. Thank you so much, Tammy. And that wraps up the, um... The book club. I'm just going to check if I've got any comments since. I, I did put a close at the start of it, so I shouldn't have done. Uh, we're safe. We're safe. Um, guys, this has been an absolute joy. Thank you all so much for taking part in this. Um, yeah, it's... The, 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 the things that we discuss in these is, is just so fascinating. And I, I love it, the fact that we can be respectful of each other's takes and everything. Um, and so thank you all so much for being a part of this. It's an absolute joy for me to get through. It does take a while. Like I say, it's been another five hours again today. But that my secret chapter, guys, we had a lot to discuss it. So on to the last one. I don't think, I'm going to say it now, I don't think the next video will be five hours just because it's the final chapter. But then we do have final thoughts on the book, favorite characters from the book, things that they should have kept in. The, the poll deciding what what should have absolutely stayed in um and then obviously the book club as well it'll probably be five hours when i who am i kidding <laughs> please like or subscribe all the good stuff remember to start your comment with ron's i can't remember was, was it ron's massive feet i think it may have been whatever it was start your comment with that please subscribe all the good stuff i'll see you next time